to an end? Freeloader, huh? I know you're napping around here somewhere. On your feet and back to work already, yeah? Ah, uh, finally. Come on, sunshine. Up and at him. Get up already! <sighs> Sorry, what's going on? What's going on? <sighs> Did your head spring a leak while you were napping? Better see if you can even remember your name. Well, looks like there's hope for you yet. Apologies, friend. I'm alright. Is the battle at hand? Of course it is. Why else would I be standing here? You heard who we're up against, yeah? Gerald's mercenaries. Gonna be one hell of a fight if true, especially if the Ashen Demon is here. Don't like a smidge of what I've heard about that fella. Or was it a woman? Leave it to you to fumble the details. Did you even catch this Ashen Demon's name? Of course I did. It was... I... By the goddess, it's right on the tip of my tongue. That's it. Demon or no demon, our job is to fight and win. <laughs> you sound just like the captain. I know they paid up front, but come on. Well, at least one of you has some courage. You've certainly come a long way since I plucked you from that mountain village. But this battle is about more than just victory. Gerald's team has a sterling reputation. Rumor has it they've never blundered even a single job. But once we put them to rout, we'll finally be the greatest mercenaries in all of Leicester. Enemy activity detected, Captain. Looks like we'll be fighting by moonlight. Mind you don't kill each other in the dark. Wasn't expecting a fight so soon, but I guess there's nothing for it. You ready? When this is over, we'll all greet the new dawn together. 
<laughs> you sure are a cocky little thing. But yeah, all right. I'll be there. All right, let's get down to business. We're up against Geralt's mercenaries. Let's move out! Drive them straight into their graves! Time to see what you're made of! We're not putting up much of a fight. Are these guys new recruits or something? Guess this means I can mess with them a little. That's that. I eat steak tougher than this. Hey, you! Clear out that group over there! It still fights! I'll take out the stronghold over this way, yeah? You get the one over for there. Can't wait to wrap this up so we can all drown ourselves in ale. Captain ran off ahead of us. Is she gonna be okay? Master your fear! And then back! Keep your eyes open. We still don't know if the Ashen Demon is here. The main force is here! We're saved! Now push! Push the enemy back! About time a foe with some teeth showed up. But they still don't stand a chance against Burling's mercenaries. Now, isn't this a sight? You must be the infamous Ashen Demon. I can't wait to tear you apart. This will be the end of the Ashen Demon. No one can beat the Captain. That! Captain! They took out Lasley like she was nothing. Yeah, right. I can't believe I'm losing to some damn kid! Yeah. in trouble. I have to reach her before it's too late. There's so many of them. Only one thing to do about that. I've got you now! No. Just when my dream was finally in sight, you monster. The, the captain's dead. What are we going to do now? Stand down or die. We're gonna stand. We're gonna fight. And we're gonna avenge the captain. So scared. It's just one mark. Run! Run while you can! Yes, no! This can't be happening!
keep fighting. Perish with you. Huh? The cycle of this world. I will not allow it to perish with you. Fighting like an entirely different person. That's enough. We did what we came to do. Everyone, fall back. What? No escape. Sorry, but this fight is over. Wait! Why? We've achieved our goal. Your job was to stop us, and you failed. <sighs> Another time, perhaps. Hey, we're not done here! Why, why am I so tired? Not sure I would have been able to sleep at night with your <laughs> blood on my hands. Ah! Who are you? Ha! Now that is a tricky question. For the moment, why don't you call me Arval? Arval, huh? But for now... Let me speak plain. You are slated to die. Right now, I'm the only thing holding your meager life together. And to be blunt, it's beginning to tire me. Um, thank you? Oh, oh my. That's the first time anyone has ever shown me gratitude. And I must say, I like it very much. Hear me well. You are a crucial piece of this world's cyclical... Yeah, uh, no, this will never do. You're far too groggy to absorb what I'm saying. For now, I needn't tell you how you'll get back on your feet. I need only convince you that you will. Is this a dream? I remember collapsing, but then... You're half right, which also means you're half wrong, but full marks for effort. 
still, the important thing is what you do after you wake. And what should that be? Recall, please, how the Ashen Demon bested you. Came within an inch of snuffing out your life. If you attempt the fight again the same way, you will reach the same conclusion. This would force me to step in once more, which would be most annoying and also rather counterproductive, if I'm honest. Then I'll get stronger. The woman I am now will seem like a little kid in comparison. And one day, I will surpass the Ashen Demon. I swear it. Indeed. My captain and comrades are dead. The company is finished. So there's only one thing I can do. Start over. Huh. I thought you'd be more sentimental. Did they not take you in? Care for you? Gold's the only thing that ever held us together. And death is something we're all too used to. I never knew my real parents, and I lost the mother who raised me. Parting's just come easy to me, I guess. The best way to honor my fallen comrades is by training hard and growing even stronger. Then I'll crush Gerald's mercenaries, and the Ashen Demon with them! That's what I'm going to live for now. Oh, but I like your spirit! Though I expected no less from my partner in destiny. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I suppose that was a bit sudden. I should remember, take intimacy in smaller steps. The point is that I'm here to guide you, and I promise to help you find the strength to see your dreams realized. Prologue. A Chance Encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrig Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Saros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramire, and west of this place stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! Ugh. How many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Hello? Yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. Uh, come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. As if I have a choice! Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. Twenty-two. The three times you leapt off a cliff to quote-unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. All right, 
This was all my fault, and I'm sorry. Strange. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yet somehow I'm the one who feels bad now. I must remember this tactic. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Lost, schmast. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief! What cheek! Well, hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about payment. You'll receive plenty of gold. If we survive, that is. There they are! Kill them all! Fight for them now, are ya? You can die with your new friends! I'll deal with things here. Oh, got you. Watch this! Let me show you a trick for dealing with heavily defended enemies. <laughs> and that's how it's done. Don't overstep, Edelgard. Well, I suppose my turn is along. No, not yet! I've awaited this moment. I won't allow anyone to stop me. You're making me feel bad for the enemy. Apologies, but it was you or me. Just who are these people anyway? All three of them have crests. You're What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats! Stop embarrassing yourself and stand your ground already! Is it Claude time? I think it's Claude time. I'm a master of strategy, but I'm not really used to being on the front lines. Very sharp, Claude. As usual. <laughs> Hey, got lucky there. Well, lucky for me, I guess. Not so much for you. The bandits have a firm hold on the central road. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. What shoddy defenses! We'll be done before we know it if they're all like this. That ought to unravel their defenses. Enough of this strategy nonsense! Get out there and tear them all to pieces! Okay.
Okay, how many thugs does this guy have working for him anyway? And not to worry over you too much, but do make sure to heal if you're hurt. Repent, foul bandits! The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. Now there's practically one if the Knights have arrived. The Knights of Seros! Not now! If I don't kill at least one of them, Brad, I'm finished! Here it comes! <laughs> 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 Watch out! They're gonna make a last-ditch effort to rush our position. This is where you die, dogs! Form ranks and capture those bandits. Quickly, then! Do you feel that power? Maybe you can channel it like you did in the other battle. Is it over? Hang on. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes. And as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude von Regan, grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Hey, I only fought well because I had such fine companions by my side. There may be some truth to that. I can't shake the feeling that we were destined to meet somehow. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. Say, while I have you here... Do you know where I can find Remire Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Remire might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals, so what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, was it? They may be in Ramire Village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action, not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. 
But of course, the choice is yours. Ugh, why can't things ever be simple? All right, but just for the night. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There's a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go. But, uh, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Yes, do you know him? He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries, so I imagine his name has spread all over Fodlin by now. Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! <laughs> That's our Alois. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. Concerning. What say you? Let's see. Hey there. Thanks. Hmm. Speaking of... How's that? Who, me? I'm more curious about you, personally. If you don't have anything better to do, I'd be glad to have you join us at Garrick Mine. What do you think? Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, you're certainly not timid. You do realize you're addressing the heir to the Imperial Throne, yes? Still, I suppose I admire that sort of freedom. It must be nice not to have your lot in life decided for you. Well, you're certainly not timid. You'd still... You have my thanks. Speaking of which... Thanks! <laughs> By the way... about this <laughs> your interest flatters me but I'm afraid I find myself unsure of where to begin perhaps I'll have thought of a topic when next we speak but uh, you're leaving for that village soon aren't you That's concerning. If I'm honest. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but... Well... Perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that exactly? Because you've done us a great service and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officer's Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they crossed swords with bandits! If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign, perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softie. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be, but this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. I guess I'm not opposed to helping out a little more. I'll come with you to the monastery, but I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. 
Hmm? Told me what? Told you how dashing you are in that armor. <laughs> Not just any man can pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit, I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this considering you're only here because of us, but... Well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The Knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this as just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king. The kind who looks after his people. Seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. Claude's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's gonna be easy to work with. <laughs> of course you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you'd better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. Prologue. Three Houses. Deep in the forest, the mercenary meets a trio of youths, each a student at Gehrig Mach's Officers Academy and a leader of one of the school's three houses. Striking down the bandit chief who attacked the students brings undue attention to the mercenary, who soon arrives at the hallowed gates of Gehrig Mach. And with that, may I present the mercenary I spoke of. Greetings. My name is Rhea, and I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for rescuing our students. I'm just glad I could help. Such modesty is not required around me. Your actions were truly commendable. However, the reason we summoned you here was not simply to express our gratitude. We have a proposal for you. One made on behalf of the church itself. What kind of proposal? Someone told you of the Officers' Academy here at the monastery, yes? We would have you join this academy as a student. 
You what? Though you are a mercenary, I understand you are not currently beholden to any one particular employer. Also, the students you rescued are close to your own age. Your life could be greatly enriched here. Or she's heard about our power and wants to keep us on a short leash. And yet she's taking it almost as a given that we'll accept. It's infuriating. I need to get stronger if I'm gonna do what I need to. If your fancy school can really make that happen, consider me interested. The Knights of Seros, as well as many other powerful warriors, pass daily through the gates of this hallowed monastery. If strength is what you are after, we can certainly provide it in spades. They've really talked us into a corner here. I think I see where this is going. All right, I'm in. A wise decision. We will do all we can to ensure you do not regret it. I believe you will go far. If I may, permit me to tell you a bit more about the school itself. The Academy is divided into three houses and draws in the most promising young talents from every corner of Fodland. Some are noble-born, while others spring from more humble roots. But within these walls, all are treated as equals. We ask our prospects to spend a year living under the same dormitory roof so they can challenge each other, work hard, and grow together. Each of our houses corresponds to one of Fodlin's three regions. Edelgard leads the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Dimitri leads the Blue Lion House, home to students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And Claude leads the Golden Deer House, for students from the Leicester Alliance. We could select a house for you ourselves, but as all of this was our idea, perhaps we should leave this decision to you. You are something of a special case, after all. So I can join any house I want? Yes, you have simply to name it. So you wish to join Claude's Golden Deer. Are you certain? Yep, that's the one. I'm sure of it. May you build wonderful and lasting friendships in your new house. Well then, with that taken care of, it's time to decide which of us will supervise which house. Yes, it turns out we just underwent a last-minute roster change. I guess you two haven't met. This is Professor Yuritsa, our weapons instructor. Hello. Nice meeting you, uh, sir. Don't load me up with too much homework, all right? <laughs> Do my ears deceive me? Or is that curiosity I hear in your voice, Professor Yuritsa? I thought all the houses were the same to you. Perhaps you should be in charge of our new student's house, hmm? I don't care. You decide. Well, you'll certainly hear no objections from me. Professor Manuela, you and I can take charge of the remaining houses. What? It's decided already? I was at least expecting a fight. Maybe some hair pulling? And as for you, my mysterious new student, I look forward to getting to know you much, much better throughout the year. The gall of these people making decisions for you. It's enough to make one's head spin. Uh, right. In any case, I'm looking forward to learning from you, Professor Yuritsa. 
I'll inform you of our first mission soon. Sorry, what mission? Oh, did we fail to mention that? Each month, every house in the Academy is given a mission entailing some form of service to the Church. Sorry, but do I have this right? This person just enrolled at the Academy, and now they have become a member of our house? Yeah, that's pretty much the deal. Right, Professor Yuritsa? Yes. I love how you can bump into someone in the woods one night, and suddenly you're living under the same roof the next. I knew we had a thing. Anyway, welcome to the Golden Deer House, where the only rule is make your own rules. Kidding, of course. Or am I? The point is, you're one of us now. And it's very good to have you here. While the term's only just started, the church must really like you if they're letting you join partway through. You have to be pretty skilled to get that kind of treatment. Well, I believe it. I mean, how many people our age can cut it as full-fledged mercenaries? I definitely see why the church was interested, and I can't wait to train together. And I can't wait to eat together! Or work out! You wanna go work out? Seriously, you need to put some muscles on that coat rack you call a body. Bulk up! Like me! Hmm, I don't think these strange shirt buttons look is for everybody. Any more meat on those bones, and our friend here would be downright scary. Our new friend's build is perfect as is. Wouldn't you agree, Marianne? Oh, well, I don't... Uh... Okay, okay, everyone just loosen up. And hey, it's not like we haven't met already, so just sit back and make yourself at home. I would not take after Claude if I were you, new blood. Honestly, if you wish your time here to be fruitful, you would do well to follow my lead. Um... I think Professor Yuritsa wants to say something. Remember your mission? Every word, Professor. We are to crush what remains of the Iron King's thieves who attacked our camp. And with their boss Costas out of the picture, the runts that are left should be easy pickings. They can't be anything too special if we're getting them as homework. Good. Prepare yourself. Of course, Professor... Oh, he's gone. Yeah, so that whole Yuritsa up and vanishing thing? Best to just get used to it. Well, I for one am excited to show off my skills by beating up on some bandits. I don't suppose I could be excused? Or, um... We're all in this together, Marianne. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Besides, the newbie here already sent them packing once, so this should be easy peasy. So long as I'm here, this will all work out just fine. Are you sure? <sighs> That's a relief. Anyway, we're all participating in this mission. Church's rules. I didn't make them, so the only thing we can do is work together. And we're gonna lean pretty heavy on our mercenary buddy here. Hope that's okay. I won't let you down. There you are, Yuritsa. I have word from the knights. It is time? Yes. The bandits have fled north into the canyon bordering Count Rose land in the kingdom. But the knights have cut off their escape, 
and now stand ready to provide whatever support the students may require. We'll leave at once. I needn't remind you this is the first real battle for some of our charges. I trust you will keep them safe, though I likely do not need to worry with an old hand like you at their side. No, you don't. You there, it's time for the mission. Gather the others. About time we saw some action. Lost sight of them? Ashamed to admit it, but yes. It's possible someone magicked the bandits away. But why go to that kind of trouble for a handful of highwaymen scum? So be it. We'll follow the blood scent. Right, of course. We'll follow... Wait, what? We're leaving. Everyone, follow me! Hey, uh, Professor Yuritsa, are you... And away he goes. Guess we better get after him. We're still on a mission, after all. Pathetic. Slow down, Professor. You're making it hard for us to... Oh. Well, this is something. What happened to all these people? Dead by my hand. Are these the bandits we have been chasing? Who knows? It's not like you can tell they're bandits just from looking at them. Well, Professor, are they the villains we're searching for? Most likely. I caught them trying to escape to that fortress. Okay, does it have to be so dark and spooky? It must be their hideout if they were trying to shelter there. Then let's quit standing around and seize the place. Might even find some nice gear in the process. I concur. As nobles, we would be remiss to let the people suffer at the hands of these rapscallions one minute longer. So you want to go in there? Yeah, you know what? I think I'll stay here and make sure the outside is safe. Right, Marianne? You with me? Of course. We don't belong in a dangerous place like that. It's not smart to rush an enemy stronghold when we have no idea what's waiting for us inside. We should hold off for now. I have to agree. Caution is often the greater part of valor, after all. It seems like opinions are split. But the thing is, we're still on a mission. And that means we leave the decision-making to Professor Yuritsa. And I say, enter the fortress. Dispatch any bandits you find. But... There's no cause for concern. I see no signs of life. There can't be more than a handful, or none at all. I'd be happy with the nun option. My grandpa told me empty forts have ghosts in them. Ghosts? I mean, uh, how childish. Everyone knows there's no such thing. We're hunting bandits, not banshees. So can we please just get this over with? Lysithia, don't tell me that you're... You know what? Probably better not to ask. You folks must be pretty confident, considering how much you're horsing around. Just be careful some brute doesn't take you by surprise. Yeah, we'll just need to watch each other's backs. Eyes peeled, everyone. We'll put the bandits to rout. Follow me! Huh? Hey! We got intruders! Come on, they're just bandits. But that doesn't mean we can go easy on them. Let's do this. I'm not letting you pass. My life depends on it. Now we know who to kill to open the gate. Sorry. 
sorry, everyone. I tried to stop them. Let's secure the interior. This place is bigger than I thought. Split up. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ugh, this place is crawling with bandits. Don't hate me for performing my noble duty. Ah, these folks aren't so tough. Someone remind me again why we have to storm an enemy hideout? This is a rather impressive setup for a den of thieves. That takes care of seizing the hideout. So what's next? Search the basement. Something is amiss. Hey, there's a prisoner down here. She looks like an academy student? Let's get you out of here before any of that. Thank you for saving me. Don't let the girl escape, or Kranya will make us wish we were dead. No problem, I got it. It's not safe here. We must take the girl and run. They're targeting that academy student. We have to protect her. Just leave me alone already! I don't know who these folks are, but they sure aren't some run-of-the-mill bandits. We must dispatch these villains post-haste and save that student. Looks like the coast is clear. All right, folks, let's get a move on. Sorry I'm slowing you down. We're just still a little wobbly at the moment. Now's our chance to give them the slip. More bandits that eluded us. Leave none alive. We should be safe here. I mean, I thought we are at least. All right. Who came in here and trashed my beautiful stronghold? Hi there. I'm Kranya, but you can just call me the lady that's about to murder you. Or, you know, don't. It's her. So be it. Kill her. <laughs> we can skip my turn, you know. Don't worry. My turn. Pretty last words lined up. Now would be the time. Not that I'm going to pay attention. Oh, you're not going anywhere, Monica. I have something very special planned for you. It up, huh? You asked for it. Release the creature we captured. Is that? Looks like some sort of giant beast. Uh, 
Attack in force. We'll never defeat it alone. All the numbers in the world won't save you. You're done! I am here to aid you. Are we even hurting this thing? They defeated a demonic beast? Impossible! Talus isn't going to like this at all. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay! Talk about strange customers. Well, at least we beat her. That's what counts. We should be safe here for the time being. I'm well acquainted with Professor Yuritsa, but the rest of you are this year's fresh-faced golden deer, I presume? Nothing but the freshest. Also, is it just me, or are you wearing our uniform? And how do you know Professor Yuritsa? Do you go to the Officers' Academy? She's one of last year's students. A Black Eagle. Which would make you our senior? But what were you doing here in a bandit fortress? Well... I was just on the verge of graduation last year when I was kidnapped by the strangest people. In truth, I thought I'd never breathe fresh air again. Thank you for coming when you did. Oh, where are my manners? I'm Monica Von Ox, eldest daughter of the Empire's Baron Ox. Hmm, yes. I think I understand. This all began when the Knights lost sight of the bandits and you gave chase. Afterward, you entered a suspicious fortress and rescued a missing student. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be sure to smooth things over for you once we're back. Sounds good. But, uh, why are you even here, Alois? Because the Knights sent for help after you left them behind. Did you expect anything different? Not that I'm trying to lay blame at your feet. I know you were following Professor Yuritsa's lead, so I think everyone involved can head home knowing they did just swell. For as you know, all swell that ends swell. Ugh. Still, I find this a rather grave turn of events. To think the same bandits who attacked our charges were behind another student's abduction. Hmm? I never said I was kidnapped by bandits. You... you didn't? Now that you mention it, some of the folks in that fortress weren't exactly dressed in the typical bandit fineries. What if we're dealing with a way savvier organization than we think, and the bandits just answer to them? Yeah, there was one real piece of work. Kronya, I think, who managed to escape. I've seen all kinds of people as a mercenary, and she was definitely not your everyday bandit. You're on the right path. Perhaps I should just tell you who kidnapped me, seeing as I already know. What? Why didn't you mention this earlier? Everyone was busy speculating, so it was difficult to cut in. What do you know, child? Out with it. Well, the one who kidnapped me was Tomas the Librarian. I'm certain of it. I could tell from his gait, and how he held his staff. I suppose he isn't the simple scholar you think he is. Tomas? Impossible! But Tomas has been at Garrick Mach even longer than I have. I don't want to believe it, but... Based on what you say, we've no choice but to investigate. But, Sir Alois... Be on guard. If Tomas is in league with Kranya, he is dangerous. Very well. I will quietly report the matter to Lady Rhea and leave the decision in her hands. Not a word of this to anyone. Is that clear? Well, now things are getting interesting. 
honestly did not see this coming. So what do you make of this Kranya? Why do you think she was at the fortress? You seemed preoccupied with her during the battle. She a friend of yours? Sadly, I wouldn't know. My memory is but a shadow at this point. Gone! Vanished! Lost! I remember meeting you, but before that, nothing at all. And yet, the moment I saw her, I was struck with the most inexplicable feeling. I couldn't tell you if it was revulsion or affection. It was simply pure emotion. And here I thought I had it tough. Are you worried about me? How adorable! Oh, but I do love that about you. And that's why Rhea has decided to take Tomas into custody. When he gets back, that is. Seems he's been away from the monastery for a bit. Custody? They ought to end his life on the spot. The Churl's enmity towards the church is plain for all to see. All the more reason to keep him alive and question it. You really think he's working alone? This all comes from that Monica girl we rescued, right? Still, I guess if Lady Rhea believes her... So who is this Tomas guy anyway? You say he works in the library? Yes, and he's always bent over backward to help me find whatever book I'm searching for. He's a kind man. And the last person you'd ever expect to stab you in the back. Well, you won't make it too far as an evildoer if you can't pull the wool over people's eyes. I can't believe someone that nasty was working right here under our noses. But wait, what if the dining hall lady is a traitor too? I'll never be able to ask for seconds again! <laughs> as if anything would stop you from asking for seconds. Besides, what kind of villain sets their sights on someone's lunch? I think we can give the poor dining hall lady the benefit of the doubt, right? If we can't trust the hand that feeds us, we can trust nothing. Exactly. If we start looking at everyone with suspicion, we may as well pack up and go our separate ways now. I'd really like to stop talking about the dining hall lady now, please. So, is it safe to assume Tomas hired the bandits that tried to kill us? No one has proven he was the mastermind behind it all. But there is no doubt he was involved. You're awfully quiet, Marianne. Is everything okay? Oh, it's just... I suppose I'm worried about what this all means. Hey, I understand. These walls were supposed to keep trouble out, but now everything feels very different. Wait, do you hear that outside? Are they ready at the gates? Yes, sir. Every exit is covered. Well, well. It sounds like Tomas has returned. I don't know why I know this, but you need to get out there, and quickly. I think he's here. I'll be back. But let's do it together. Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> that man down there. Lady Rhea wants to speak with you. I suggest you accept. <laughs> this doddering persona of mine will benefit me no further. <laughs> Such 
Empress for mere vermin. You will pay for this. Find him! Right! And what he did was just like... Prologue. The Battle for the Locket. Upon his return to Garrig Mach, the humble Tomas shapeshifts and flees, and not even the Knights of Ceres's most concerted efforts can track down the erstwhile librarian. Though Claude is quite intrigued by the dark developments at his school, an urgent message soon arrives from House Goneril at the eastern edge of the Leicester Alliance. Well, that was certainly an unexpected conclusion to the whole Tomas saga. Thanks to his shape-shifting ability, he slipped free of the knights and escaped. Shape-shifting. Yes, that's what I said. Also, I know what you want to say next. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. Are you in league with him, Arval? Where did these powers come from? If I am in league with him, no one has informed me. All I have is you, my dear partner in destiny. Still, I saw what you saw. Clearly, we don't have a monopoly on shapeshifting. And now that everyone knows about Tomas, some of them must have connected the dots back to me. At least they've had the grace to keep it to themselves. It's because they trust you. Hold on, someone's coming. Hey there, got a second? Something wrong? There's no nice way to dance around this. Are you sure you don't know, Tomas? I already told you I don't. Okay, okay. It's not like I suspect you or anything. But it does make me wonder where you're from originally. Who knows? Maybe there's some mysterious clan out there with shape-shifting powers. And maybe they banished you when you were little and you don't remember it. It's possible, right? Well, my early years are pretty hazy. But while it's not completely impossible... Hey, I'm sorry. You know what? Don't worry about it. I only ask because people here also see me as something of an outsider. Guess I got a little ahead of myself. Maybe I was just excited to meet a kindred spirit. You're an outsider? There you are, Claude. You must come quickly. We have an urgent message from House Goneril. Sure thing. Why don't you tag along? I'm not sure what House Goneril wants, but it can't be good. I can't believe the Almiran army is invading! And with the biggest army since Fodlin's locket was completed. My brother's preparing to intercept them, but he's outnumbered big time and needs all the help he can get. House Regan stands ready. But we can't expect my grandfather to lead an army, so I guess it falls to me. I wish I knew what the other Alliance lords will do, but there's no time to call a round table. I have no doubt my father has already leapt into action though I will likely be the one who ends up on the front lines. House Ordelia is close, so I like to think we've already sent reinforcements. Sadly, I expect little help to come from my adoptive father. I'm sorry. That's fine. I actually have a different favor to ask Margrave Edmund, but we can chat about it later. I don't understand the reason for this sudden act of aggression. If this really is the biggest army since Fodlin's Locket was completed, that's a century's worth of battles. Maybe the Almirans figured it's now or never. 
since the Empire and Kingdom are wrapped up in their own problems. I mean, we're pretty much the only students left around here now. Yeah, I heard something about a coup in Enbar and a revolt in Ferdiad. Both serious problems that don't directly affect the Alliance. And even if word of Fodland's troubles has reached the Elmirans, it doesn't follow that they'd start a war. Well, that's assuming they have all the information, which seems unlikely. If all they heard was something vague, like war in the capitals, it might make them more likely to invade. Do you truly think so? Let me go with you. Maybe I can help. Hey, we need every sword hand we can get. Welcome aboard. And you'll have me. The name's Shamir. I'm a Knight of Saros. The bulk of the Knights were dispatched earlier to track down Tomas. And the rest of us fanned out to the Kingdom and Imperial Capitals. Yeah, I was worried they might have been deployed already. How did we end up with you? The Church may not be able to lend you an army, but they won't turn a blind eye. I'm here because I'm the best woman for the job. My arrows will make short work of Almiran Wyvern Riders. So we get to see what the Knight's best archer can do with the bow? I won't say no to that. I'll be counting on you as well. It certainly sounds more interesting than staying here and twiddling our thumbs. And besides, who knows what will become of the Academy in the meantime. Sure thing. I'm in. So basically... Let's see... In actuality... Speaking of... Right on! Fascinating. Oh, come on. 
to do. Absolutely. Of course. I'm counting on you. that I gave you an order Nadir yes sir you sure did then explain why we remain on this side of the mountain, staring at that wretched fortress! Did I not command you to gather enough soldiers to push through? Yes, and I did all that. We actually have the numbers advantage by some margin. But the enemy commander Holst is a born leader, and his men are bound to fight like demons. I'm sorry. Are you suggesting some cowardly savage is a superior commander to me? The next king of Almyra? Not at all, not at all. Merely pointing out that storming a fortress tends to be one of those time-consuming sort of things. In which case, the current state of affairs proves to be exceedingly fortunate for you. As we speak, the Imperial Household fights to hold power against the Empire's nobility, while the whole kingdom bickers over who should wear the crown. There will be no reinforcements here. Take whatever time you need. I admire that optimism. Uh, but, as I recall, the King instructed us not to attack yet. That was before the situation changed. Father will hold me in great esteem for this. Mark my words. Also, Khalid has been absent for a good while now. And I wager he's plotting some mischief. But once I've conquered Fodlan, it won't matter what folly he attempts. The throne will be mine! Prince Shahid! Enemy reinforcements have been spotted! What? <laughs> no matter. There can't be more than a scattering of them. Send in what's left of our troops and crush them all! Thank you for traveling all the way to Fodland's Locket. I'm Holst Sigisvald Goneril, in command of defense here. Claude Von Regan. I've heard a lot about you over the years. 
We're here to help you hold the locket in whatever small way we can. Ah, House Regan's new scion. I've heard a fair bit about you as well. I'm impressed you were able to scrape together this many troops in so short a time. Duke Oswald has clearly chosen his heir wisely. Also, I can't express my gratitude enough at seeing so many young people offering to serve. Whoa! Look at the muscles on you! Your regimen must be epic! Oh, I'm Raphael Kirsten, by the way. Nice to meet you, Holst. Do not address him so casually, you oaf. This is General Holst, one of the Alliance's finest and bravest warriors. Well met, General. My father sends his warmest regards. So we're gonna fight alongside a famous general? <laughs> no pressure there. Yes, I, I know when I'm out of my league, and I am clearly way out on this one. Maybe I should go back to the monastery. And I as well. Enough, both of you. This is no time to be cowards. Our enemy's just over there. Are you gonna hide like field mice, or will you find some courage and fight? My weapon stands ready. I want to see what Holst here is truly capable of. <laughs> Your classmates are a real colorful bunch, Hilda. I like them. Thanks, Holst. But if we're all done catching up, we might want to focus on the enemy army that's headed right for us. Oh, so they are. The sight of your forces clearly lit a fire beneath them. Fortunately, the locket is impregnable, which they'll soon discover the hard way. Good luck, all. I'm counting on you. To battle! Crush the enemy! Reinforcements and all! Today we pry open the gates to Vogelin! Are you ready to send these troublemakers packing? Because I have a plan that'll do just that. Theoretically, I'm all ears. But first, we need to do something about those soldiers closing in on us. Well fought, one and all. Now, perhaps the Alliance representative would like to fill us in on his master plan? Right. Since the central approach is crawling with enemy soldiers, we'll start by capturing the strongholds to the north and south. The drawbridges here can only be lowered from one side, so we should make sure it's safe by taking any strongholds in the vicinity. Sigisvold Goneril has entered the fray! I'm souring on this whole affair, but if it's a fight you want, I'm your man! Sounds like Nadir could probably be coaxed off the battlefield. I mean, unless you really want to have a crack at him. It's your call, kiddo. But if you value your neck, I suggest you stay far away from me. And here I was just thinking I'd give my fighting skill a test. If it looks like we can't handle you, we'll come up with another way. That's that. If you keep holding back to it, you'll have to retire that overblown idol. Then the dare the undefeated, because I know when it's smart to run. And I'll come back to end you when I damn well feel like it. Fools a lot of them. Strike them from this land. Those troops at the center don't exactly have the highest morale. Once they realize we've got them flanked, who told the Central Force they could retreat? All remaining troops, attack! Things are looking up already. Now we just have to go after their general. Scattering like bees. Fox strategies really are a kind of off. Are you holding our troops back? Deploy them now! All of them! Follow Prince Shaheed! We'll trample those brutes into the dust from which they came! We have more enemies incoming! Now we have the enemy surrounded. 
Brilliantly played, young Regan. They got behind us? Those impudent worms! Fine, then. I'll put them in the ground myself! Might be time for this. You stand in the presence of Shahid the Great, next king of Almira! Challenge me! I would make my escape if I were you. You're not gonna like what comes next! You swine! Turn that loathsome face from my sight! In every way, you remind me of my wretch of a brother! I will be the end of you one day. I promise you that! <sighs> Shouldn't we go after him? Nah. At the end of the day, he's still royalty. The last thing we need is some army tromping in here trying to avenge him, you know? <sighs> We did it! We won! We held the locket! Honestly, I expected more of a struggle. For some reason, the Almirans just didn't have the fight in them. If they were serious about beating us, we probably would have found our backs against the wall. What matters is that we're safe, and no one from our house was killed. Thanks to Holst! He was out there taking on thousands of soldiers all by himself! I don't think it was actually thousands, although I agree, it was an impressive sight. Yeah, well, give me a couple years and I'll be swatting down tens of thousands. If you're setting the bar at Hulse, I guess I'd better aim high too. I mean, being a fellow Merc and all. Kinda nuts to think the Almiran Prince personally led their army against us. From what I've heard, he's vying with the others for the throne. That kind of motive makes people dangerous. We'd best stay on our toes. You think? I felt like we did a pretty good job of slamming the door in his face just now. If it's a throne he's after, we just kicked him a little further away from it. An embarrassing loss like this ought to deter any other siblings from trying the same stunt. If they're reasonable people, which is a big if, you should trade places with my brother for a while and see how fun it is to keep chasing the Almirans away. You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Huh? We let House Goneril do all the heavy lifting, which isn't fair. And it isn't how you lead. On behalf of my house, I apologize. Oh, right. I forgot you're technically representing your grandfather here. You came through with speedy reinforcements, and for that, I'm grateful. Also, Margrave Edmund showed me your budget for restorations to the locket. I hear you personally intervened to make sure the funds were secured. Very thorough and very helpful. Between that and your impressive tact on the battlefield, the Alliance will be in good hands once you take the reins. Hey, it's an honor to be accepted by a man as valiant as you. I think we'll get along just fine. That we will. Glad to hear it. So now that the battle's over... I want to feast until I burst! Come on! Let's all go toast to Lester's bright future. Whew, I'm so stuffed I can barely move. That Holst sure knows how to throw a party. That's for sure. The nobles would treat us to a meal every now and then back when I was a merc. It was
was never anything like this. Thanks for arranging it, uh, Lord Future Leader. Come on, don't call me that. We're just classmates. Actually, you know what? I take that back. We can do better than classmates. What do you mean? Once we're done with the Officers Academy, I was thinking you might join me and Lester for a while. I may have Regan blood, but I grew up about as far from nobility as you can get. I tend to get the full, who's this upstart treatment around Lester, so I could use someone reliable at my side. You're hunting a band of mercenaries, right? Well, maybe we can leverage my family's influence to track them down. And then you can do whatever it is you need to do. Seems like a solid offer. Better than staying pent up in the academy at any rate. Why me? There are plenty of skilled students you could choose from. Thought we'd been over this. I'm an outsider, and so are you. That makes us two peas in the wrong pie. Plus, we work well together. In that case, I'm in. I need to find those mercenaries and repay what's owed. <laughs> Glad to have you. As the representative leader of the Alliance, Claude narrowly defends Fodlin's locket from Prince Shahid and the Omirans. But the future of the Alliance remains in jeopardy. Meanwhile, a power struggle breaks out in the capital of the Adrestian Empire. And a revolt over the right of succession takes root in the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young student's shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officer's Academy and permits her charges to return home. Golden Wildfire to war. It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers Academy closed its doors. Claude has inherited the leadership of Leicester and toils to unite the nobles in the region. With Edelgard ruling as Emperor of Adrestia and Dimitri sitting on the throne in Fargus, the three former schoolmates are striking out as the next generation of leaders. A new era is dawning in Fodlan, and much teeters at the brink of great change. Edelgard declares war against the Central Church, causing the first tremor of a major upheaval. Hey, thanks for coming. Sorry to make you wait. I couldn't get out of there any sooner. You're looking kind of worse for the wear. Is running the Alliance really that rough? Yeah, well, you know what they say. What doesn't kill you, but enough about me. How are things with you? Mercenary work keeping you busy? Hardly. I came to Regan territory expecting steady work from your house, you know. But it still hasn't materialized. How's a merc supposed to make a living like this? It doesn't matter how much I train my sword arm if there's nothing to swing at. Right. Sorry about that. I had a feeling your talents were going to waste here. Oh, he had a feeling, did he? Where were those feelings while we were left high and dry for these last two years? I've been getting by guarding the local inns and all, but I'm at the end of my rope here. You mind if I move on? I hear there's plenty of work in the South for someone like me. Whoa, slow down there, friend. Why do you think I asked you here? I'm ready to make you an official offer. And there it is, just as I expected. So war is coming then. That's right. The new Emperor of Adrestia seems determined to bring a fight to the rest of Fodlan. And many along our southern border are worried she'll come after the Alliance. Hence, all these meetings to plan our response. Are you familiar with the Lester Roundtable? 
Not much. Just that it's a council held by some stuffy Alliance nobles. That's basically it. The Alliance crowns no king and bows to no emperor. So instead, we just have a bunch of meetings when we want to get something done. Every last detail of Alliance policy and strategy has to be worked out and agreed upon by the five great lords at the roundtable conferences. Day after day, we go round and round, arguing and bickering over this or that. And as each of the lords only truly cares about their own skin, we never actually reach a decision on anything. No wonder you look like you've been put through the ringer. Guess being a noble's not all fun and games. You can say that again. And while we sit around twiddling our collective thumbs, the Empire and their army could be right on our doorstep. Nevertheless, I'll find a way to convince the other lords that they need to commit to deploying their troops. The real problem is what happens after. Armies need commanders, and those commanders need to be exceptional warriors that we can rely on. You're not gonna ask me to lead Alliance troops, are you? You, my friend, hit the nail on the head. I want you fighting alongside me as one of the Alliance's commanders. Hold on, I'm not a noble, though. I'm not even a knight. Who cares about titles? Isn't this why you came here in the first place? I came here to help you as a mercenary. I never thought I'd be commanding troops. Look, you'll be well compensated for your efforts. And you can do this, I know you can. What do you say? Hey, if there's money to be made swinging my sword around, I'm there. My coin purse will be happy about it too. Plus, it's not like I have anything better to do. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I have high hopes for you, my friend. Now then, looks like I've got a contract to draw up. Look who's here! It's been forever! Did you do something with your hair? Nah, probably just lost some weight since you last saw me. You must not be eating enough! Those arms are like chicken bones! I imagine you've been doing a lot of mercenary work. You probably haven't had time for proper meals, what with the way things have been going. Time's not the issue here. Money is. And it's been really quiet in the Alliance, despite what's been going on elsewhere. The last two years have been hard on us mercenaries. It's not easy to land jobs when there's nobody to fight. Sounds like that's all gonna change, at least. So, uh, what are you all doing here? At the last roundtable conference, each of the five great lords agreed to contribute soldiers and officers to the Alliance army. That's why I'm here. I'm guessing it's the same for you, Marianne? Yes. My adoptive father sent me. I'm in the same boat. Count Gloucester arranged my transfer. Oh, that's right. You're doing the whole night thing for Lawrence's father now. Raphael, didn't I hear your family started an inn? What are you doing here? Claude sent me a letter, asking me to come. And there was no way I'd miss this. Same here. I guess Claude wanted to get all the Golden Deer back together, huh? That pretty much sums it up. There's no way I'm getting through this war without friends I trust by my side. And there's Claude. Now our little reunion's complete. Well, we are missing Lawrence. Yeah, Count Gloucester sent one of his newest knights in Lawrence's place. Um, yes. I suppose I should apologize for that. <laughs> I have no doubt Lawrence has his hands full protecting the border right about now. And I'm guessing you're not exactly thrilled to see me instead of my brother. <laughs> for the time being, I've asked Holst to see to our defenses in case Almira decides to take another run at our borders. Besides, I'm not about to let the Empire see our best card on the first play. It's always been my plan to have you all here, and I'm sure we'll be reunited with Lawrence before long. After all, 
will be passing through Gloucester territory very shortly. The Aramid River serves as the border between the Alliance and Empire. I imagine we'll want to fortify its banks and close off the Great Bridge of Murden. That is the plan, yes, Claude? That's right. There are many large bridges spanning the Aramid, but the terrain on the eastern bank is less than ideal. The Great Bridge of Murden is the only one suitable for crossing into the Alliance with a significant military force. So if the Empire is looking to attack us, blockading the Great Bridge will severely limit their options. Of course, that means the enemy will do everything in their power to take control of it. So, while I'm happy to see you all again, I'm afraid we don't have time to reminisce. He's right. We need to get ready to move out. Got a minute? How's that? Long story short, I'm counting on you. Two years ago? I never would have imagined we'd be fighting a war like this. I'm with you there, but it's actually quite the lucky break for you. How do you mean? When a war breaks out, every mercenary in the land starts crawling out of the woodwork. And with all your associates here, you should have a large enough force to take on you-know-who. Geralt's mercenaries. Yeah, good point. And then you can give them their just desserts or die trying. Could have done without that last part. Thanks. Relax, relax. You know I'm on your side. Our destinies are forever intertwined. Do we have an understanding then? I understand your request, but I make no promises to honor it at this time. Pardon my candor, but you have yet to earn my confidence. I shall observe how this war progresses and then make the decision myself. Now, good day to you. Oh, Father! The current Alliance leader and I have finished our discussion. I will be taking my leave now. Everything okay, Claude? That seemed... tense. On the contrary, our conversation couldn't have been more pleasant. Count Gloucester is always a delight. If that was meant to be a joke, you will note that I am not laughing. Lawrence, it's been far too long. I'm glad to see you're safe and well. Yes, well, I doubt I will be either of those things for much longer. The Imperial Army has begun its march northward. Incidentally, what were you discussing with my father? Oh, you know, just what the lords should do in the unlikely event that the Imperial Army crosses into Alliance territory. And how did my father respond? With a whole lot of words, but not a lot of clarity. Hardly surprising. My father does not even share his innermost thoughts with me. And I am his heir. Lawrence, let me ask you something. Would you go along with his decisions no matter what? What exactly do you mean? Say, for example, if your father pledged his allegiance to the Empire, would you follow suit? Oh. Do you think Count Gloucester's going to betray us, Claude? Of course not. It's just a hypothetical. 
Well, then, that's a serious what if. Almost sounds like you're trying to provoke Lawrence. No, it is quite all right. In fact, it is a perfectly reasonable query, given my father's actions as of late. However, my father takes tremendous pride in being one of the five great lords of the Alliance. He would not betray us to the Empire lightly. I, for one, still have faith in him. I won't deny that your father is a great man, Lawrence. I just wish he regarded me with anywhere near the same level of esteem. Sir, Viscount Phlegathon has sent an urgent appeal to reinforce the front lines on the Great Bridge. Acheron again? How many times does that make it today? Only the fourth. He sent eight requests yesterday. I'll call that an improvement then. Thanks. Just tell him, message received, keep your chin up, and good luck out there. Yes, sir. It doesn't sound like things are going so good. We'll be able to hold the bridge, right? I wish I could say for sure, but I honestly have no idea. While we've been taking our sweet time getting situated, the enemy's been strengthening their position. Claude, we are nearing the breaking point. My father has sent an urgent request for reinforcements. Oh boy. Things must be getting really dire if Count Gloucester has sent word as well. Then surely it's time for us to depart. We just need to protect the bridge, right? Yes. If it falls into the Empire's hands, there'll be no keeping the war out of Alliance territory. I'd hate to see innocent towns and villages getting caught in the fighting. With the way things are going, though, I think we should be ready to abandon the bridge if necessary. If we go in determined to hold it at any cost, we could end up sacrificing a lot of lives in a battle we have no hope of winning. If worse comes to worse, it'll be up to us to evacuate as many of our soldiers as we can. The war with the Empire won't end with the coming battle, so I want to keep our losses to the absolute minimum. If the Great Bridge of Marden falls, then Garrig Mach will be in jeopardy too. That's true. And since Edelgard is set on toppling the Central Church, it probably won't end well for them. What are you going to do, Shamir? Will you return to aid the monastery? No. I have repaid my debt to Rhea. I no longer have any ties to the Knights of Saros. All right. Then let's adjourn this war council and get moving. Yeah! Let's do this! For the sake of the Alliance, don't hold anything back. I'm counting on each and every one of you. This looks bad. We might have to abandon the bridge after all. Either way, we can't afford to lose Count Gloucester. We have to secure an escape route and rescue him. And that's not going to be easy. We'll have to take the surrounding strongholds first. We do not hurry. My father's life will be in danger. Can we make use of the archers? Firing a volley right about now should do the trick. Archers, attack! It took you this long to arrive? Not that I expected much from our fraud of a leader. Yeah, sorry about that. We're here now at any rate. Count Gloucester's locked in battle in the center of the bridge. Hurry and rescue him. We must save my father at once! I had hoped to achieve victory without bloodshed. You know? My, well done! I can take it from here. Go forth and continue your assault. I would not trust that fickle weather vane. He's liable to betray us at the slightest breeze. Take a breather. We've got an escape route now, yeah? 
However, the situation is dire. Please cover my soldiers as they escape. Now seems like an opportune time to curry favor with the Empire. Troops, we are defecting. Move out! Looks like Lester's weather vane can't sense the prevailing wind after all. Don't hesitate to take them out. Time to show how strong you've become. You've got no choice but to abandon the bridge. Count Glock! I should have never thought the Empire my ally. Mister, order a retreat. I shall bring up the rear and draw the enemy away. All troops withdraw from the bridge post haste. At least we disposed of one problem. Is it safe to retreat now? Don't let them get away! Sorry, but I'm not letting anyone escape. Get in my way and I'll knock you flat! Kaspar, is that you? Well, no way am I gonna let you stop him! Give up now! Maybe I should stop. You wish! Always be prepared. Linhart, what are you doing? The enemy's gonna get away! You would have died if you kept fighting. You need to pay closer attention to what's going on around you. Now we have to guard against any enemy generals in pursuit. We can withdraw once everything is secure. Yeah, they're not gonna let us just waltz out of here. Target the enemy as soon as they pop their heads out. <sighs> I guess we probably shouldn't let them escape. Shall I open the gate to draw them in? Stop, Linhart! Don't go off <laughs> by yourself! <laughs> I'm so <I> too hurt! <laughs> If there's one thing Linhart hates, it's a pointless fight. We might be able to convince him to surrender. I really don't have much choice, do I? Sometimes you have to fight even when it's a pain. Has the Valley of Torment frozen over? I never thought I'd hear you say something like that. Don't you dare even think about dying for me! I will do what I want. Though I would prefer to avoid any squabbles with you. You know you'll end up dead if you keep going, right? So just surrender already. You could have said as much before you beat me up. You're all cruel, you know that? But fine. You were never the type to fight to the death anyway. If anything, I'm relieved. So you captured Linhart, huh? Sorry to ruin your fun, but I'm taking him back! Is he the only enemy general left? Oh, then let's on. take care of him before reinforcements arrive. If we can spare the effort, wouldn't it be preferable to take out all the nearby strongholds? Fine, you can keep Linhart then. I can't die here. Now we don't have to worry about them chasing after us. Let's get a move on and retreat before. What's that? You appear to be outmatched, Kaspar. Allow me to show you all the full might of the Empire. Reinforcements have already arrived. 
then I have no other option. House Gloucester hereby swears fealty to the Empire. Cease fighting and throw down your weapons. Further resistance is futile. What? Fall back! We need to get out of here! Claude, what is the meaning of this? Father! Why are you surrendering to... Father! Claude! What is the meaning of this? Has the Alliance forsaken my father? Far from it, Lawrence. Just calm down and we'll talk this through. How am I to remain calm at a time like this? The noble House Gloucester has been relinquished to Imperial control! Considering his position, I'm sure Count Gloucester anticipated this possibility and has already laid the groundwork to switch sides. I doubt the Empire will lay a finger on your father. So you've been thinking Count Gloucester might surrender all along? The Count's greatest concern has always been keeping the people of his territory from getting swept up in the war. It only stands to reason that he'd prefer a noble surrender to a lengthy, bitter resistance. I expect House Ordelia will follow suit and pledge fealty to the Empire. Um, Lawrence? Shouldn't we be returning to the Count? If we go back to House Gloucester, we will no longer be able to fight for the Alliance. Is that what you desire? Uh, no, of course not. Far from it. I intend to remain with the Alliance army as well. Assuming that's all right with you, Claude? I wouldn't have it any other way. This war has only just begun, after all. Since we've lost the bridge, the Imperial army will soon descend upon Leicester itself. We can't allow them to run rampant over our land. It's time to redraw the battle lines. Everyone here? Well, let's get right into it. We have to figure out exactly where we stand in this war. As you all know, the Empire has taken the Great Bridge of Murden. The Imperial Army now occupies what was formerly House Phlegathon territory. House Gloucester has surrendered to them as well. Doubtless an agonizing decision on my father's part. House Ordelia, to the east of the bridge, has also vowed not to take up arms against the Empire. We had precious little in the way of arms in the first place. You have my deepest apologies. You don't have to apologize, Lysithia. Count Ordelia did what anyone would have done. And now Lawrence and Lysithia can't even go back home! That's not all. After the battle, the Imperial Army crossed Gloucester territory and attacked Garrig Mach. Rhea and the rest of the Central Church have apparently fled to the Kingdom for sanctuary. Then I suppose none of us will be able to visit our old school anytime soon. I hope no one from the Church was hurt. There's no point in worrying about it now, but they're all tougher than you think. Now that the monastery has fallen, the front lines are rapidly expanding north. It won't be long before Deirdre is within their reach. And if our capital falls, the Alliance goes with it. We have to stop them there, no matter the cost. That all sounds well and good, but how large of an army will you even be able to raise at this point? I don't think House Edmund will be able to send more troops. I'm sorry. Which means House Goneril is the last of the five great lords upon whom we can rely. I'm not so sure the combined forces of Houses Regan and Goneril will be enough to hold off the whole Empire. We'll just have to work with what we've got. And let's not forget the hero of Daphne. Um, uh, who? He speaks of Judith, the head of House Daphne. She was once counted among the five great lords. We can definitely count on her. It helps that she seems to really like Claude for some reason. But we can't expect much from her in terms of sheer numbers. Any chance the kingdom could send troops? I doubt they'll have any to spare. They've just started engaging the Empire themselves over in the west of Fargus. And besides, I'm not sure how much we can really trust them. I still have no idea what's going on in Dimitri's head. 
Well, we have an idea of how big our army's gonna be, if nothing else. What's the plan? I'm still working that out. For now, all we can do is hold our ground and fight with everything we've got. You can always count on me. And my muscles. Thanks, Raphael. That unfounded confidence of yours is like music to my ears. Lady Rhea, Sedeth, I'm relieved you both made it out unharmed. It appears we arrived just in time. You have our utmost thanks for aiding in our retreat, Your Majesty. I can only apologize for the trouble we may have caused your outfit. King Dimitri, I cannot express just how grateful I am to you and all the fine people of Fargus. The honor is mine. Your order provided me with immeasurable aid during my ascension to the throne. My citizens would have branded me a heathen had I not returned the favor. And now it seems we are the ones who owe a debt. The Church shall provide whatever assistance it can to your efforts. If you see it prudent, I have no objection to placing the Knights of our Order under Kingdom command. Thank you both. While it pains me to qualify our hospitality, this kingdom is not a wealthy one, neither in goods nor provisions. I fear we may struggle to compensate your soldiers, or even to feed them. You needn't trouble yourself with such concerns. Your generous offer of shelter will be more than enough. Very well. We've lingered here long enough. Let us make for Ferdiad. There's much to discuss. The church, the kingdom, and the battles to come. It seems the Leicester campaign is proceeding smoothly. Indeed. Count Gloucester's timely surrender allowed us to advance with minimal casualties. Ferdinand's battalion is tightening the noose around House Regan's territory as we speak. The Minister of Military Affairs is making the necessary preparations to move his forces into the Alliance as well. Once Count Burgles takes the field, we won't have anything to worry about on that front. Yes. And at the moment, we have little choice but to divert most of our military might to our conflict with Fargus on the Western Front. I fear Count Rowe's abrupt change in allegiance will have only served to further provoke the Kingdom's army. Ah, yes. Him. He disregarded our timetable and launched an attack on the Kingdom without our approval. And in doing so, has done nothing but make trouble for the Empire. Still, we can hardly afford to abandon him. We have led our vassals to believe the Empire will always come to their aid. What a troublesome policy that has turned out to be. The policy may be irksome, but we will not fail to honor it. Dispatch immediate reinforcements to Count Roe. Understood. And what message shall I send to Count Burglis? I'm still a little wary of the Alliance's plans, but tell him we leave matters in his capable hands. Golden Wildfire. The Golden Guardian. After Count Gloucester's surprising defection, the Empire's invasion of Leicester begins in earnest. The Alliance Roundtable unravels, and the region descends further into chaos. Yet the Alliance does not yield. Claude takes command and rallies his comrades, insisting that so long as they can withstand the Imperial onslaught on Regan territory, they will survive. And that's where things are. It's only a matter of time before the Imperial Army marches on Regan territory. Once again, Margrave Edmund is only offering financial support instead of troops. My apologies. I'll do all I can on the front lines in my adoptive father's stead. And on top of that, 
He sent his adorable daughter to risk her life on the battlefield. Unbelievable. I'm so sorry for the trouble. You have nothing to apologize for. The blame rests squarely on your father's shoulders. Mark my words, the next time I see him... I think we get the picture, Judith. Save that fire for the battlefield. We're finally free of Count Gloucester and his overbearing pompousness. You don't need to go filling his shoes. Isn't that exactly why you called me here? If I'm to fill his seat, I assume I also get his right to complain. Honestly, what's going on? The Alliance is facing an unprecedented crisis, and these great lords can't even show up to their own round table. House Ordelia has no ability to resist the Empire, given our location and lack of military power. Were my father to take his seat at the round table now, the Empire might interpret it as a show of defiance. I take it that means House Ordelia won't be contributing to the Alliance in any way. Two of the five great lords have effectively forfeited their seats. Why not fill Ordelia's chair with someone like Viscount Seward? Not happening. Can you imagine the fuss Albany and Burgundy would kick up when they learned we only asked Seward to participate? Those three houses have always been treated as equals. Besides, I doubt Viscount Burgundy could come even if we did invite him. House Burgundy's circumstances are much the same as House Ordelia's. In fact, their position may be even worse than ours. How are we supposed to stop the Empire like this? House Goneril was supposed to swoop in and save our skins, and even they couldn't bother to attend. <laughs> Leave it to my brother to eat some bad mushrooms just before an important meeting. Don't you make excuses for him. If Holst couldn't make it, then the Duke should have come himself. House Goneril has already pledged their full support. They're not the problem here. Then why waste our time with this conference? Our troops were provided by the Alliance's nobles. You know we can't act without a resolution from the round table, even if it is a mere formality. And anyway, the entire Alliance needs to be on the same page if we're going to coordinate our military strategy. Well, as I said, I'm afraid there's not much House Ordelia can do, even if we are informed. Be that as it may, we still have to get this done. Let's move on and discuss our strategy for the battles to come. This is it, folks. Right now, we need everyone focused on defending Deirdre. Here's the plan. When we fought the Empire at the Great Bridge, it looked like they had a number of mercenary groups working for them. And yet, I didn't see any sign of Gerald's company among them. It's not like that was the only battlefield, and there's no shortage of mercenary companies. That's true. And you don't have any inkling of when the Empire is going to launch their attack on Deirdre? No clue. They could strike tomorrow for all I know. Then I imagine there's no time to waste in formulating a plan and fortifying the city's defenses. Yep. If we lose the initiative, the battle's practically over. If that's the case, then why are all of you just idling the days away? The army can't act until Claude returns from those meetings. It's like no one can even sneeze around here without it turning into an endless debate. A king or emperor can make things happen with a wave of their hand. But I guess it's not so simple when you're leading an alliance. Ruling by consensus may work in peacetime, but it seems to have a distinct disadvantage during a war. Hey, Claude's calling for us. Sounds like the round table's finally over. We better get going. If we don't hurry, all the food will be gone. It's not a banquet, you know. It's a war council. But yeah, we should move. I'll be right there. Let's start with introductions, shall we? Allow me to present the head of House Daphnel, the Honorable... The name's Judith. I'm joining the War Council at the invitation of our Supreme Leader here. 
It is a pleasure to see you once more, Lady Judith. I am heartened to know that we will be fighting at your side. You're Gloucester's kid, right? You've grown into quite a handsome boy over the last few years. <laughs> I'm sure all the men here seem like little boys to someone like Judith. Ah, Duke Goneril's daughter. You've grown quite lovely yourself. You'll be outshining me in no time. Are you kidding? I've got a long way to go before I can compete with you. I don't really know what you two are talking about, but I think I'm ready for it to be over. Let's start the briefing. So, you want us to hamper the Imperial Army's advance in order to delay their arrival at Deirdre? That's right. And we'll use every bit of time we gain to tighten up our defenses around the capital in preparation. Then we have to avoid losing too many of our allies before the battle in Deirdre. Exactly. Hold them off as best you can, but the second you're in any real danger, I want you to fall back. It's easy enough to order retreat after retreat, but I don't see how that's supposed to win the day. Do you really think we can win like this? I wish I could tell you that victory is all but certain, but honestly, it could go either way. Ultimately, our goal is just to buy time until the defenses are ready. And if we can just stop them from taking Deirdre... Claude, I have to ask, are you keeping some kind of incredible top-secret plan from us? Sure, I may have something up my sleeve, but it won't amount to anything if we fail to protect Deirdre, I can promise you that. But if we succeed, then this plan of yours will get us out of our predicament? If that's the case... Yes. Then there is still hope. You kids are all so young. Don't do anything rash and get yourselves killed, alright? Alright. Let's reclaim all that time we wasted on the roundtable conferences. Watch each other's backs out there. I know we can do this. Looks like the Imperial Army has finally begun their march in earnest. And they're headed straight for Deirdre. Okay, but what's the problem? This is exactly what you thought would happen. True enough. But even if I read the enemy perfectly and our allies do their absolute best, I can't do a thing about the odds. In the end, it's still a coin toss. It never should have come to this. If only I'd managed everything better in the first place. Hey, don't beat yourself up about it. That's not like you. There was no avoiding this situation, regardless of who was leading the Alliance. In fact, I bet things would be a whole lot worse if it was someone else. Maybe, but I'm not so sure. I can't help but feel there was another way I could have handled this. I had all these grand ambitions when I became leader. So much I wanted to achieve. But there's no time for any of that now. I've got my hands full just trying to keep the Alliance safe. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Tell me, friend. What should I do next? Why are you asking me? I'm no fortune teller. <laughs> Fair point. I guess all we can do now is keep moving forward. One foot in front of the other. Do you think your leader is all right? He seems a bit worn out. Well, I tried to cheer him up, but I don't think it did much. Ultimately, all I can do is my best. That's probably the only thing that'll actually help Claude anyway. I never imagined we would have such a difficult time advancing when our foes are so disorganized and dispersed. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have come. I can barely handle everyday life, let alone a difficult mission. Perhaps you would have been better off remaining at Garrig Mach, then? 
I volunteered for this assignment, but surely you had other options. Stay at Garrick Mock? No way! I do not want to be there when my father shows up! Then why not request a transfer for the Western Front? Aryan Road is infamously impregnable. You would have been quite safe stationed there. And risk running into Lady Rhea? She's even scarier! All right. Well, in that case, there is little you can do but focus on the task ahead. I cannot say I am pleased with our progress thus far, but Daredrew is finally in sight. If we can take the city, our mission will be complete. The Imperial Army has conquered much of Central and Western Regan territory. They'll attack the city in a matter of days. Thanks, Shamir. Your scouting prowess is unparalleled. I don't know what we would have done without your reports. It sounds like there's no point trying to delay them anymore. We need to pull the entire army back to Daredrew immediately. Hilda, send word to Duke Goneril and apprise him of the situation. Leave it to me, boss. It seems the repairs to the strongholds and gates have been completed, and all according to your specifications. We actually got it done in time, huh? All that's left is to get our troops in position and our defenses will be ready. The Imperial Army is practically at our doorstep. You should all head straight to your posts. Got it. I'll tell the others. All of our commanders are so young and inexperienced, myself included. We wouldn't have any hope of victory if it weren't for the combat experience you two bring to the table. You're putting a lot of stock in my skills, little Claude. Never thought I'd see the day. If you can just get us through this fight, I'll be able to turn the tables. Don't let me down, okay? Who do you think I am, boy? You've got nothing to worry about. You've just got to believe in your friends, Claude. If anyone can do this, it's us. That's what I'm betting on. Now let's win this. Hang in there, everyone. We'll turn this around, just you wait. The port can't remain in enemy hands. Use everything in your power to take it back. Ah, our fearless leader finally makes oh, his entrance. We've been now. holding out all by our lonesome. My apologies, Judith. I had my hands full elsewhere. We'll need you to maintain our defense. Everyone else, make sure she stays alive. Take a breather. Okay, we need to go stabilize the front lines. Just make sure they don't steal any of our strongholds back. What? What? We captured the port. This does not bode well. Launch our surprise attack. We set up an ambush inside the city? Can't say I expected that. Lower the drawbridge and intercept them. We cannot allow them to break through our defense. Let us all band together. We are not finished yet. Keep up the assault. Show them what the Empire is made of. It's no use. We're putting up a good fight, but we're one step behind. There's gotta be a way to turn the tables. Fear not! Pulse Sigiswald Goneril has arrived! I shall deliver Daredru from the hands of the enemy! Into the fray! Pulse? What are you doing here? Not that I'm complaining, though. I will crush the Empire forces! Everyone, follow me! My lord, the fire orbs are ready! Excellent! Prepare to fire! We shall blast a hole through their defense line! Oh no! Our defensive line is in jeopardy! Isn't there any way to stop them? We're able to move the ships now! Nice work. If we bring them this way, we can use them as a bridge. Ah! 
I'm glad we got all that stuff back. Take a breather. All right, it's my turn. All hands, attack! Get those ships over here! Wait! Isn't that Baldi? What's he doing fighting for the Empire? Dropping king of grappling? It's not. Faulty, just give up already. Why don't you join us instead? I've got no right to choose now that I'm beat. Do whatever you want with me. No. Ah! I didn't think I had underestimated you. This is terribly unfortunate. All units! Attack! Follow me! It is a noble's duty to protect the people. We must recapture Deirdre! I must not fail here. This is for the future of the Empire! I shall never back down! I'm not done yet. A few scratches won't scare me into abandoning my post. We can't hold out any longer! Please, send help! I let my ambitions get the better of me. We must withdraw and regroup. Fall back! We won! I want to hear those victory cheers, folks. They're probably planning a second assault after they regroup. But we'll see if that actually happens. Look! The Imperial Army is retreating! Steady, Hilda. Don't get too excited just yet. We've only repelled the first wave of their assault. The Empire has been funneling a great deal of troops into Leicester since taking control of the Great Bridge of Murden. I expect they'll have plenty of reinforcements at the ready, fresh and fully prepared to fight. Sharp as ever, Holst. I was thinking the same thing. We're not out of the woods just yet. But you still have your plan, right? I believe it is high time you explain exactly what scheme you hold up your sleeve. Just keep your eyes on the enemy and you'll know soon enough. Assuming the plan actually succeeds, that is. Um, what do you mean by that? Enough with the theatrics. Do you truly intend to evade our questions, even now? Well, if that's what our leader says, we'll just have to monitor the Imperial Army and await good news. If you are satisfied with that, Lord Holst, then it will have to suffice. I don't get it. Why are you still being so tight-lipped about this plan? Just keeping my promise to a certain individual who also happens to be the linchpin of this entire scheme. And, Lawrence, apologies in advance. Why are you apologizing only to me? That feels somewhat disquieting. Oh, very well. I shall wait to see just what it is you have been scheming. But to be clear, if this plan of yours fails, the Alliance is finished. We will no longer be able to resist the Empire. Yes, I'm well aware. Failure isn't an option. Move the injured soldiers to the rear. All those who can fight, reform your ranks. As soon as we are prepared, we will launch another attack on Deirdre. Another one? Why don't we just... 
Um, wait for Count Berkeley's. Our enemy is exhausted, while we have plenty of soldiers who are unharmed and able to fight. This is the most opportune time to strike. Lord Ferdinand. Ah, General Ladislava. We've been waiting for you. Has Count Burgley's arrived? No, he has yet to depart the Empire. There has been some suspicious activity in southern Leicester that has made the Minister wary to proceed. Suspicious activity, you say? Do we have any idea what the Alliance is plotting? Not to my knowledge, sir. As much as it pains me to say it, perhaps we should fall back until we know more. Hmm. And yet here we stand, on the precipice of victory. General Ladislava, our scouts have returned. And what do they report? Gloucester soldiers have launched a surprise attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. We've lost control of the bridge. We anticipate that House Gloucester and Ordelia's forces will soon seize the lands that belong to House Phlegathon. <laughs> so, Count Gloucester was deceiving us all along. What? We've been tricked! Oh no, 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 no! We're doomed! It seems we've blundered right into an Alliance trap. We have to retreat! Get out of here! Find some place safe to hide! Calm yourself, Bernadetta. A leader must project confidence for the good of their soldiers. We shall begin an orderly march to the Great Bridge of Murden at once. Though the enemy may give chase, stopping is not an option. We must maintain our course for the Empire and let nothing deter us. Understood. I am with you, wherever you may take us. I apologize for leading you both into this debacle. For now, all we can do is pray that any part of our host makes it back to the Empire safely. Forgive me, Edelgard. I may not be able to keep my promise to you after all. The Imperial Army is on the run. Looks like my plan went off without a hitch. According to a messenger from my father, Gloucester forces have launched a surprise attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. What did you say? The Imperial forces were caught completely off guard and have been driven back. The bridge is once again under Alliance control. He also said that Count Ordelia is working with Count Gloucester to fortify Southern Leicester. Using a false surrender to draw the enemy into a disadvantageous position. I take it that was your plan, my lord? Yeah, basically. Except that Count Gloucester wouldn't have acted if we hadn't won the battle for Deirdre. That was the promise we made. And thanks to all of you, I held up my end of the bargain. So, uh, what's all that mean now? They're saying that House Gloucester and House Ordelia never really betrayed the Alliance. I hope you can all forgive me. I knew the whole time, but my father had sworn me to secrecy. You knew about this, Lysithia? But my father never breathed a word of it to me. Claude, why was I not informed? Again, I'm sorry about that. Your father made me swear not to say anything until it was over and done with. But why? Is this another sign that he has yet to consider me a worthy successor? That's not it, Lawrence. But it's also not my place to speak for your father. You should ask him yourself the next time you see him. <laughs> I'm sure this all came as a shock to you, Lawrence, but there's no time to sulk. We need to move, and quick. If we don't surround and quash the Imperial Army right away, this little plan will backfire, and Count Gloucester will be the one left vulnerable. He's right. If Count Burgleys were to enter the fray now, our allies at the Great Bridge would be caught in a pincer attack. Well, who's this Count Burgleys person? The Empire's Minister of Military Affairs. 
His house holds the territory on the opposite end of the Great Bridge. I've yet to face him on the battlefield myself, but he's regarded as the greatest warrior in the Empire. I see where this is going. We need to move. I hate to ask this of you when you're still exhausted from the last battle, but I'm going to need one more push from each of you. Golden Wildfire. The Leader's Stratagem. The Alliance Army pushes back the Empire at Deirdre, where they receive word that Count Gloucester has rejoined the Alliance. It seems his disloyalty was all part of a deceitful plan. With their position lost, the Imperial Army begins to retreat. Claude and his allies press forward, planning to surround them as they flee to Adrestia. The Imperial forces within the Alliance are currently dispersed between the western part of Regan territory and the northern part of Gloucester lands. They're making a desperate attempt to march south, but Count Gloucester's persistent attacks have slowed their progress. I would appreciate it if you could be more precise with your language. In fact, my father's tactics have halted the Imperial Army's southward advance. I'm pretty sure that's what I just said. Anyway, here's where we come in. We'll surround the enemy, cutting off their retreat and cornering them in Western Regan territory. Then, we give them a good thrashing. That's it? Sounds kind of simple if you ask me. Hey, what more could you want? All the best plans are easy to understand. Trust me, it's a sure win. Yeah, even I know what's going on now. We just have to herd the Imperial Army into Western Regan territory and stop them from moving any further south, right? Couldn't have said it better myself. Just remember that the enemy knows this is their last stand. We have to proceed with caution. I want to finish them off before Count Burgley's has a chance to muster a sizable army and mount an attack. Um, Ferdinand and Bernadetta are leading the Imperial Army, right? I'm guessing you'd rather not kill them? Believe me, I don't want that either. We may have been in different classes, but they're still our old friends from the Academy. Once our forces are in place, I plan to offer them terms of surrender. But for now, we need to focus on driving their army into a corner. You got it! I swear on these biceps, I won't let them get away! I don't know. I'm not convinced it's gonna be that easy. But I guess that's besides the point. We've got to get out there. You said it. Let's move out. I can't believe that Count Gloucester betrayed us. The Great Bridge has fallen back into enemy hands. Now that our troops are trapped on Alliance lands, House Regan and House Gloucester have them surrounded on both sides. It's doubtless one of Claude's clever little stratagems, and it stings. I don't understand. Everyone is aware of the troubled history between Regan and Gloucester. Why would they decide to bury the hatchet now? Unless... This supposed feud is little more than a web Claude has spun for this exact moment. Perhaps it is, but perhaps not. For all we know, he wants us to overthink the situation and make a greater mistake. As it stands, Ferdinand's forces are trapped behind enemy lines. The Minister of Military Affairs is moving to recapture the Great Bridge of Murden with all haste. However, I fear he lacks a sufficiently sizable force to do so swiftly enough to reach our isolated comrades before they are crushed. We cannot stand idly by while our allies are in danger. What are our options, Hubert? I have already taken the liberty of engaging several promising mercenary companies. I directed them to covertly enter Alliance territory and provide reinforcements to Ferdinand. Why was I not informed of any of this? 
the very beginning, I had my doubts about Ferdinand and his ability to lead our troops to victory. I employed these mercenaries using my own personal funds, which obviated any need to report it. And you believe they'll make it to him in time? I do. It turns out that they are quite familiar with the terrain. I am confident that they will prove well worth the cost of their contracts. It's funny, Hubert, to think that your complete lack of faith in Ferdinand might be the very thing that saves his life. The world truly is a mysterious place. you, Claude? What are you doing in a place like this? Oh, hey. I'm not up to much. Just shirking my duties for a little bit. Your plan's going well, huh? We've managed to corral most of the Imperial forces that are still in the Alliance. Everything's moving like clockwork. At this rate, it won't be long before we've finished off the entire enemy force. You don't seem too happy about it. Hasn't this whole war been unfolding exactly the way you thought it would? So far, yeah. But it's not over yet. Unless we find a way to stop them, the Empire is going to make another play for the Great Bridge of Murden. And when that happens, we'll be taking on Count Burglis himself. It'll be a brutal fight, no matter how many angles we try to play. And even if we pull it off, what then? Do we invade the Empire or just stay on the defensive? We don't know what's going on with the Kingdom and the Church, and the Almirans could decide to drop in on us again at any time. There are limits to how far I can map things out, but the Alliance won't survive unless I account for every possibility. I'm dancing as fast as I can here, but there's no end in sight, and these feet are starting to get tired. Claude, if anyone can do this, it's you. You'll figure something out, just like you always do. I know it. I only hope that happens before I flat out collapse. Guess that would be a problem, yeah. Speak for yourself. I, for one, have plenty of wisdom to share. Perhaps I should grant you some? I probably won't be much help. But on the off chance I do get a flash of inspiration, I'll be sure to let you know. Excuse me? I've placed myself at your disposal, yet you claim there's only an off chance that I'd have a good idea? I'd appreciate a little more credit. You know, I'm really glad you're the one who hired me, Claude. You've got vision. You think about all these things that never even occur to me. Plus, I know you'll always pay me on time. <laughs> well, thanks for the vote of confidence. Sorry to make you listen to all my griping. But you know what? I feel a bit better now. Maybe it's not such a bad thing to let it all out now and then. Well, if all you need is someone to vent to, I'm here. I'll even give you a real good rate on it. Wait, you're charging me for this? You mercenaries sure know how to bleed a guy dry, don't you? Lord Ferdinand, I've brought an envoy from the Alliance. Allow me to introduce myself, sir. My name is Holst Sigiswald Goneril. It is an honor to meet you. Even those of us from the Empire have heard tales of your valor. I am Ferdinand von Eyre, and this army is under my command. I come as a representative for the Leicester Alliance. I'm sure you can guess what I'm planning to say. You are here to ask for our surrender, I take it. Your army is surrounded with no hope of victory or retreat. There would be no dishonor in laying down your arms. So the Empire declined our terms? 
I guess that's not a complete surprise. It was as if he didn't even consider the possibility. Perhaps he'd have regarded it an affront to his pride as a noble of the Empire. He's really willing to throw away the lives of those who serve him just for that? Actually, his troops' morale seemed unexpectedly high. I believe they've steeled themselves for a fight to the death. Not without exception, of course. One of his officers was hiding under a table. And I noticed some dispirited soldiers about their camp. Hiding under a table? Well, that has to be Bernadetta. I mean, who else could it be? I wonder if she'd hear us out. Since we couldn't convince Ferdinand to give up on this desperate last stand, we have no choice but to give him what he wants. If we win this battle, the Alliance will finally be back to where it was before the Empire invaded. No matter who you face on the battlefield, hold nothing back. Hit them with everything you've got. They've got nowhere to run. We must force the enemy generals to surrender. It was quite brilliant to surround them like this, Claude. And it could not have been accomplished without my father. Our escape route has been cut off. There must be some way to break through. Would you give it up already? You only keep losing troops if you... Huh? Time to slow down. Wait, that's... Did we make it in time? The situation doesn't look great, but we've still got a job to do. We'll cut a path for you. Follow us. You're Ferdinand, right? We've secured an escape route. Hurry, get your troops out of here. The mercenary company. You have my gratitude. Everyone, proceed to the escape route at once! Captain Gerald! Oh no. I really don't want to do this, but I can't let them get away. The entire army will crumble if I am defeated. I must retreat with everyone else, regardless of what happens. Bernadetta the Sniper? Perhaps we should use the information we obtained about the enemy's formations. Where are these arrows coming from? We'll never catch up to the enemy if we don't stop them. We'll show them how determined we are. The path is shut. The enemy is over there. Let us finish this. The Alliance forces are in disarray. Now is our chance, Lord Ferdinand. Listen in that state. The enemy doesn't seem that interested in fighting. We may be able to convince her to surrender. Oh, wish you were surrounded by walls, not enemies. Why did it have to come to this? I'm not afraid of you. Forward, march! Um, Bernadetta, could you maybe stop fighting? Wait, what? No, I'm not I'm not ready to die! Please, don't murder me! Captain Gerald, I leave the rest to you. I will rally the troops who have managed to withdraw. Captain, we should join the front line as well. We must save as many soldiers as we can. There you go. Getting all worked up again. 
Well, I guess our pay will get docked if we just stand around. Now we can focus on pursuing them. Wait, something's happening in the central area. What is that? You will not go any further. So that's the Ashen Demon, huh? Don't engage them if you can help it. Focus on stopping the Imperial troops. Is that... Alois? Did he leave the Knights of Saros? Ah, I'm afraid that's it for me. I must withdraw. We can advance now. Forward! Time to face the Bladebreaker's wrath. More capable than I expected. We must prioritize the Imperial troops. There is no need to engage if you're having difficulties. I know we were told not to engage, but isn't this a great opportunity to see how much you've grown? The escape point is before us. Go, everyone. I will provide you with backup. <laughs> they have turned their attention back to us. We must cut a path once more. We can't let our blockade fall apart. We need reinforcements. They got me beat, huh? Hey, it happens. All right, I'm falling back. We've considerably weakened the mercenaries. All that's left is to catch Ferdinand. Sorry, but our fight ends here. I'm slip away like it was nothing. You caught up to me, but I shall not surrender here. If you're with the Alliance Army, then I'm here to stop you. So this is where it ends. Lord Ferdinand, please retreat. I will hold them off. I promised Her Majesty that I would protect you at all costs, and I intend to see that promise through. Edelgard truly made you promise such a thing? But I cannot very well abandon you here. If we lose you, we lose the whole army. Please go, so that everyone might live. At least Lord Ferdinand got away. Your Majesty, if only I could have seen you one last. Their general escaped, but we struck a blow to the Imperial Army nonetheless. I'd call this a victory. Well, we did it. Yet you're still the saddest looking fighter in camp. Why the long face? Because we only barely got the job done. Everything else was a miserable failure. Sure, we routed the Imperial Army and forced Geralt and his mercenaries to retreat. But we let Ferdinand get away in the process. And if that wasn't bad enough, I failed to beat the Ashen Demon. Basically, we lost in nearly every way you can lose. Wrong! You were hired to do a job, and you did it. And in the process, you've received a valuable reminder about the unique danger the Ashen Demon poses. Unique danger? Not sure I'd go that far. And what other phrase would you use for a mercenary that can single-handedly change the tide of battle? 
If we're to win this war, the Ashen Demon needs to be eliminated as soon as possible. Yeah, you're probably right. Thanks for the chat. Did you manage to find Ferdinand and his troops? No, but I spotted tracks that suggest they fled toward Garrick Mock. So they've given up on the southern route and are making their way back to the Empire by circling west. It won't be easy to catch them now. I'm just relieved that Ferdinand is still alive. I must admit, I am too. Yeah, same here. I just wish we could have caught him, though. Knowing Ferdinand, he's gonna think the only way to redeem himself is by attacking us again. Well, if he does, I'll just chase him away. I'll send that guy packing as many times as we need. I'm more worried about Gerald and his mercenaries. I'm with you on that. Right. Ferdinand would have never escaped if Gerald's people weren't covering him. I suspect this won't be the last we see of them. We can't let their smaller numbers lull us into a false sense of security. That's a surefire way to get beaten. On the bright side, we've taken down most of what was left of the Imperial Army's invasion force. I think it's fair to say the Alliance has officially made it to the other side of this crisis. Great work, everyone. May I ask what our next move is, my lord? Well, as you know, the Empire is currently locked in battle with the Kingdom of Fargus. With fronts to the east and the west, the Empire stretched thin. They've been forced to divide their army. I'd be curious to hear what my favorite mercenary thinks. What would your next move be? As the brains of this duo, I'll take this one. The answer couldn't be clearer. Attack the enemy's homeland. First off, I'd fortify our borders. Then we could rally the Alliance army and prepare for what comes next. Okay, that's the exact opposite of what I told you. I'm hurt that you place so little faith in me. That would only serve to put us in the same position as before, playing defense against the Empire. Now is the time to go on the offensive. I agree. They attacked us first, so we're fully justified in the retaliation. What's more, if we can claim House Burgley's farmlands for ourselves, then the Alliance should be sitting pretty for a century to come. Um, isn't Count Burgley's known for his incredible strength? He may be a Drestia's mightiest warrior, but at the end of the day, he's still just one man. The Empire's invasion of Leicester has failed. That crack in their armor is just the opening we need to strike. If victory means peace for the Alliance, I'm all for it. I won't lose to this Count, no matter how tough he is. I'm sure if we don't take this opportunity, it won't be long before the Empire regroups and attacks us again. I don't approve of this at all. Surely the Alliance army is already exhausted from fighting multiple battles. So many of our soldiers are wounded. We should give them time to rest and recover. If our attacks were to somehow fail, then the Alliance would be plunged right back into crisis. And need I remind you, the next time the Empire knocks on our metaphorical door, we will not be able to employ the same tricks again. We won't fail. I'll handle Count Burglis myself, and I will vanquish him. But, Holst, can you really afford to be away from our territory for so long? Almira could strike at any moment. My, this conversation's certainly gotten heated. Do I sense another round table meeting in the works? Seems like this kind of decision would need one of those conferences, huh? That's how it goes around here, yeah. I guess we'll just have to table this discussion until then. I've returned, Father. Hmm, yes. Father, between your feigned betrayal and surprise attack at the Great Bridge, your leadership in this war has been nothing short of exceptional. However, 
I must ask why you felt it necessary to exclude me from your plans. I could have assisted you had I only known your intentions. No. If Deirdre had fallen, House Gloucester would have remained a loyal vassal to the Empire. There was no need for you to share the stigma of that betrayal. I wanted your hands to remain clean. You are, after all, the heir to the noble House Gloucester. Father. But I will tell you this. Claude von Regan is dangerous. In this matter, I allowed him to inveigle me into going along with his scheme. And what was born of this plan of his? Much of our domain became a battlefield, its citizens exposed to considerable peril. That seems a small price to pay considering all we have gained. An Alliance leader who dismisses any amount of suffering is unfit to bear the title. I am convinced that Claude will never understand this. Now, that is not necessarily... Listen to me, Lawrence. I am done obeying that reckless child. You cannot mean to secede from the Alliance. No, of course not. I intend to yield my title. What? Claude may be the one to save our Alliance, but I refuse to serve under him all the same. You, however, are much more adept at dealing with his particular style of leadership. Would you not agree? You are proposing I become head of this house? Are you certain? Lawrence, my son, I have long forced you to uphold my own ideals. That too ends today. Going forward, you shall act in accordance with your own beliefs. My only stipulation is that you never forget your duty to protect the common folk and always consider their best interests. You have my word. I stand both honored and humbled to accept the Countship of House Gloucester. Golden Wildfire. A Contest of Beasts. Having struck down the Imperial Army's incursion, the Alliance sees an opportunity to launch a counter-invasion. The Round Table convenes and urges the plan to go forward. The Alliance Army targets Burgley's territory, just beyond the Great Bridge. They advance to seize its fertile lands, which are protected by the Empire's Minister of Military Affairs. Having been vested with my father's authority, I cast the vote for House Goneril. We vote yay. And how say you, Count Gloucester? I have decided to yield House Gloucester's seat to my son. Lawrence, you will cast your vote as the new head of our house. Before I do, might I inquire as to the position of Count Ordelia? Count Ordelia couldn't attend in person, so he was briefed in advance on this meeting's agenda. At which time, he expressed that House Ordelia would support the opinion of the Council. Then House Gloucester will join Houses Edmund and Goneril and offer no objection. We vote yay. Then with the approval of all Houses, the Alliance will move forward with the proposal. Huh. Duke Goneril's position came as no surprise. But I didn't expect Margrave Edmund to show so much interest in your plan. Margrave Edmund knows an opportunity when he sees one. I'm just glad that his calculations swung in our favor. It goes without saying, but as the leader of House Daphnel, you have my full support. But I hope you understand that some of our other frontline commanders don't share my enthusiasm. Oh, I'm well aware. I'll need to find some way to get everyone on board. The Round Table voted on our next course of action, and support for an attack on the Empire was unanimous. We need to get preparations underway. Unanimous? I was led to believe that my father would be too busy overseeing the restoration of our territory to attend. 
The Count made me his proxy, which I interpreted as a sign of support. That's surprising. I'd heard Ordelia territory suffered greatly when the Empire invaded. Are you sure my father has agreed to this? Our resources are limited enough as it is. I can't imagine what we could spare for an extended campaign. Is it really a good idea to keep fighting this war? Since Houses Ordelia and Gloucester suffered the brunt of the casualties in our previous battles, we plan to ask relatively little of them going forward. In fact, Margrave Edmund has generously agreed to raise the lion's share of the funds we'll need. My adoptive father views this war as just another investment. He must be expecting significant returns. And he has every right to a return comparable to his contribution. Look, this isn't something you all need to worry about. Now, Lawrence, since you're the head of House Gloucester, would you care to elaborate on your thoughts about the proposal? Given the treachery House Gloucester has shown the Alliance as of late, I did not believe we were in any position to object to your proposal. Therefore, I chose to quietly acquiesce during the roundtable. That so-called treachery was all part of the plan to save the Alliance. No one actually thinks your house betrayed us. Laudable results do not erase duplicitous intent. Had the winds shifted in their favor, my father was prepared to remain with the Empire. Yeesh. All right, let's ask someone else. What do you think, my friend? Hasn't the decision already been made? At this point, you should be free to speak your mind. The Imperial Army attacked the Alliance first. They need to pay for what they've done. I agree. The Empire started this war. I say we finish it. I just want to be clear about one thing. I'm not trying to invade the Empire because of some personal ambition. Seizing House Burgley's territory is essential to the future of the Alliance. That much won't change whether we continue to wage war with the Empire or simply need a little leverage for peace talks. This fight is about protecting our future. So I'm asking you all to lend me your strength because I can't do this alone. Oh, all right. I'm sure you must have agonized over this decision. I suppose the die has been cast. What matters now is that we win. That's true. All right. I'll steal my resolve and fight. This battle is for everyone in the Alliance. I'm gonna fight with all my muscles. Even the ones I don't know are there. I'm in too. And I'm not about to let Geralt and his mercenaries beat me either. I may be the one drawing up the plans, but it's up to all of us to see them through. I know you won't let me down. Your Excellency, I have a report concerning the movements of the Alliance Army. Go on. Enemy troops throughout the Alliance have marched south and are now gathering on the north side of the Great Bridge of Murden. The scale of their force is much larger than what would be expected of a defensive operation. So it's come to this, has it? Who would have imagined that the Alliance would dare threaten my territory? What do we do? Should we ask Edelgard to send reinforcements? No. This isn't worth troubling Her Majesty over. Are you sure? We lost an awful lot of soldiers when we were defeated at the bridge. The main force of Her Majesty's army has been sent to the Kingdom Front. It would be more trouble than it's worth to call them back. Besides, you remember that mercenary company that performed so well before? They're back with us. You mean the one run by that Gerald guy? I gotta admit, they do seem to know their stuff. In addition, we can expect reinforcements from that meddlesome ox woman. That should round out our numbers. Well, when you put it like that, maybe we really can handle this. 
So what's next? We gonna crush them with a head-on attack? We'll meet the Alliance army at Grander Field. The area once used to stage the Battle of the Eagle and Lion will serve well. After all, it has already been trampled beyond use, and I doubt the enemy will go out of their way to burn our fields, given that they plan on seizing them. I bet Holst will be part of the invasion force. He's the one who fought back all those Almiran armies. I've been dying to take him on. You'll do no such thing. I'm going to face him myself. But why? How do you know I can't take him if you won't even let me try? The fact that you don't know only proves you're not ready to face an opponent like him. Besides, Holst is hardly the only foe we need to focus on. I doubt Count Gloucester was acting alone when he devastated the Imperial Army. I'm sure the Alliance's leader, Claude, hatched that scheme. We need to be wary of him. Claude, huh? Yeah, he did seem like a pretty crafty guy. Tactics like that may work for some, but don't expect our house to come up with schemes of our own. We'll see through the enemy's tricks and then quash them with our might. All right, we're gonna crush their flimsy ploys with some good old-fashioned brawling. Let's do it! General Nader, our troops are completely exhausted. Everyone's starving and we're running out of water. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need you to bear it a little longer. If we don't ration our provisions, we won't have enough for the way back. We didn't bring enough supplies for the journey back? What is Prince Shahid thinking? I'm sure the only thing he's focused on is that fantasy of his, where he earns enough renown to secure his succession to the throne. He's so convinced he'll sup on the spoils of victory, he hasn't even bothered to prepare for defeat. Well, that explains it then. I sure hope this battle ends the way the Prince wants it to. You and me both. If we win, great. But if we stumble here, we're as good as dead. Why is His Majesty letting Prince Shahid do as he pleases? His Majesty hasn't been himself since Prince Khalid disappeared. Khalid was always his favorite, you know. Nadir, the next batch of reinforcements will be arriving shortly. A force of elite troops, courtesy of my uncle. Rejoice! Oh, even more reinforcements? The size of the army is what decides most battles. And with me in command, it should be nigh impossible for an army of this size to lose. Well, actually, advantageous terrain may be more important. We can continue this later. March out to greet the new arrivals and get them into formation. I will go rally them afterwards. <laughs> If only we could feast on lofty speeches, then we'd eat like kings. An army this size limits the tactics we can use. Ugh. They're going to think we're just a horde of barbarians! This is no fun at all. If only you were here, kiddo. Hmm? Is something wrong, my lord? Have you noticed anything amiss? Hmm. No, it's nothing. Looks like we're coming up on Grander Field. And here I was, bracing for a ruthless attack the moment we crossed the Great Bridge. It seems like Count Burglis wants to settle this the old-fashioned way. No tricks, just one soldier bashing into another. And look at that. He was nice enough to have his troops all lined up and waiting for us. Those are all offensive formations. It's as if each battalion is a giant monster ready to pounce. I thought the army that invaded Leicester was fearsome. But this force... They are truly in a league of their own. Your legs are shaking, Moritz. Are you scared? Don't be preposterous. I am merely quivering with excitement over the impending battle. Hey, check it out. Looks like we'll be up against Gerald's company again today. Yep. And this time, I'll slay the Ashen Demon for sure. 
Well, my business is with their captain. I just wish there was a way I could speak to him. You know Gerald? Of course. I'm his apprentice. But I haven't seen him in years. Not since he left my village. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not about to go easy on him just because he trained me. I want to take him on and show him how much stronger I've gotten. Gerald's really tough. Don't get yourself killed, okay? You don't need to worry about me. I'll get out of there if it turns out I'm no match for him. Then I'll just keep challenging him until I am. Watch out for the mercenaries. But remember, our real target is the Imperial Army's top commander, Count Burglis. If you aren't confident you can handle him, then keep your distance. But not to worry, because I'll be the one to bring him to his knees. I'm counting on that, Holst. Look alive, everyone. The battle's about to start. Our only goal is to take out Count Burglis. Let's start by capturing the strongholds on the front line. Where did Holst go? It isn't safe to have people charging off by themselves. He said that he wished to preserve his strength at the start so that he might be fully prepared to face Count Burglis. He can handle himself, but try to keep an eye out for him. All right, let's keep toppling these strongholds. House Burglis' army is mediocre at best. No problem. We got, I got this. It. I don't see the Ashen Demon yet. Better keep on our toes. Yeah, but remember, our main target is Count Burglis. There's no guarantee you'll face the Ashen Demon directly. Aren't things going a little too well? Dang. There's no way the Imperial what? Army is this weak. Yeah, something's off. It's like they're holding back. In the name of the Emperor, I, Monica von Ox, shall obliterate the Alliance Army! I knew they were hiding soldiers somewhere. But we should be able to break through at this rate. They're targeting an ally stronghold. We have to deal with them before they attack us from behind. The enemy is gaining strength. I can be catching them off guard and stopping them. She is the Princess of Bridget, a vassal state of the Empire. Perhaps we can convince her it would be advantageous to join us. You are a formidable foe, but I will not back down that easily. I cannot be letting you through. myself any further. Mark my words. I'll be back. Why do you lead the Empire? Will you not be protecting your family? It's more a question of priorities. I value my life, so I have to fight. I am having problems. I must reconsider my way of fighting you. There's a lot riding on you, Petra, isn't there? Is it really the smartest choice to die here? Take a breather. You are right. I will be choosing to live. Well done. But this is Empire territory. Do not think you will retain the upper hand forever. So the Imperial Army wants to fight us in an open field. It's what I expected, but it's still quite a sight to see their army up close. There's no way we'll be able to break through their formation head on. We could just make some burdens come to us. I've got it. 
Anyone who can, go take out the Imperial Generals on the southeast side. The southeast? But there appear to be plenty of enemies to the west as well. Just go with me on this. We're gonna defeat those generals and then rave about how Holst took them down. We're gonna make sure the entire battlefield knows that Lester's mightiest warrior has arrived. We did it. Now we don't have to worry about them coming up behind us. My lord, I can no longer bear to watch quietly from the sidelines. It is time to make my move. <laughs> Give him all you got, Holst. We'll back you up. <laughs> no Imperial dog is a match for a Holst Sigisvald Goneril. You are more formidable than I expected. Ah, the enemy appears. Then I guess it's time for the Blade Breaker to put an end to both you and your schemes. The Blade Breaker has certainly made an appearance, but it seems the Ashen Demon is further back among the enemy troops. Then we'll go after Gerald first. The Ashen Demon might come out if he's in danger. There's a commotion on the Eastern Front. Send any free generals over there at once. Is that all you've got? You'll have to send your entire army if you want a chance of stopping me. Time to face the Blade Breaker's wrath. That's the Empire's strongest warrior of any. Couldn't he have stopped you? Looks like I'm at a disadvantage. Time to draw back. Holst, Claude told us to take down the enemy generals and then pretend like you did it. I see. So he plans to use my name to draw out Count Bert, eh? Oh, so that's what he's doing. Now it makes sense. We are unable to stop Holst's advance. Please, send aid, Your Excellency. So, Holst has appeared at last. Then I must go forth and face him myself. Kaspar, this place is now under your command. Don't huh? you dare lose to him. Man, I want to fight Holst too. The enemy is on the move. Count Marley's is headed this way. Then he took the bit. Now we need to lure him into the stronghold. My name is Alois Rangel, and by my honor, you will go no further. You think I'm struggling here? This barely squeezes into my top five top fights. If the captain's pulled back, then so will I. My turn. Gerald's mercenaries have withdrawn. What will the Ashen Demon do now, I wonder? They both withdrew? Then it's up to me to turn this around. Perfect. Draw the Ashen Demon into the stronghold. I'm not backing down. I'll face you in my father's stead. They say this one's even stronger than the Blade Breaker. Avoid any direct engagement. We'll use the same strategy as we did with Count Burgley's. Bait the Ashen Demon into the stronghold. Now, close the gate! I fell for a trap? <laughs> I guess Gerald's defeat shook me. Our fight isn't over. We'll settle this later. You wish to do battle with me, Holst? Then I'd be glad to accept your request. You're the one who sought me out. I will take you on right here, right now. No, Holst! 
You're supposed to draw him into the stronghold first. If we can just shut the gate, hurry and get away from Count Burglis. He's in. Close the gate, now. You're sending this many troops after me? Don't think I'm the only lion waiting to strike on this battlefield. That takes care of those two. Now all that's left is to rain down a world of hurt on the Imperial Army. My father's locked down, and I've got to step up. Ah, so your plan is to use the Ballisti to bombard them with arrows. Works for me. Wow, Holst, you knew exactly what he was getting at. You must be Claude. We have lost sight of His Excellency. Take down the surrounding stronghold using whatever you can. So you're the ones invading this time, huh? I'll knock you clear out of here! I have to pay you back for what happens at Mergen! Out of the way! I can't believe you beat me twice! Let him fly! They stole our Ballisti? Kaspar, how could you let this happen? This is bad. I need to find a way out of here. Now's our chance. Everyone, take out Count Burglis! If you need to, I'll defeat Count Burglis. Into the fray. <laughs> Leopold von Burglis stands before you. Come and face me. You've got the strength to slay me, coward. Offer up your final prayers before I send you to the afterlife. I can see why they call you the strongest in the Empire. But I won't fall here. The rumors sell you short, young man. Likewise, sir. But I'm glad to see you're tougher than they say. Too bad. We'll finish this later. <laughs> Until then, keep that head on your neck. <laughs> you too. The Alliance is withdrawing. Do not pursue them. We will pull back as well. We've got a problem, everyone. Retreat as quick as you can. Sir, the Ashen Demon has escaped and is attacking one of our other strongholds. No, we can't get cut off. Everyone, attack the Ashen Demon with everything you've got. The Ashen Demon is as fierce an opponent as Count Burglis. Do not let your guard down for even a second. That's the last of them. They won't be looking for Count Burglis now. The others don't stand a chance. You're the only one who can destroy the Ashen Demon. Yeah, I know. Witness my true power. How many times have we fought now? Either way, this will be the last. You're right about that. I'm not letting you leave here alive, Ashen Demon. No escape! You just give me an easy way. Enemy death. That was fantastic work. You might actually 
actually have to work for this one. You finally got that menace on the way. for one so small. Perhaps you truly are one of their descendants. In any event, you labored to destroy my vessel, did you not? That is a deed most foul. One you will pay for with your life! You cannot hope to win so bound in flesh. Pitiful. This isn't a fight you can win. Get out of there! You can run all you like. Why do you... fight me? <laughs> Why so this... This way! Hurry! Sorry, Claude. He lost again. I'm starting to think that mercenary really is a demon. Even in a fair fight, we end up looking like chumps. Listen, something's come up. We have to pull out now. It kills me to say it, but our victory here will have to wait for another day. Got it. Let's get out of here. Why have you ordered a retreat, my lord? We nearly had them. We've received an urgent missive from Duke Goneril. The Almirans are making their move. <sighs> of all the times. On what scale? From what I gather, it's bigger than the force we faced two years ago. We need to get back to the Alliance, and fast. But the attack two years ago was supposed to be the biggest one we faced in a whole century. The Duke always keeps a careful eye on developments in the East. If that's what he says, then it's true. Even if Duke Goneril and the neighboring lords rally all their remaining troops, it won't amount to much. Do you think we can make it in time? We'll be cutting it close, but that's what Fodlan's locket is for. It should take the Almirans a while to break through that hulking chunk of stone. We're not moving fast enough. I'll go on ahead. My lord, I leave it to you to finish things here. Sure thing. We'll be right behind you. Just try and hold out until we get there. Everyone prepare for a full withdrawal. If we don't get home soon, we won't have one to return to. <sighs> With this latest turn of events, it seems unlikely we'll see the Ashen Demon again anytime soon. And here I thought we won. As did I. Who knew the Ashen Demon had that kind of strength? Not that I'm making excuses. You gave me power of my own, and it still wasn't close to enough. That's not true. Of course it is. What am I even up against here? like I looked away for one second and suddenly I was facing someone else entirely. Hmm, that would explain what was troubling me before. That is the unique danger I sensed. Still, you can win this fight. I know you can. And I'll do whatever I can to make it so. We'll claim victory over that monster together. Thanks, but let's face it, I'm outclassed. Maybe it's time we give up this obsession and start looking for a different way forward. And hey, the Ashen Demon's a mercenary, right? Might be best for the Alliance to toss some coin their way and put this whole rivalry behind us. You want to hire that thing? Seriously? Fighting side by side with the Ashen Demon? Are you mad? You make it sound like the worst idea in the world. 
We have a war to win here, remember? Gotta keep an open mind. Ah, I understand now. You've witnessed your adversary's true strength and convinced yourself you cannot win. But trust me, you don't need to worry. You'll get stronger soon, I promise. So, maybe don't go relinquishing your prey just yet. After all, I desire nothing more than to see you achieve your goals. <sighs> A glove does not defy the hand, and yet you've done just that. So this is my name, yet I am also called the beginning. I am progenitor and mother to all who call Fotlin home. Where am I? I am not here to answer all you ask. Yet I will grant the one. You stand before my throne. If you so wish, then take a seat. But know then that your flesh is mine to wield. You lack the power to resist. My flesh? What are you saying? You should not have interfered! I could have cut that wretch down with a stroke! Oh, that one vexes me so. When next we meet, I must step in and deal with them myself. It is quite clear that you cannot my power safely wield. Do I speak plain? Not in the slightest. I have so many questions. Hey, lazy bones. <laughs> Get up already. You sure you're all right? You don't seem like yourself. I'm fine. Just a strange dream. Like the ones you used to have. Yes. But this time we talked. Huh? You fool! That was no dream! <sighs> What's wrong? Do you lack wits? My voice is not for him. Whenever I speak, it is for you alone. On second thought, I think there is something wrong. I mean, my hair's still a different color, right? Yes, and your eyes, too. How that happened is beyond me. Anyway, we lost the battle, so probably best to wave this place goodbye and find somewhere to rest up. Is that a fact? Actually, I think I'd feel more comfortable staying here on the battlefield a while longer. I just need to swing my sword around and get my head on straight. Don't worry, I'll be fine. If you say so, but if it gets any worse, tell me. So, the Alliance army turned tail and ran. Surprising. It looked like they had plenty of fight left in them. They received some sort of urgent message. I imagine that means a crisis has popped up somewhere in the Alliance. Almira, probably. After only two years, the Almirans have certainly grown restless lately. Maybe they're in the middle of a succession. Been 20 years or so since their current king took the throne, after all. So, what are we gonna do? Go after them? No. We'll let them go. But when the Imperial Army tried to withdraw from the Alliance, they were hunted down, destroyed. We should give them a taste of their own medicine. The enemy's retreat takes them through our territory's richest grain fields. If we engage them, the Empire's breadbasket will go up in flames. What's more, they're leaving those fields untouched when they could just as easily set them ablaze. We'll repay their decency and kind. Well, okay, if that's how you want to play it. Minister Burglies, I must return to the Emperor and brief her on these latest developments. Do what you must, but please deliver a message from me as well. 
about this war with the Alliance. Our war with the Alliance has gone on long enough. That's what Minister Burgley said. Yes, although he didn't say so begrudgingly, it was almost as if he had come to respect the Alliance and its leaders. The Minister of Military Affairs, admiring an enemy of the Empire? I cannot say that pleases me. The Emperor alone has the discretion to decide when to bury the hatchet with a foe, and when to bury it in their back. That foolish war horse has always caused nothing but trouble for me. You and the Emperor should be prepared for more of the same. <laughs> then we shall continue to rely upon our Minister of Domestic Affairs to keep him in check. I assure you, that man only ever pretends to listen to what I say. But I will grant that if nothing else, his intuition rarely misses the mark. Therefore, Your Majesty, I would urge you to seek an armistice with the Alliance. I must confess, the same thought occurred to me when I heard that Ferdinand had failed to capture Deirdre. Perhaps it's time we focus the entirety of our armies on the Kingdom Front and cease our attempts to conquer the Alliance through military means. Hmm. Yes. Through military means. When an opportunity presents itself, send an envoy to Claude, assuming he doesn't fall to the Almirans, that is. He made short work of one of our armies. He will not lose to Almira. We should inform Minister Burglies of your decision at once. If he catches wind that the Alliance forces are struggling, he may well charge off to fight Almira himself. I hardly think he would do something so... On second thought, who knows what that man would do. Minister Havering, I shall leave it to you to compose the missive. Please write what you must to ensure the Count doesn't do anything rash. Golden Wildfire. What makes a king? Though victory is within their grasp, News of an unexpected incursion from Almira forces Claude and the Alliance army to retreat. Driven by revenge, Almira invades with a far larger battalion led by none other than Prince Shahid. The Alliance hangs on by a thread, but Claude has another plan up his sleeve. Looks like we made it back in time after all. The fighting hasn't really picked up yet. I'm sorry about all this. I dragged you on this forced march right after our first assault on the Empire just to face a new enemy on a new battlefield. I always thought Almira might attack, but I never predicted they'd pull together an army this big. This is exactly why I didn't think we should attack the Empire in the first place. I'll admit that no one could have seen this coming. Sometimes you just get unlucky. I don't think there was any avoiding this. Well, at least the Imperial Army didn't come after us. So our troops are still battle-ready. And there's been enough meat in our rations to keep me energized and raring to go! Thanks to the support from Margrave Edmund, we've had plenty of provisions. There is no reason we should not be able to fight effectively. That doesn't change the fact that messing up now could mean the end of the Alliance. All because of my miscalculation. Come on, we always dump all the tough planning on you. We've got nothing but appreciation for the work you do, Claude. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. What matters is that we made it here in time. That's what counts, right? Come on, Claude, let's get moving. Sounds like I'm the one who needs to get his head on straight. Okay, time to put all that behind us and focus on driving back this invasion. No movement on the Empire side, huh? All this quiet only makes me more anxious. 
Perhaps what keeps them at bay is the fear of having to face the famed hero of Daphnil. Irvin, do my ears deceive me, or did you just make a joke? I do not jest. Your being here is the only thing preventing me from surrendering to the Empire this very instant. You can drop the traitorous villain act. I know you've done more for the Alliance than anyone else. You give me far too much credit. All that has ever mattered to me is ensuring the well-being of the common folk in my territory, not the Alliance itself. And that's what makes you a great lord in my book. Or rather, it made you one, I suppose. Indeed, now I am but a humble retiree, ready to enjoy my decrepitude. Maybe now, people will actually leave me be. I wouldn't count on that. You'll have plenty of unwanted company if the Empire attacks. Oh, I do not think we need concern ourselves over that. If the Empire had any intention of continuing their war with the Alliance, they would have struck already. I imagine they have reconsidered their plans following that last battle. It was foolish of them to start a war on two fronts in the first place, but it would be even greater folly yet to continue after witnessing the might of the Alliance. Hold on. Are you saying the reason you volunteered to defend the Great Bridge is because you figured it wouldn't be attacked? Mm, now there is a thought. Humble retiree, my foot. You're just as shrewd as ever. You honor me, Lady Judith. At last, our full army is finally assembled. Soldiers as far as the eye can see. Drink it in, Nadir. It is quite a sight to behold. Yeah, I guess it is. It should be child's play for an army of this size to break through Foodland's throat. They may as well crown me King of Almyra right now. I sure hope you're right about that. Who knows where Khalid is now? But I can just imagine the look of despair on his face when he hears of what I have accomplished. <sighs> he has no clue how to lead an army this big, and yet he's already bragging of his victory. I'm under no obligation to follow Shahid any further. Perhaps it's finally time to do as I please. Not many people in Elmira could mobilize an army this massive. If it's not the king, it's gotta be one of the princes. Which means... Shahid's definitely their commander. What's up? Something wrong? Nah, not especially. You sure? Cause I definitely just heard a we've got a problem sigh. There's nothing to worry about, really. And besides, I can't see any other way around this. I'll just have to do what needs to be done. That's all there is to it. I feel like I'm missing something. My lord, we have made ready to intercept the attackers and await your signal. Right. Here goes. Listen up, everyone. The enemy may have an advantage in size, but they're little more than a disorganized mob. We can defeat them. No, we will defeat them. Drive them back today, and we'll toast our victory tonight. Charge! <laughs> Disorganized mob or not, their sheer numbers are impressive. But Lester will be done for if we let them break through. We have to take out the enemy leader at all costs. Let's start by taking care of the enemies near our base. I will not allow this to be a repeat of before. Do not spare a single soldier! Crush them immediately! They're trying to take our base through brute force. Brace yourselves, everyone! Enemy reinforcements have taken up positions in the north and south. We will not be able to use the same tactics as before. 
Then we'll just have to shake things up. Let's steal their strongholds and light the beacons. The beacons? Ah, oh, I see. You mean to lure them in. There is a signal from one out, of our huh? strongholds? <laughs> what an obvious trap. As if we would fall for something like that, you fools. So it's begun. Prepare to carry out the plan. We've lit two beacons, My but the enemy isn't doing turn. anything. We've lit all the beacons now. The enemy forces should be able to see them. <laughs> Do not be fooled by those beacons. We will overwhelm the enemy with our sheer numbers. Uh, looks like we've got more enemy troops on our hands. Was drawing them over here really a good idea, Claude? We've got them right where we want them. Now, we'll pretend to attack the northern front and... Well, I won't spoil the surprise. We'll surrender quietly if you know what's good for you. Nader, did you see the beacons? Everything's good to go on our end. How about you? I've been waiting for ages, kiddo. Let's get started. Bin Shahid, General Nadir has defected. He was working with the enemy? Show him what fate awaits a traitor. Kill him! So he's going straight for our linchpin, is he? Everyone defend Nadir. Hey, who needs protecting? As if I'd fall here. Ah, true, you are Nadir the Undefeated. But I like to make sure I've covered every possibility. This is much worse than I anticipated. We have no choice but to retreat and regroup. We'll regret it later if we let them leave now. Don't let the enemy leader get away. I don't care who, but someone has to hold off the enemy while I make my retreat! We can bust open that stronghold. We'll be able to get ahead of Shahid and block his escape. He's going to get away. Chase him down, now! He may be running, but I seriously doubt he's the type to give up so easily. I order every soldier on the front line to attack, and I will cut down anyone who does not obey! Attack the gate now! Hit them hard and fast! Full of cowards! The likes of you could never kill me! Come then, gallant warrior of Almira. Put my cowardice to the test. This should stop the threat from the rear. Oh, and scum! Kill me if you can! I vow to defend this location! No one's taking this place while I'm here! I'm not handing this place over to anyone! Everyone, focus on the Almiran leader. If we defeat him, we win the whole battle. We must guard this position. Give it up, Shahid. It's over. You lost. Let fly that arrow, then. I'll never kneel to the likes of you! But that isn't what I'm asking for you to do here. Let's end this. Come on. You little brat. I'd sooner die. Uh -huh. ah, thanks for that. Look, Claude. If you can't do it, then I will. No. This is my burden to bear.
I never wanted things between us to end this way. I'm so sorry, brother. I'm sorry, Claude. It looked like you were hesitating, so I... Don't worry about it. I never would have found my resolve if not for you. So that Shahid guy... Was he your... Don't say it. Honestly, it's not even about that. That look of desperation on his face just... Tugged at my heartstrings is all. <sighs> You know, I thought a guy like me would be impervious to this kind of thing. Looks like I don't know myself as well as I thought. But now that I know, I won't make the same mistake again. We should go. Everyone's waiting for us. Claude. All right! We did it! The rest of the Almiran soldiers seem to have simmered down. I guess it's because they lost their commander? That Shahid guy must have been the only one who actually wanted to fight us. Claude, I believe you owe us an explanation. Why are you and this Almiran general on such amiable terms? I guess you could say he looked after me a bit when I was a kid. Before you joined House Regan, you mean? How did you two come to meet in the first place? It is difficult to fathom the circumstances that would lead someone in Fodlan to make the acquaintance of an Almiran general. It's a long story, so I'll just cut to the chase. It turns out Almira isn't as unified as many believe. After the battle two years ago, I went to Nadair to see if there was a way we could partner up if something like that were to happen again. You see, I served the King of Almira directly as a retainer. I was never obligated or inclined to obey Prince Shahid. The Prince was obsessed with starting a war with Fodlan, in the hopes that he could distinguish himself enough to secure a path to the throne. This probably comes as no surprise, but he didn't have any kind of plan whatsoever beyond clearing Fodlan's throat. Once I caught wind of the situation, I thought it'd be best to have Nadair and Holes get to know each other before things really got out of hand. Wait, Holst, you've already met him? Yes. Nadair the Unstoppable and I have been nemeses of a sort for years now. It's actually Nadair the Undefeated, but go on. But when we met, he declared that he was willing to band together, if doing so would prevent Almira's name from being sullied. Well, that right there nearly moved me to tears. Before long, we were drinking and celebrating our newfound brotherhood. Your newfound what now? Ah, I take it your host's sister. Then that makes you my sister too. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah, I'm actually full up in the brother department. Getting back to the story, I'd been trying to nip Shahid's foolhardy war in the bud for a while. But the prince was always as stubborn as an ox, and so, that's how I ended up here with this gigantic army. Luckily, though, I spotted my newfound brother defending the throat with the kiddo and his army. It's a shame about the prince, but I'm glad we were able to help stop the attack on Fodlin. Does that explanation satisfy you, Lawrence? I cannot help but feel there is more to the story. But for now, I will happily thank General Nadir for his assistance. You have my gratitude as well. You all helped me prevent another blow to Almira's reputation. Now, in Almira, it's traditional to throw a grand feast after a battle. We eat, sing, and dance till we can't move anymore. Oh yeah? Claude has the same tradition. Wait, but that means... Uh... We may have failed to capture any Imperial territory, but we succeeded in defending the Alliance. So tonight, we celebrate in style. I hope you're all ready, because it's gonna be a feast for the ages. 
Hey! I was right! It's feasting time! So that's what you mean. <laughs> Should have known. Mutton, jerky, steak! This is the best meat party ever! Slow down, Raphael. Just how much are you planning to eat? Oh, this is delicious. It has a nice, delicate sweetness to it. It really does. I wish I could share some with Dorte. Dorte? Who's that? Oh, that's your friend, right, Marianne? The horse one. My brother, you haven't had nearly enough to drink. Come on now, bottoms up! And you need to eat something. I prepared the food myself, you know. Try the mushrooms. They came out perfect. The war is far from over, but these people are acting like they don't have a care in the world. Keeping your guard up all the time is just going to tire you out. Everyone needs to unwind every now and again. <laughs> then why isn't the man of the hour partaking in the festivities? Now that you mention it, where is Claude? Claude, what are you doing out here? Oh, hey there. Just thought a little fresh air would do me good. Hit the bottle a little too hard? Can't say I blame you. It's been a while since we've cut loose like this. Yeah, that could be it. You've got to wonder what's really running around in that mind of his. He never revealed his dealing with Count Gloucester, nor that he befriended an Almyran general. He's probably hatching a new scheme right now. Not that he'd ever tell us about it. What are you thinking about, Claude? Huh? Oh. Not much. Just letting my mind wander a bit now the battle's finally over. Well, I guess I should rejoin the festivities. Come on. Let's go be merry. It still feels like he's got this wall around him. Hard to say if we're ever gonna really understand each other. I'm sure you will one day. After all that's happened, He's come to depend quite heavily on you. Although, if you really want him to see you as someone he can turn to, you'll need to get stronger. That man harbors many secret ambitions. I wouldn't expect him to back away from this war anytime soon. Sounds pretty tough when you put it like that. Oh yes, he'll say all of this is for everyone else. But he has aspirations of his own, too. Just like us and our goal of slaying the Ashen Demon. If you grow stronger for Claude's sake, it'll benefit your own aspirations as well. He may not be your partner in destiny, but yours is a valuable relationship nonetheless. Hey, Arvo. Yes? Don't you think you're getting a bit too obsessed with this little grudge match? Maybe so. Though I don't believe that's all there is to it. What do you mean? I suppose it just feels like our destiny. Like it's something we're meant to do. It is now 1182. The great war incited by Edelgard has continued to engulf Fodlan, but slowly begins to change course. The Alliance's battle with the Empire ends without a victor. After facing the Olmyrans, the Alliance focuses on rebuilding, while the Kingdom's conflict with the Empire stalls. Six months will pass before the wheels of change turn again. But when they do, it will be because one ambitious man sets them in motion.
golden wildfire. The end of the Alliance. It is the end of 1182. Four moons have passed since Almira attacked. Though the battle lines remain unchanged, Claude steadily schemes behind the scenes. History is about to be made. Huh? Whoa, everyone's already here. Yep, we were waiting on you, Hilda. <laughs> Whoops, but Claude isn't here yet, is he? He said he'd have something to tell us after the roundtable conference, so I figured it'd run late, as usual. You got that right. Those meetings always seem to drag on forever. <laughs> Where's the love? These roundtables are supposed to symbolize the Alliance's ideals, you know. Uh, sorry about that. I was out of line. No worries, my friend. That's exactly why we made the decision we did today. What decision? Is that why you called us here? Hold your horses. Everyone, listen up. As you know, the Leicester Alliance is governed through a council of representatives known as the Five Great Lords. As the Alliance leader, it has been House Regan's responsibility to convene the round table and secure the approval of the other lords on matters of policy. The Lords of the Alliance felt this was the best system to serve the welfare of their people. And in peacetime, maybe it was. But there's no denying that the round tables have hindered our ability to respond swiftly to emergency situations. And it doesn't seem like Lester's current state of emergency is going to end anytime soon. Which is why I put forth an important proposal at today's round table, one that's since been approved. As of today, the Leicester Alliance will be reborn as the Leicester Federation. All authority has been entrusted to the King of Leicester. And as it just so happens, I have been chosen to serve as the Federation's first king. With this, we'll no longer be held hostage by roundtable delays that leave us at the mercy of our enemies. I give you my word that I'll dedicate all my efforts to protecting and preserving Lester. I hope I can count on all of your approval as well. We reached this decision after exhaustive discussion. I imagine not everyone will approve, but we ask for your understanding. I hope we can all accept our former leader as our new king and continue working together to defend Lester. So, everyone, are you with me? This must be why my father was in such a hurry to hand over leadership of our house to Holst. The former Duke Goneril was a ringleader of sorts for the lords who opposed the establishment of the Federation. That said, he's been looking to put Holst in charge for a while now. Maybe this was just the perfect opportunity. It seems I'll also have much to discuss with my father about House Ordelia's future. I imagine it's the same for you, right, Marianne? Hmm? Oh, yes. I suppose that's so. It's just ridiculous to think that our Claude, of all people, is a king now. Well, I think Claude will make a wonderful king. Yeah! Me too! Long live King Claude! Huh. Didn't see that one coming. Quite an abrupt twist, isn't it? He certainly didn't breathe a word of it to you. That's true, but it doesn't really bug me. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't share something that important with a lowly mercenary either. Anyway, I'm happy for him. Now Claude's free to act as he sees fit. And I'm gonna keep supporting him, just like always. Yes, I think that's probably for the best. Probably.
I have received word from my father. He reports that public order is rapidly deteriorating in House Burgundy's territory. Seriously? I've heard the same is true in the Seaward and Albany territories as well. That's right. And as a result, some unsavory characters have strayed into Daphnal territory, causing trouble for us, too. If they couldn't keep things under control, they should have come to me for help. Those three houses have always been quick to align themselves with the strongest faction, be it the Central Church or even the Empire. That the three of them opposed the establishment of the Federation makes it all the more difficult to ask for help, no doubt. If only it were that simple. Is there something else about the matter that concerns you, Lady Judith? I've heard some rumors that those three have been conspiring together of late. That there are plans in the works for all of them to defect to Fargus. The Viscounts may have been too busy plotting to secure their positions and deal with the growing chaos in their territories. <laughs> now that I would believe. I'm not sure if this is related, but there have also been some alarming sightings near their western borders. Alarming in what way? It's the Knights of Seros. Perhaps it's nothing, seeing as the kingdom is sheltering the central church within their borders, but... Do you suspect that the Knights have been acting as intermediaries between the kingdom and those houses? If so, we cannot possibly turn a blind eye. We can't say for sure if that's the case just yet, but there's no mistaking that civil unrest is running rampant in those territories. We need to mobilize the Federation Army immediately and try to restore public order. Wait a moment. Would it not make more sense to send envoys to the houses beforehand to learn more about the situation? They just reply to our inquiries with some half-baked excuses. Giving them a heads up we're coming should be enough. So you're ordering an immediate deployment, Your Majesty. It's nice how quickly things move around here without the round table. That's the beauty of this. Lawrence, assemble the troops immediately. Very well. At long last, it is time for the Federation to take its first steps. That's right. We stand at the dawn of a new Lester. Oh, Holst. What's going on? Our king has agreed to meet with the Adrestian Emperor. Claude's gonna talk to Edelgard? Yes, and you'll be joining us. You're the only reliable bodyguard we could find on such short notice. Uh, okay then. Lead the way. It's good to see you again, Claude. Congratulations on your coronation as the first king of the Leicester Federation. What's this? The Empire has officially recognized our Federation? Why, Edelgard, I'm touched. But I did have my heart set on an apology. You launched an unprovoked attack against us, after all. Attack? The Empire merely responded to an invitation from Viscount Acheron of House Phlegathon. Alas, fortune turned against him at the Great Bridge of Murden, and he perished in the battle. As a result, we did garrison our army in Gloucester territory for a brief time. But I would hardly call that an unprovoked attack. Huh. And dead men tell no tales, right? Although I'll grant you that he sold us out to the Empire. Whatever transpired, the Empire and the Alliance did end up at war with one another. And I do not deny that the Imperial Army caused harm within Alliance territory. We are prepared to offer appropriate restitution for that. That works. We'll take tangible resources over insincere apologies any day. We can hash out the definition of appropriate later. Want to move on to the real reason we're here? Yes, by all means. I trust you read my letter? The Central Church must be eliminated before Fodlin can be reborn. 
Your help would go a long way towards accomplishing that. Oh, I read it all right. And from a personal standpoint, it's something I can get behind. But as the leader of the Federation, I can't say the same. You can't expect the people of Leicester to embrace this southern church that you've dredged up out of nowhere. I must take issue with that assertion. The southern church has a long and storied history in Fodlan. Nonsense. You hastily resurrected some dusty old sect and appointed the Empire's own Minister of Religious Affairs as its bishop. Do you honestly expect us to acknowledge such an obvious sham? <laughs> None of us will shed any tears if you do not. Nor did we truly expect that you would. We do not care where the Federation places its faith, so long as it is not in the Central Church. So all you're looking for is a little cooperation in taking them down? And I assume the Kingdom's on your hit list too, since they've given them sanctuary. I understand the Federation faces challenges of its own. Surely you would prefer a quick return to stability at your borders with the Empire? Oh? I'd like to hear a little more about these challenges you think we have, but maybe now isn't the best time. Claude, we want stability. The decision is yours to make. Knowing you, I am certain you will carefully consider the costs and benefits, rather than let emotions dictate your decision. All right, I'm in. Holst, do you feel satisfied with those terms? Everything looks good to me. I'm especially glad we found a solution to the control of Murden. Hubert, I trust you have no objections? None, Your Majesty. All that remains is the placement of your seals. Then let us conclude our discussions for now, and go inform the world that Adrestia and Lester have joined forces for a brighter future. Sounds like a plan to me. I, Claude Von Regan, King of the Lester Federation, hereby swear this pact. Lester pledges to work in harmony with the Adrestian Empire, and do everything in its power to secure a peaceful future for Fodwin. By the covenant between the red blood and the white sword that crowns the double-headed eagle, I, Edelgard von Hressfeld, hereby swear this pact. Adrestia pledges to work hand-in-hand -hand with the Leicester Federation to deliver peace to the land and secure a future for all its people. The pact is sealed. And now it is our job to uphold it. I'm sure you noticed how Edelgard wouldn't even deign to acknowledge your existence. How empty does it make you feel to witness history marching forward without any say in which direction it takes? I never wanted to be the one making history. That's too big a role for a humble mercenary. That said, I don't know about this. The Kingdom and the Church are suddenly our enemies now. Is everyone really just gonna get on board with that? To sum up, we've agreed to an armistice with the Empire. From now on, our enemies are the Kingdom and the Church of Saros. The Church is our enemy now? You say it like you're just moving pieces on a chessboard. To be clear, this is not a repudiation of the teachings of Saros themselves. All we're aiming for is the dissolution of the Central Church. That would mean killing Lady Rhea. Is that really the right thing to do? I didn't speak with them very much, but Sedeth and Lady Rhea didn't seem like bad people. Those two aren't what they seem to be. If what the Empire says is true, that is. I hate to say it, but it sure sounds like you let the Empire talk you into buying the whole store. Look, the Empire is obviously trying to use this as a means to their own end. But do you honestly think I'd agree to a deal that sets them up better than us? I'm using them right back. The balance of power in Fodlin has already collapsed. 
If we just sit on the sidelines, our position is only going to get weaker. By cooperating with the Empire, we can expand our influence and power as much as they do, if not more. This is the only way we can end the war quickly while maintaining Lester's independence. And for that purpose, you would throw Fargus to the wolves, despite holding no animosity towards them? You and I may not hold any grudges, but if you look to our history, you'll see it was the kingdom who tossed us to the wolves first. When our people were fighting for independence from the Empire, Fargus attacked and conquered Leicester for themselves. And even after we finally won our freedom in the Crescent Moon War, they've continued to meddle in our affairs, like causing that rift in House Daphnel. Hmm. Yes, well... Besides, they're harboring the Central Church, and I can't condone that. I've always been skeptical of that dogma they preach. It's just a way for them to force their own belief system onto everyone else. Their creed legitimizes Fodlin's system of nobility, which values crests above all else and leaves no room for people of different backgrounds or faiths. And if what the Empire says is true, then I couldn't even begin to count the number of crimes the Central Church has committed. Claude, are you saying that you intend to destroy our current system of nobility? Because that... I have news. A battle has broken out in ALL between Imperial troops and the Knights of Saros. The Imperial Army has already stationed troops as far north as ALL? That's a little too close to Daphnal territory for my liking. It seems Catherine is commanding the Knights. The Imperial troops are in for a serious fight. Catherine was definitely the strongest out of all the Knights of Saros. What shall we do, Your Majesty? If we're to honor the pact we just signed, we should go and reinforce the Imperial troops. Yeah, you're right. Not so fast. We have not finished our conversation. Just what exactly are your intentions for Fodlin, Claude? Honestly, I want to break this place wide open and tear down every last one of its insular customs. If we can't do that, then there's no real path forward. Now is the time to steal ourselves and take action. Are you sure? How exactly are you planning to explain all that to the people in the Federation who adhere to the Church's teachings? Oh, I already have something in mind. In fact, I'll need your help to see it through. Well, you'll have it. I just hope whatever you've got up your sleeve is actually a good idea. It is. Judith, Lawrence, I need you to trust me and follow my lead for now, okay? Now, let's go wipe out those knights near Daphnal territory. Everyone, prepare to move out. <laughs> Are you good with this, Shamir? I told you before, I'm not part of the Knights of Saros anymore. But we're gonna be fighting Catherine this time. Didn't you two used to be real close? We were partners back then, but that's all in the past. Now we walk our own paths. I won't hesitate to do what must be done. Not even a hint of doubt. She really is something. From the looks of it, I'd say the Knights of Saros have the Imperial forces on the back foot. The Imperial army is being led by Randolph, one of Count Burgley's relatives. He's supposed to be quite a formidable warrior. But then again, he's up against Thunder Catherine. Hard to consider him the favorite in that fight. Even so, it doesn't look like the battle will be decided anytime soon. We can afford to take our time. But won't things get real bad for the Imperial Army if we don't bail them out soon? I'm sure they will. But if we rush in without a solid plan, we'll be the ones getting stuck with the business end of Thunderbrand. We'll swoop in with a surprise attack right when their defeat seems all but certain. For now, we should prepare for the battle ahead. I've seen that look before. Claude's got another scheme brewing.
Does he? I still can't tell what's going on in that guy's head. We should move before the Imperial Army is wiped out. Launch the surprise attack! What army is that? Wait, are they attacking us? The Federation Army has come to our aid! Now we can assist Lord Randolph! The Federation Army has come to our rescue? I thank you. We don't have to worry about attacks from the rear now. If we really want to take out Thunder Catherine, this is the best way to fight. Quad, is something wrong? No, it's nothing. Leave this to me. I will not waver. Randall, you can sense you're outmatched, can't you? You have no hope of winning. Surrender now! We did it! Now the Imperial Army can rally their forces! We'll hold here until all the commanders going to aid Randolph reach the stronghold. Is everyone ready? Then let's hurry to Lord Randolph's aid! <sighs> the Imperial Army has rallied. They might turn the tables on us at this rate. Main forces with me. We're going to strike right in the center. Well, we can skip Everyone my else, no problem. circle around it. behind the Take enemy. Breather. Move out! Thunder Catherine is on the move. Now's our chance to capture the enemy strongholds. The Imperial Army will scatter if Randolph falls. Keep advancing! I'd heard the rumors, but I never imagined she was this strong. Cole, are you certain this is the best course? The Imperial Army is struggling. No yeah, problem. That's I just what it. I expected. Switching it up, right huh? now, we need to get a move on and capture those strongholds. At this rate, the Imperial Army is going to get crushed. Shouldn't we go help them? What is the Federation Army doing? I thought they'd rush to our side. Hey, Claude, we need to get out there and help the Imperial Army or it'll be too oh. late. I hear you, but capturing the strongholds takes priority. Make sure everyone knows that. I have no other choice. Everyone, fall back! We must abandon this front and regroup! Lord Randolph, the gate is closed and blocking our escape route. We cannot get past it. What is the meaning of this? Is the Federation Army leaving us to die? Breather. Made your choice, Randolph. God, is this the end? I'd hoped to help them after surrounding the knights, but there just wasn't enough time. Lady Catherine, the Federation army has us completely surrounded. They let their allies die in order to trap us. Hurry and forge an escape route! We will find a way to survive this! I will proceed swiftly to Catherine's aid! They surrounded us, huh? We're in hot water now, Kathy. Yes, running away is our only option. Do not let any of them escape. We take all of them down yes, right here, help. right now. If we can convince some of them to surrender, we'll reduce our number of casualties. I don't think she's a knight. She might surrender if we talk to her. We can't let a single one get away. We have to whittle down the church forces as much as possible. <laughs> go I'd really rather not sigh if I can avoid it so we are to claim victory by sacrificing the Imperial Army how is this conscionable sacrificing our allies in order to win is that really the kind of leader you are Claude I 
hate having to fight all the time. Hey, why don't we just stop? You dying here won't accomplish anything, right? You got me there. I guess I'll do what you ask. You did beat me after all. <laughs> I am at the height of my powers under the darkness of night. Is it something like that would dishearten me? Hey, you're not with the Knights of Saros. You've got Noble written all over you. Why not join us? We'll treat you right. Maybe that's for the best. After all, I have a dream to fulfill. What a mess I've gotten myself into. We'll just have to buckle down and prepare for a fight. Thunder Catherine's the only one left. Everyone, attack! <laughs> I'll take as many of you Federation cowards with me as I can! You won't defeat me that easily! Come on! Give me all you got! You're dead! I'm not finished yet! You shall feel my wrath! Here it comes! I will never let you lay a finger on Lady Rhea with those filthy hands. That was an ugly battle. Your Majesty, it appears that none of the Church's soldiers have survived the battle. What about our allies? The Federation troops sustained minimal casualties. However, the Imperial forces appear to have been wiped out. That includes General Randolph. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell everyone to start getting their things together. Yes, Your Majesty. Not one enemy made it off the battlefield alive. From a tactical standpoint, that's an ideal outcome. At least, it's supposed to be. But it still leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. Even so, the only way I can go is forward. Now that I've taken this first step, there's no turning back. Not after what I've already done. These hands will never be clean again. Claude, what happened out there? You left those Imperial troops to die. Was that your plan all along? I wanted to win that battle with as few casualties on our side as possible. What other choice did I have? You had plenty of other options. Did you really think we couldn't handle it? Our military capabilities only go so far. We can't risk losing even one of our capable commanders, no matter how unlikely that might be. But that kind of thinking got Randolph killed. You signed that pact. Wasn't he supposed to be our ally? I don't see the value in sacrificing lives that we might have been able to save. How does that make you any different from the nobles who just throw mercenary lives to the wind? Am I gonna be next? Of course not. I could never replace you. Please, you've got to understand that. You should listen to what your commander is saying, Your Majesty. Everyone else feels the same way, myself included. You're the king of the Leicester Federation. You have to conduct this war in a way that inspires people to follow you. I hear what you're saying, but what good does it do if we fight honorably just to lose? Why are you assuming we'd lose? You should know better than to write off your own army like that. Don't you agree, kid? We need to have more faith in us. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to put our faith in you. You're not fighting this war by yourself. We're all a team here. 
So you need to sit down and have a long, hard think about what that really means. Okay. I'll give it some thought. But I can't guarantee I'll arrive at the answer you want me to. I'm going to follow the path I believe in. That's what I set out to do as king. <sighs> Let's just make sure Randolph's remains get back to the Empire for a proper burial. Golden Wildfire. Love and Loss. The formation of the Leicester Federation astonishes onlookers in all corners of Fodlan. But the treaty between the Federation and the Empire proves to be an even greater shock. Claude decides to send troops into the kingdom. However, his rash actions only spawn more problems, one of which is currently creeping towards him. Randolph, why have you come back to me like this? Lady Flesh, please. You must get a hold of yourself. My brother... How did this happen? Lord Randolph fought bravely against Thunder Catherine. He managed to create an opening for the Federation Army to swoop in and rout the Church's forces. It was a crushing victory. For the Federation, that is. What? You were there? But the Federation said there were no survivors from the Imperial Army. When it became clear what transpired, Lord Randolph bid me and only me to escape with my life. He did this so I could tell you, Lady Flesh, how his death came to pass. He did? The King of Leicester used us as decoys. He was able to seize victory by leaving us for slaughter. When I think of how tragic it is that Lord Randolph should be cut down in the prime of his life. He was left to be slaughtered? They must pay for what they've done. I swear to you, dear brother, I will not let them get away with this. Please, I implore you, gather what soldiers you can. Skilled mercenaries, too. Anyone you can find. I will empty our vaults, borrow money from the Count, whatever it takes to pay them. But Lady Flesh, whatever for? For revenge against the King of Leicester. I will have his head. Understood. I will make the arrangements at once. <laughs> that was almost too easy. You feeling any better? <laughs> I have to say, I'm still not used to this new look of yours. That makes two of us. But it will bother me less once I'm on the battlefield. I sure hope that's the case, because we've already got our next job lined up. We're going up against the Alliance again. Oh, no, wait, they're called the Federation now. Well, you know who I mean. To be honest, I'm feeling a little uneasy about this one. It's probably just because they're paying an arm and a leg for us, but... Be careful, okay? I will. You do the same. Oh, right. <laughs> I've been meaning to give you this. Never used to be without it. Cuts like a dream. I want you to have it. Swords like this are given to captains of the Knights of Saros, and mine was just collecting dust in the band's convoy. That's right. Alois mentioned you used to serve there. That was a lifetime ago. I don't plan on swinging this sword ever again. But are you sure you want to give it away? It must be quite special to you. I'd be happiest seeing you get some use out of it. Thank you. I'll do that. 
Be good to it, all right? It's been a while since we last gathered here. I wasn't sure there'd ever be another round table conference again. It's still a good way to pool our information, right? Much easier than trying to hunt each of you down individually. Um, but is it really okay for us to be sitting here with everyone else? Should us commoners even be here at all? Of course. I want you all here. And if you have something to say, don't hold back, all right? If that's the case, then I'll just say it. I'm starving! <laughs> okay, Raphael, maybe hold back a little. Let's check in with how things stand across the Federation. Any shifts in public opinion? For the moment, at least, it remains unchanged. Despite our declaration of war on Lady Rhea and the Central Church, the individual churches in our cities and villages have remained calm. So long as services continue as they always have, we may not see any particular unrest among the common folk. It's the same in Ordelia territory. My father didn't try to sugarcoat the news when he announced it to our people. But surprisingly, there haven't been any signs of disorder. The same goes for Goneril territory. If anything, things seem more stable now than before. That's why I'm able to keep fighting alongside all of you. This is also true of Edmund territory. I guess no one in Leicester is all that upset about Lady Rhea becoming our enemy then. I doubt most commoners would even recognize Rhea. So I guess it makes sense they wouldn't care too much about her. Then it seems we've avoided the worst case scenario. All that work from the Eastern Church must have really paid off. The Eastern Church? It's the branch of the Church of Saros that covers the Leicester region. They don't have much of a presence compared to the Western Church, but their bishop is a really upstanding individual. The bishop advised the regional priests to respond calmly to the news, so they wouldn't cause panic in their congregations. All things considered, it looks like continuing our war against the Central Church and Fargus won't be a problem. <sighs> so we're really going after the kingdom, huh? It's our best hope of ending this war quickly while maintaining our independence. To be clear, I'm not suggesting we burn our way through Fargus, pillaging everything in sight. Yes, we're going to defeat the kingdom and wipe the Central Church off the map. But we're going to do so in a way that spares as many lives as possible. And that's why you're all here. I want to tap into your collective wisdom to figure out the best way to go about this. So you finally decided to rely on your friends a little. Don't mock me, Judith. I've depended on all these fine people this whole time. I just figured I could be making even better use of their strengths. If anyone has any thoughts about my methods, I'm all ears. I need your help here. You can count on us. Isn't that right, Ignatz? Uh-huh. Oh, right. We all need to work together to end this war. Well, I guess if you need our help that badly, who am I to say no? And what do you think? Hey, you can count on me. And not just for my muscles, either. I'm pretty sure I've got some wisdom kicking around up here. Such confidence. I assume this is because you're finally putting some faith in me. I'm so glad you've come around. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Then without further ado, let's figure out our next move. The time has come to put my intellect to good use. You will be the mouthpiece for my thoughts, I trust. Don't get too carried away, yeah? They're not expecting much from me here. Time has finally come to invade the kingdom. 
Vargas is a region with a strong tradition of knighthood. I expect a fearsome opposition. What? Are you scared, Lawrence? Do not be ridiculous. Of course I am not frightened. Why must you insist on teasing me like this? Keep a careful eye on your surroundings as we approach the border. You never know where the enemy's scouts could be hiding. We're still a ways off from the border. I think we can afford to relax for the moment. Enemy attack! What? Did the kingdom get the jump on us? No, your majesty! That flag the enemy's flying! It's General Randolph's! Randolph? That boy must hate you so much he came back from beyond the grave to haunt you. You mean... as a... G ghost Oh, this can't be happening! Lysithia, please, calm down. Maybe Randolph's family figured out what happened and are out for revenge. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I doubt they'd be interested in hearing my excuses. We can't afford to exhaust ourselves here. Steady on, everyone. Prepare for battle. Come on, Arval. Seriously? You can't drag me off to sleep like this when the battle's about to start. Sorry, but we need to talk. Do you remember the warning I once gave you? Well, I've been struck by a similar premonition now. Something feels wrong. Very wrong. Last time this happened, the Ashen Demon showed up and nearly sent me to an early grave. Are you telling me that's who we're facing here? Hard to say for sure. But the feeling's worse this time around. Stronger. If the Ashen Demon does appear on the battlefield today, I fear we will witness something terrible, an act far more dangerous than we previously imagined. Well, whatever's happening, I'm just gonna have to stop it. So long as you don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger, yes. Remember, your death would cut both of our destinies far too short. They're attacking from the caves and the mountains. <laughs> Defeat the closest enemies first to secure the area. <laughs> enemy forces are nothing to sneeze at. Is this really just Randolph's family? Whoever they are, they're most likely after you. Everyone, do not allow His Majesty to fall. Some of these soldiers don't seem like they're with the Imperial Army. Maybe they're mercenaries? So, they've got some mercenaries on their side, eh? I've got a sneaking suspicion I know who they hire. At least we should be able to drive them back quickly enough. But you attract more trouble than honey does flies, your majesty. Sorry, Judith. I promise I'll pay you back in full someday. It doesn't look like they're going to lay down their arms. What would you have us do, your majesty? Launch a counteroffensive? Not when we don't know the full extent of their forces. Could you all search the area and see what info you can dig up? They've spotted me. Now I've no choice but to engage them. Aloise, the does that mean Gerald's mercenaries are among our enemies? Those are the scouts we dispatched her. They might have some relevant information. You did well to survive that. Please, share any information you have on the enemy. The enemy general's name is Flesh, and they have Gerald's mercenaries on their side. It's not over. Wait, does that mean the Blade Breaker and Ashen Demon are here? Well, this went downhill fast. We need to find out where they are. Take a breather. We're facing the captain's mercenaries again? No. This is no time to hesitate. I'll fight them. I bear you no ill will, but it was your choice to come within striking distance. Is that really the best you can do? Well, it'll take more than that. Couldn't even buy us any time. How am I 
supposed to face Flash and the captain now? If we assume Aloise fled in the direction of the mercenaries, then the forest may be the best place to search. Now we know who we're up against and where they are. That gives us the initiative. Gerald's mercenaries are a formidable force. We need to find a way to split them off from the Imperial Army. I'll act as a decoy to lure out the Ashen Demon. I'm counting on you all. Don't let me die. You are the king of the Federation, and you want to act as a decoy? Does sovereignty have no meaning to you? I'll make the perfect decoy precisely because I am king. If you're so worried, then you'll just have to protect me. They told me my mission was to exact revenge. I suppose I'll have to earn that advance they paid me. That's Yuri! Hold on! Let me try and talk some sense into him! How dare you point your weapon at such a pretty face! Come on! Would you stop being so pathetic? I know you don't really want to die here. Well, when you put it that way. I guess I would prefer not to get butchered. I've heard that Randolph's younger sister is also in the Imperial Army. Maybe that's who this place is. Then she's here to avenge her brother. Can't say I blame her. There's the Ashen Demon. Let's hope they take the bait. Oh no! I charged too far ahead. This is so dangerous. I need to fall back. That's the King of Leicester. Do not let him escape. Even if this works, I don't want to engage yet. Can you all cover me on my way back? He purposely charges ahead, only to immediately retreat. He must be plotting something. You must kill him! Please! I don't care about anything else as long as he's dead! <laughs> it worked! But there's no need to try and defeat the Ashen Demon. That's like asking to get killed. This is our chance to slay the Ashen Demon. We can fight without anyone getting in our way. I lost sight of him. Where'd he go? This may be my best chance to eliminate him. I'll just give that girl a little assistance. What? An ambush? The way out is in sight. We must defeat them and break through. <laughs> You are all descendants of the most inconsequential beasts, and your deaths will fuel our grand ambition. I suppose we cannot make any more gains here. No sense in sticking around. Unless... What a creep! Who was that? Whew. I was worried I was gonna get a sword in my back. Hey, Judith, is everything ready? It's been ready. Now, block the entrances to the caves. That's what they were up to. Why haven't I heard anything from the mercenaries? Uh, I'll just have to do it myself then. Flesh has finally shown her face. Take her out while the Ashen Demon's gone.
stronghold and defend his majesty. Everyone else, go after Flesh. <laughs> an amazing accomplishment. I hope I can be as useful as you. Randolph, you were always there for me. I wasn't fast enough. We were too late. Not much we can do now. Your employer is dead and we have you surrounded. I think it would be wise to lay down your arms, don't you? Looks like we have no choice. Geralt's mercenaries have surrendered. That wraps up this battle. What can I say? You got us. You rolled right over us and took out our employer. <laughs> I know when it's time to raise the white flag. Wait, that's it? You're giving up? We've faced you in battle many times, only to be bested at every turn. Yeah, you've pretty much run us out of business by now. It's not easy finding new clients in the best of times. And no matter how good our reputation is, None of it matters if we can't actually win. At this rate, I'll have to stop calling myself the Blade Breaker. In that case, can I interest you in a contract with the Leicester Federation? You want to hire us? I know we've been at each other's throats since before this Federation was even a thing. But you're mercenaries. You were only fighting to hold up your end of the deal with the Empire, right? And now that your employer is gone, you're free to serve whichever side you please. There's no dishonor in working for a new client. Yeah, you should join us. I mean, by now we all know firsthand how strong you are. And sure, there might be some folks here and there who have reservations about you fighting on our side. But they'll definitely come around once they see how dependable you are. What do you say? I doubt the Empire will have any jobs for us after all of this. No better time for a fresh start. I agree. What about you, Alois? I know Lester's another enemy of the Knights of Seros. I've already made my decision. I have sworn to follow this fine captain wherever he goes. If my old allies want to come grill me over a fire, I'll just have to make myself more obscure. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> if I don't slay my foes by the sword, I will do so by the joke. Well, I guess that's that. Just tell us when we start. I'll go talk to the group and smooth things over. You two, stay here with the client. Got it. Thanks. Understood, Captain. Glad to hear it. I guess we better tell the troops about our new friends here. <sighs> going to be fighting together. I'm so... This is so... All right, let's just keep those tears in check, Leone. There's no need to make a scene. Why is Leone crying? Apparently, that mercenary captain trained her when she was a kid. But she hasn't seen him for years. Oh? And you must be the famed Ashen Demon, yes? Allow me to welcome you to the Federation. I'm so glad you're on our side now. You know, now that I can see you up close, you really aren't that terrifying after all. Would you mind demonstrating your power for me later? I'm curious to see if it's crest-related. 
And hey, if you ever need a lifting buddy, you just let me know. As you can see, we're thrilled to have you here. You know, it feels strange somehow. It's as if some part of me has been calling out to you this whole time. I'm just happy to have another powerful ally on our team. Aren't you, Marian? Huh? Oh, um, yes. It's a pleasure to be working with you. The pleasure's all ours. Isn't that right, kid? It looks like everyone's happy to have them on board. I guess I had nothing to worry about after all. With all due apologies to Randolph's sister, I think it's time we moved on. Hey, wait a minute. Where'd my favorite mercenary go? Sorry about all this, Arval. I know you've only been giving me your powers because you want me to beat the Ashen Demon. Don't worry about it. It's for the best, right? For all my doomsaying, everything seems to be right as rain. Recruiting Gerald's mercenaries and the Ashen Demon was the right choice. I hope you're right. What's wrong? Feeling lost now that you don't have an enemy to chase around the countryside? I'm not lost. I know exactly what I've got to do. Win this war. I'm gonna help Claude and my friends usher in a new age in Fodlin. Well, any snarky follow-up for that? I suppose that's a fine goal. It's certainly worthy of the powers you command. If that's what you want, then I'll just have to help you achieve it. After all, I'm your partner in destiny. I'm here for you and you alone. Golden Wildfire. The sword swings wide. Despite Flesh's attack, the Federation reaffirms their alliance with the Empire and finally begins their invasion of the Kingdom. Seeing that Fargus is readying for battle, Claude plans for a short engagement. With a cunning scheme at the ready, his army trespasses into Fraldarius territory. Thank you for coming, everyone. Sedeth, we are grateful you could join us. I would be remiss to ignore something that so clearly concerns the Church. We are here to discuss the latest developments in Leicester, correct? Indeed. I think it's safe to say that Claude's reinvention of the region and collaboration with the Empire came as a complete shock to us all. Thus far, we have been able to dedicate our forces solely to the battle with the Empire in the West. Now we must dispatch troops to the East as well. The Federation's military force is hardly significant. We shouldn't have to divert much attention from the Western Front. I would not be so optimistic. Not after what happened in ALL. If you recall, the Knights of Saros were completely wiped out. Yes, it was a terrible loss. We didn't even have time to send reinforcements. It still pains me to think on what became of Catherine. We heard her unit encountered the Imperial Army, but the complete lack of survivors strikes me as suspicious. I see. You believe the Federation may have had a hand in the matter. Precisely. Furthermore, the territories of Burgundy, Seaward, and Albany previously wished to defect to our side, but have since reversed their positions. Perhaps their sudden change of heart can be attributed to this incident as well. If only we'd been able to welcome those houses to the Kingdom, we would have a slightly stronger position in the East. The Church initially acted as an intermediary with those houses, but I fear it would be too risky to continue now. I'm sorry. Considering their iffy loyalty, they wouldn't have been reliable anyway. If we'd taken them in, we'd just be regretting it now. That may be true. But it is yet another card we are no longer able to play. Our options now are severely limited. All we can do is hold the Western Front. 
and watch the Federation like a hawk to see what their next move will be. I know we are not privy to the details of the pact between the Empire and the Federation, but would it be safe to assume that the followers of Seros in Leicester have abandoned the Central Church in favor of the Southern Church? They've certainly severed ties with the Central Church, but it seems they have elevated the Eastern Church instead. Hmm. And the Empire allowed that? They must have figured the war was turning against them and made that concession to secure Lester's cooperation. Hmm. The Eastern Church. How is Fargus to survive when we're beset by enemies to the East, West, and even north. I think it is time we devote ourselves to finding an answer to that question. Well, we've managed to secure the immediate area. I'd say that makes our landing a success. Clearly, the kingdom was not expecting our sudden appearance this far north. They sure weren't. A certain somebody's suggestion to take the unexpected route was right on target. Technically speaking, it was my suggestion. I was just talking off the top of my head. I didn't think we'd actually be able to invade by sea. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it was off the top of your head, but I considered a myriad of options before arriving at that proposal. And we have Nadair to thank for helping us make our sea dreams come true. Oh, it was easy enough. All I had to do was secure an official order from the king. None of our merchants would dare disobey that. You managed to convince the king of Almira to sign off on this? Convince isn't exactly the word I'd use. I merely placed the paperwork in front of him at an early hour when he might not have been fully awake. You did what now? It sounds to me like he had no idea what he was signing. It's not as if it's a big deal. We just borrowed a few boats for a bit. And let's not forget all the assistance Margrave Edmund gave us either. That's right. Being able to use his ports certainly cut down the length of our voyage. I'm glad my adoptive father was able to help. Shortened though it was, I can't say my stomach enjoyed the trip. Good to see you're all as relaxed as ever. But let's get back on task. Our plan's working so far, but we've still got a lot to do. I just hope our little invitation was accepted. The Strang forces saw our movements just as we planned. They've been inspired to strike. And soon, I expect. It's possible they're already marching on Gautier territory. If that's the case, then we can't afford to stand around talking about it. We'll head out as soon as we're ready. We'll make our way through Fraldaria's territory and strike Ferdiad, the kingdom's capital. Rang army aims to strike, but we just drove them back a few months ago. The last incursion involved only a portion of their might. This may be the work of those who did not take part in the previous attack. Fortunately, it would seem their forces are few in number. Even so, we can ill afford any interference with the Margrave's work. It's been almost 14 years since King Lambert and I fought the Srang armies together. They have always been a warlike people. If they've learned that Fargus is in crisis, they would jump at the chance to take advantage of it. So then the question is, who informed them of our current difficulties? Are you in here, Bor? We've got a problem. What is it, Felix? The Federation army has invaded Fraldaria's territory. They're marching westward as we speak. Federation? But how? I thought our eastern border was sufficiently prepared. 
They came by sea in giant ships and took over a port town on our eastern shore. Since when does Lester have a navy capable of transporting a full army? That's what I'd like to know. But whatever the answer, they're here now. No matter how big the ships, there are always limits to how large a seaborne invasion can be. That's true, which means they'll want to avoid any unnecessary conflict. I would expect them to march directly west. So they're going for the capital then. We need to stop them before they reach it. A job for the Shield of Fargus, if I've ever heard one. I'll go home and get ready to intercept them. Your Majesty, I ask that you permit me leave to do the same. As the former Lord of Fraldaria's territory, I cannot turn a blind eye to these interlopers. Understood. I will send you some of my personal soldiers as reinforcements. Just promise me you'll both come back alive. Hey, Nadir. You see that fortress over there? You think there's any way we could slip past it instead of trying to take it? I wouldn't recommend it, kiddo. You know they'd just get us from behind if we tried. Yeah, you're probably right. Come to think of it, what are you even doing here? I don't remember requesting extra muscle. Ah, don't be like that. I gotta find a souvenir to bring back, since I borrowed all those ships. Um... What kind of souvenir are you hoping to find in Fargus? In case it had escaped your notice, Nadir, the Federation Army strictly forbids plundering enemy territory. Is that so? Well, if I can't get any actual souvenirs, I'd better have some rip-roaring stories to share when I get home. If we manage to topple Ferdia, I can guarantee it'll be the rip-roaringest story you'll ever tell. But before we get there, I guess we'll need to do something about that fortress. I'm sure the King is well aware by now that we're advancing towards Ferdiad. And you should know that the Lord of this territory, Duke Fraldarius, is also called the Shield of Fargus. Wait a second. Didn't one of our old classmates become the Duke of Fraldarius? You know, that one guy, um, Sylvain, I think. It was Felix. There's also a chance his father, the former Duke, will be here as well. And of course, there will be plenty of soldiers inside that fort. We will need to proceed with utmost caution. I can practically hear your teeth chattering, Lawrence. Don't worry, I'll protect you. I am perfectly capable of protecting myself, thank you. You just focus on your job and leave me to mine. We need to be ready for anything here. We're going all out this time, folks, so spare no effort. A head-on assault would work as well as trying to break a boulder with our skulls. We can't exhaust our troops before we hit the capital. So we're going to blast open the gates and take them by storm before they have a chance to react. First, we'll need to secure the surrounding area to create a path to the gate for our combat engineers. Nine We've almost got the area secure. But how are we going to blast open the gates? Fire magic and barrels of alcohol. The force from the blast should... Well, I won't spoil the surprise. Now we should be able to proceed to the front gate without issue. Excellent. Engineers, do your thing. Everyone else, guard them while they work. The Federation is plotting something, but we'll put an end to that. It's time for our ambush. I figured they wouldn't just sit back and watch. Defend our engineers at all costs. Whatever their scheme is, we can't let them do it. Open the east and west gates, and clear away the enemy from the front. The gates to the right and left have opened. All who are able, fight your way inside and run riot! If the enemy gets too close, they won't be able to set everything up. We need to take down the surrounding enemies well, we now. My turn, you know. The enemy is preventing the engineers from working. We must do something immediately. Hey, swap 
happiness! Uh, my turn. Talk about flashy! You blew that massive gate wide open! That blast was everything I'd hoped it'd be. But it looks like there's another gate ahead. I won't let you take another step into Fargus. Is that Ash? I'd like to avoid killing him if we can. I will fulfill my duty as a knight. Prepare yourself! I'm fighting for his majesty! I can't lose now! You're strong! I don't know if I can beat you on my own! Ash, Dimitri wouldn't want you to die. If you care for him, you'll surrender. I... Okay. I get it. All right, we're gonna blast through the other gate. Protect the engineers. I'm going out there. I don't have it in me to stand by and watch. We cannot let them destroy another gate. Take out the engineers! The enemy is preventing the engineers from work. We must do something immediately. Is that Felix? He's going after the engineers. Stop him! I see no reason to spare invaders who forced their way to our home. Give it up! Is this it? Make it in time. Hurry! Not much longer now. Defend the engineers! Splendid! We are able to invade the fortress. Now it is but a simple matter of overwhelming them with numerical superiority. Fool! What is the point if you don't survive the battle? Lord Felix, I leave the rest to you. Hear me! We will all make it through this and achieve victory together. Yes, my lord. Our comrades have fought too bravely for us to stand idly by. I'd hoped to hold out until reinforcements arrived. They forced my hand. Time to dive into the fray. <laughs> yeah. I must heal him quickly. Felix, are you all right? <laughs> You're gonna start this first. Do not underestimate me. The battle will drag on if the enemy commander is healed. My apologies. We will have no more of that. You always manage to motivate me. I can't hold out much longer. I need to escape while I still can. All right. We just need to take out one more general, and then we win. You shall not take one more step towards Verdiat. Boxing me this moment. This doesn't bode well. Forgive me, people of Fordaris. I have no choice but to retreat. Great work, everyone. Time to celebrate our... Huh?
Elite soldiers of Gautier, advance! Crush the southern weaklings! Ah, Kingdom reinforcements are here. If they want to fight, we're going to have to engage. Retreat with the Duke. I have secured an escape route for you. Leave the rest to me. Matthias, you fool. Return to us alive. Promise me. I'm sorry, Rodrigue. Lambert and I will be waiting for you on the other side. It's another victory for us. Well done, everyone. It would appear the Kingdom forces have withdrawn. I guess that means we've won. Woohoo! All right! That was some tough opposition, but we've gotten pretty tough ourselves. Really? Because it still feels like you're barely trying out there, Hilda. Do you see how much I'm sweating? I don't think I could try harder even if I wanted to. At this rate, we really will be able to mount an attack on Ferdiat. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Don't tell me you thought Claude was lying. No, it's just... I guess it's starting to feel real now. You know what I mean, right, Marianne? Yes. Let's all do our best. Uh, Claude? You don't seem all that happy about our win. Did you see Margrave Gautier's last stand? He sacrificed himself so his allies could escape. Let me ask you something. What do you think about chivalry and the other knightly virtues? have a strong opinion about it either way. It doesn't mesh with mercenary life, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. I can't say it speaks to me either. All the same. Watching someone as famed and respected as Margrave Gautier die for the sake of others, it was something to behold. I admire how knights are willing to sacrifice themselves for their friends without any hesitation. I really do. But it occurred to me that so long as we're fighting the kingdom, with its long tradition of knighthood, there are going to be a lot more sacrifices. It reminds me just how important it is that we end this war as quickly as possible. And once we do, we have to create a world where deaths like these are no longer necessary. As honorable as that sounds, I was not aware that was our objective here. Oh, we're still doing this to safeguard Lester's future, and to free ourselves of the Church's antiquated customs. None of that's changed. But I believe that beyond all this fighting lies a future where lives will no longer have to be sacrificed. A world where everyone will be free to live however they choose. People being able to live as they please, that certainly does sound amazing. It sounds like something worth risking our lives for. If anyone can make it happen, Claude can. No, wait, I take that back. All of us can. Now that's a future worth believing in. I'll believe in it too. Well then, Your Majesty. Shall we press on? You bet. Let's go end this war. We won't stop till we reach Ferdiad. Listen well, Sylvain. You are to be the next Margrave Gautier. I expect you to stand in my stead against foreign threats and to protect your king, your people, your friends, and your family. Which, of course, I failed to do. Forgive me, Sylvain. I know I was a terrible father.
so this is the part where you command me to succeed my father, right? Yes. The Srang forces are growing bolder in response to the Federation's invasion. We dare not leave so important a position as the Margrave of Gautier vacant. I respectfully accept, of course. I've been bracing for this since the moment my father departed. Ha. Huh. Me, the head of House Gautier. What will my brother say? I doubt he will have much to say at all at this point. But we will send word to the Western outposts, nonetheless. Sylvain, you have my deepest apologies. It was only because the Margrave sought to secure our escape that he... Don't apologize. It would make my father's sacrifice meaningless. What he did wasn't for pride, house, or the kingdom. He gave his life to protect his friends. It was what he wanted to do. My father did whatever brought him the most satisfaction. That's how he lived his whole life. I promise you, he had no regrets. In fact, when he left the castle, he was beaming in a way I'd never seen before. But if we'd only fought with a little more skill, the Margrave wouldn't have died at all. We're at war, Felix. No matter how hard you fight, there are going to be times you just can't win. House Fraldarius fought well. The battle was so brutal that even Ash had to surrender. <sighs> Sylvain. No. All of my hatred is reserved for these invaders. This foreign threat. They take everything from us and think nothing of it. Golden Wildfire. Two Kings. The Federation army moves through Fraldarius like lightning. It will not be long until they march on the capital city of Ferdiad. However, it is unclear how the Federation forces will be able to capture Ferdiad, let alone seize control of the entire kingdom. What is the true purpose of their invasion? What is it, Arvel? Hmm, perhaps you've forgotten by now, but think back to the battle at ALL. Amidst that blazing battlefield was a man named Mycin, assisting Flesh. Do you remember him? Yeah, now that you mention it. It had totally slipped my mind, what with all the excitement of Gerald's company joining us. I have to say, your companions don't seem particularly concerned about the true nature of your powers. But have you yourself forgotten as well? About Tomas, and what you witnessed at the monastery three years ago. Huh. Yes, I did, yeah. I think I see what you're getting at, though. Tomas and Mycin had similar powers, and they were probably working together. Which means maybe I... and maybe your power... Is everyone here? There's something I'd like to discuss with you all. Ferdiad is already in our sights. What exactly is there for us to talk about now? Don't tell me you're calling off the attack! No, of course not. This is actually something I've been mulling over for a while now. Let's say we win the next battle and manage to get the kingdom to surrender. What's next for Fodlin? We don't have the power to rule the kingdom, nor any interest in doing so. I imagine we'd work out some sort of joint governance plan with the Empire, then negotiate the rest from there. Although, given the difference in power between us and the Empire, most of the kingdom's territory would likely go to them. Exactly. And what would Edelgard's next project be? Lester, making us a vassal of the Empire. The Empire takes control of us, and Fodlin's one big happy family again. I don't think that would come as a shock to anyone. So, what are we gonna do about it? We yank out the root of this conflict ourselves. We'll bring the war to an end on our own terms. And by root, I assume you are referring to the Central Church? I am. They're the one and only reason we're cooperating with the Empire, right? 
The church wields their authority like some sort of righteous cudgel. The problem is, said authority was never theirs to begin with. They need to be stopped. That's the empire's entire moral argument for this war. If they were to continue fighting after the church is eliminated, it would be nothing more than blatant aggression. But is it even possible to destroy the central church without conquering Fargus? That's why we're going straight for the capital. Dimitri's going to answer that question for us. Interesting. And what will he decide, hmm? So we're basically forcing him to sever ties with the Central Church. Ah, I see you do not need me to explain this one. Exactly. But the King of Fargus made a commitment to the Central Church when he granted them sanctuary. Decisions of that nature are not so lightly reversed. Of that I have no doubt. But if he refuses, this senseless war will only continue. The kingdom's lands will be ravaged, its people hurt or killed. I know Dimitri doesn't want that, and neither do we. Ending this war with as few sacrifices as possible is something we should all be able to agree on. And if you do the math and weigh which option involves the fewest casualties, the answer is quite obvious. I see your point. It does sound like it would be worth trying to convince him. But would they do something so dishonorable? Fargus places a high value on chivalry, after all. I don't know. But it's not going to matter unless we can actually get in a position to ask. Hilda's right. We'll have to deal with this after the next battle. And that's assuming we can defeat Dimitri and his army. As always, I'm counting on you all to get us there. Your Majesty, the Federation Army has reached the eastern outskirts of Ferdiad. Already? They moved more swiftly than I anticipated. Clearly the snows of Fargus are not a reliable ally. I was sure this attack would come at the same time as an offensive from the Imperial Army. But from all I've seen at our western front, that doesn't seem to be the case at all. So, the Federation Army is trying to conquer our capital by themselves? <laughs> they must think our military is totally incompetent. Well, it is true that the majority of our forces have been divided between the Western Front and the peacekeeping operations in the North. A situation most likely engineered by Claude himself. Regardless, it is preposterous to think that an army of that size could capture every castle in Fargus. Even if they were to defeat us now, their victory would only win them the capital for a brief period of time. True enough. The Lords of Fargus would converge upon them and retake Ferdiad with ease. Then that must be part of their plan. If they do not intend to hold the capital, there must be something else they seek to gain. Something that concerns the Central Church, perhaps. That sounds about right. Maybe they're trying to curry favor with Edelgard by destroying the church before the Imperial Army does. Assuming that's true, it would suggest we could avoid a battle entirely if we turned our backs on the church. But doing so would divide Fargus and lead to even more bloodshed. Is that not the conclusion we reached when this all began? It was. And that's why we're still in this war today. I understand what you mean. If our involvement needlessly spills even more blood, then our calculations were gravely mistaken. However, the Church has saved a great many people. People with no place to go, no home to call their own. The most optimal outcome would be to protect our people, our future, and the Church all at once. 
But if I must choose to sacrifice one of those things, the answer is clear. I will do what I must as the King of Fargus. <sighs> your Majesty, we must act soon if we are to meet the Federation Army. I await your orders. I suppose we cannot act without first verifying Claude's true intentions. We must take the field. At the moment, we have no choice but to play the part Claude has written for us in this charade. Sylvain, don't let your enthusiasm get the better of you. If you find yourself too far ahead, fight your way back to us. I don't know what you're talking about, Your Majesty. I've got a much cooler head than you think. Rodrigue, send an envoy to Camulus and arrange for the evacuation of Lady Rhea and the others. And have the Knights of Saros who are stationed in the capital accompany her. Tell them they are to serve as her bodyguards. Won't we need them to aid in the defense of Ferdiat? For now, I'd like them as far away from here as possible. Understood. If by some chance we do find cause to sever ties with the Church. Speak no further, Rodrigue. Not yet. Right now, we fight to defend our capital. That is all. Look there! The Kingdom Armies come to greet us. Not the friendliest welcoming party. Even from here, I can tell they're out for blood. They must be trying to drive us back before we can surround the royal palace. Works for me. It'll be easier to fight them out here in the open than if they'd hold up behind those walls. Time to show what these muscles can do. I'll send a whole bunch of them flying! These soldiers are being led by the king himself, so you can bet they're going to be strong. I can't wait to take them on. We can't put our plan into action if we don't win this battle. Claude, it's time. All right. Get ready, everyone. Let's see if a crushing defeat can get through Dimitri's thick skull. Hmm. Something wrong, Gerald? We're gonna miss all the action if we don't get going. Huh? Oh, yeah. We're not entering the capital yet, right? Nope. The Kingdom Army's come to us, so we're gonna be fighting them outside the city. Yeah, hey, you don't think Lady Rhea's in Ferdiad anymore, do you? Can't imagine she would be. I mean, the church is operating out of a different city entirely. Never took you for a man of faith, though. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I've just got a past with Lady Rhea. One I don't want becoming my present. But that won't be a problem if we're fighting outside the city. Now, let's get out there and win this thing. We need to take out the enemy commanders and secure the surrounding strongholds. Let's get the capital surrounded, folks. Remember, we're up against House Blathed's elite royal guard. Don't hold anything back. Ah. Uh. How many years has it been since I was last in the capital? I would love to visit again sometime to continue my studies in magic. We cannot allow the enemy to surround the capital. Take back the strongholds around the outskirts. The enemy is already on the move. We must stop them from recapturing the strongholds. <laughs> We require Take reinforcements. Send our fastest horse to the lords of every territory. Follow me, everyone. We will recapture the strongholds. Oh, but do not endanger yourself, Annette. Ferdiad is our home. We'll protect it with everything we've got. How nice of them to open the east and west. I'm fighting for the safety of my people. Strongholds for us. Take down the enemy generals and breach the walls from both sides. There are most likely other soldiers. 
I will not allow you to wreak havoc on Fargus a moment longer. Blind is weak. It would be wise to place a guard around the strongholds. The Kingdom Army doesn't appear to be at full strength. They must have sent a lot of their troops to the Western Front and to Srang. <laughs> I can fight no longer. I must withdraw. That takes care of one side. Now to take out the commander on the other side. None shall surpass me. I guess I should listen to my father. Do I not risk my life? I'm falling back. My turn. That's it! Now we can launch an assault from the east and the west. All the citizens within the castle walls have evacuated, correct? Let us open the outer gate and engage the enemy inside. You will go no farther. That stronghold is a key part of the city's defense. If we take it, we've as good as one. You won't have your way. So, Bang, now is your chance. I guess it's finally time I got out there. You're dealing with me now. Well played. We'll be like rats in a trap if they retake those strongholds. Deal with them quickly. There might be other enemies hiding out beside Sylvain. Stay alert, everyone. The stronghold must not fall. Send out the combat engineers. I have done all I can. Excellent. Now we can pass through the gates. Were they trying to reinforce the stronghold? I'm glad we stopped them. House Gautier's duty is to protect Fargus from foreign threats. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. We've got to stop Sylvain. Our strategy would be a bust if he takes back those strongholds. I guess all the blood's rushing in my head. I've got to calm down and think this through. down of a lifetime if I don't come back in one piece. We My managed to drive him back. At least we avoided the worst case scenario. We've repelled most of the enemy command. Capture the remaining strongholds. Perfect. We've got them surrounded. I wonder what they'll do now that a counteroffensive's off the table. Somehow I sincerely doubt this will be enough to make Dimitri surrender. <laughs> Back, everyone. I will handle the rest. Take a breather. I will annihilate anyone who dares lay a finger on this city. Wow. That guy's gotta be the strongest warrior Fargus has to offer, right? Seems like a worthy opponent. Is everyone from Lester so weak? I will not take my head that easily. I should assess my situation. Watch where you're 
aiming, Lawrence? Or do I have to remind you how delicate I am? You were never in any danger, dear Hilda. Lawrence Hellman Gloucester would never miss the mark. Sorry, friend. Had to. You and I both know I could never take you down in a fair fight. <laughs> Dimitri appears to have withdrawn. Does this mean we have succeeded in containing the Kingdom Army? I sure hope so. There'll be serious casualties on both sides if we have to go in for a direct attack. I know. At least we've done a good job setting things up. Now we just have to finish surrounding... Your Majesty, there's an emergency! What is it? An attack from behind? It's an urgent message from home. You're ordering a full retreat after we've come this far? We're one last push away from achieving our objective. You think I don't know that? Listen, we've got an emergency on our hands. I hate this too, but Lester is in grave danger. If we don't turn back now, we'll be too late to stop him. Having to retreat right on the brink of victory? It's like our assault on Birdley's territory all over again. Wait, too late to stop what exactly? Lysithia, Ordelia territory is right at the center of the crisis. And it seems like things are already spreading from there. What? But that's... The Empire wouldn't attack us, and I can't imagine Almira would either. We do have other enemies, remember? I don't know why they're attacking the Federation, but that doesn't matter now. We have to fight back. Other enemies? Could it be? No, it is too soon to speculate. <sighs> we have been forced to take refuge inside the palace, exactly as Claude wanted. And now comes the siege. When do you think they'll send over an envoy? It'll be hilarious if it turns out they really do want to occupy the capital. I seriously doubt that's what they want. But maybe we should send word to the Western Front, just in case? That's not a bad idea. If we are willing to lose a little ground over there, we should be able to spare some troops. And perhaps it is time to alert the other Lords of the Kingdom as well. I have a report, Your Majesty. What is it? Has Claude sent his envoy? No. The Federation army appears to have withdrawn. Wait, what? There's no way they'd do that! They almost had the entire capital surrounded. All they had to do was keep fighting just a little longer. Their camps are already deserted. They seem to have left for the port in Faldarius. Their retreat appears to have been a hasty one. They abandoned quite a significant amount of supplies at their camps. So what's their game? Are they trying to make us think they've pulled out so they can lure us into a trap? They were already in a position to win without such artifice. I haven't the slightest idea what this is meant to accomplish. Something must have happened in Leicester. That is the only reasonable explanation. Golden Wildfire. Darkness Attacks. After securing an initial victory at Ferdiad, Claude prepares to negotiate with Dimitri. But then word of an alarming crisis back home forces the Federation Army to retreat. The glimmer of hope that the war was nearing its end has been snuffed out by those who seek to spread chaos and destruction throughout Fodlan. We made good time coming this far, but we should slow our march. We're coming up on the affected region. You've probably all heard what's happening by now, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Several days ago, there was a sudden spike in bandit activity within Ordelia territory and the neighboring Imperial territory of Frim. 
the bandits have attacked rural villages and larger towns alike, ransacking them repeatedly. House Ardelia fought to restore order, but the attacks have increased to the point where we can no longer contain them. These territories were completely secure before we launched our invasion. How did things change so quickly? We don't know what's motivating the attacks, but survivors claim to have spotted some suspicious figures working alongside the bandits. You mean people like Tomas and Mycin? Exactly. I've actually received some confidential information from Edelgard about them. Those who slither in the dark. At least that's what the Empire calls them. They can shapeshift, they command dangerous powers, and they influence events in mysterious ways. In short, they bring chaos to Fodlan. I was under the impression that the Empire found their hideout and purged them all. Yeah, well, some of them escaped. Lord Arendelle, their leader, seemingly up and vanished. And no one's caught so much as a glimpse of Tomas since he fled from Garrett Mach. <clears throat> In light of the circumstances, I am afraid I must ask. Do you know anything about this? Sorry, not a clue. Honestly, I'd like to interrogate them myself. See if there's any connection between us. Yes, I am sure you would. Forgive me, it was a boorish question. But there's no way you have anything to do with them, right? Well, your powers are similar. Maybe we'll find out more in the battles ahead. It's entirely possible that you came into contact with them when you were still too young to remember. Yeah, maybe. Guess I should take this opportunity to learn what I can. I know we're all dying to find out what their endgame is, but restoring order comes first. The flames of unrest are already catching in neighboring regions. We'll have a full-blown catastrophe on our hands if we ignore it. This is why we had to abandon our battle with the kingdom. We need to stomp this out, and fast. For all you know, you could be a part of those who slither in the dark. It's entirely within the realm of possibility. And yet, not a single one of them seems to be considering that. Just look how much they trust you. dealt with bandits before, but this is worse than anything I could have imagined. Indeed. The damage done to the larger towns was upsetting enough, but the horrors unleashed upon some of the villages borders on the unspeakable. We saw entire fields trampled and destroyed. Whole villages burned to their foundations. Attacking innocent civilians like that, it's inhuman. How could anyone be so cruel to torment people like this and then walk away laughing? It's horrible. I'm convinced that those who slither in the dark are behind this, pulling the strings. It makes perfect sense, seeing as they already know Ordelia territory so well. What do you mean? Many years ago, the Empire accused House Ordelia of participating in the Hrim Rebellion. This was just an excuse to begin meddling in our affairs. During that time, they sent a group of strange mages into Ordelia territory. Everything about them felt wrong, from the way they looked to the powers they possessed. It was clear they weren't regular people. Are you saying they were really those who slither in the dark? I believe so, now that I look back on it. Though it's not exactly a memory I care to relive. And now they've wormed their way into Ordelia and Hrim territories again. This is just a guess, but their base of operations could be somewhere near here. Do you remember ever having lived in this area? 
Yeah. My mom and I spent a few years in a mountain village somewhere in Ordelia territory. But she wasn't born there, and I don't know where she lived before that. Hmm. There could be a connection there. Or maybe it's nothing. Either way, dealing with them needs to be our top priority. We gave them this opening. They never would have been able to take advantage of us like this if we hadn't been at war. Just another reason why we have to end this conflict as quickly as possible. We have to ensure nothing like this ever happens again. Everyone, the Middle Frank Opera Company is at the town up the road. We have to get there quick! Wow, really? I never imagined they'd come all this way. Wait a minute. What are they doing here? Don't they have their own opera house in the Imperial Capital? Apparently, they came to put on some shows after you signed that pact. Like, as a token of friendship between the Empire and Lester. But now, the performers and their guards have volunteered to fight the bandits. They're working together with the local soldiers to protect the town. You're telling me that a bunch of Imperial Opera singers just up and decided to fight for the Federation? Well, the Middle Frog Opera Company does have quite a few passionate supporters. Though it's likely more accurate to call them obsessed fans who go wild for their superstar divas. I'd bet those fans are more than willing to go out and play soldier themselves as well. I had no idea the opera could get people so worked up that they're not going to be able to handle these bandits. I heard they're fighting as best they can, but the battle's not going their way. Please, Your Majesty, we have to save them. Yeah, Your Claudness. I want to help those opera folks, too. My sister's going to be so excited when I tell her I met them. What are you all being so formal for? Oh, I get it. This is all about meeting those famous singers. I swear, no matter how grim things get, you never let it get to you, huh? Not that it's a bad thing. All right, I guess we're gonna go beat down some bandits. Better not keep those divas waiting. Rescuing the townspeople is our top priority, and we need to help the volunteer soldiers too. Also, if you see any suspicious types lurking among the bandits, they might be those who slither in the dark. Be careful. How many of these ruffians are there? I can't protect everyone forever. Is that Professor Hanneman? We have to save him. Is anyone there? We need help. I heard a voice crying out. Ah, so you've come to my rescue. Thank you. Things were getting a bit out of hand. <laughs> what good are notes if they do not aid the common folk? Hmm? Well, that was certainly close. I am much obliged for your assistance. Have you seen Manuela? Can't she no dashed problem. off in it. pursuit of the bandit leader. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you chasing me? I'm not going to let you steal from such vulnerable people. Stop, thief! Professor Monroe is going after their leader! We gotta help her! Please, lend us a hand! The opera troupe can't hold out much longer! Dorothea, wait right there! I will not allow those vile criminals to lay a hand on you! Carry the loot to safety and be quick about it! Stop right there! I'll never abide stealing from innocent people! Tear their leader limb from limb! Oh my, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me there. Splendid. We have saved everyone. Always be prepared. At 
double I planted turned out to be a stroke of genius. Now to take my leave while the taking is still good. Take a breather. Is he the real one? Don't let him get away! I think you've got a handle on everything here. I'll go tend to the injured. Woohoo! We got the stuff back! Serves you right! Open up! Open up, I say! This is not what we agreed to, so open up right now! Did his comrades abandon him? Then he got what he deserved. Finish him off! I'm just a passing merchant. I'm not good. <laughs> it was worth a try. How can I ever repay you? I should have stayed a merchant. The money came easier. He's a merchant who used to visit Garrett Mock. <laughs> Kill that man and strip his bones of whatever you can find. The south side of town is damaged as well. Let's get over there at once. There's still some people who've been left behind. We have to rescue them. Yes. We must help before it is too late. I owe you my life. Thank you. Somebody help. Please, don't leave me behind. There's no way this guy's their rain leader. Where could those pesky slitherers be? Now we've got a demonic beast on our hands. The fun never stops, does it? The town cannot sustain any more damage. Take the beast down! Oh, um, I don't feel so good. Was the enemy's weapon poisoned? Or if he has been poisoned? That isn't good. We need to get her it's to the evacuee shelter on the double. There's a drawbridge on the eastern side. Let's use that to help Dorothea escape. Thank you. I'm sorry for causing so much trouble. My word. It seems Claude was right to be concerned. This will do. Pay us, you'll need to heal up first. We'll talk more once we've taken care of the bandits. My turn. This is a rather rare poison. But please don't worry, Dorothea. You're in good hands. scraped by as well. I'm not I should have known these thugs would serve as little more than bait. My name is Solon, and I am the savior of this beast-infested world. Finally slithered into the light. Those are the masterminds. Kill them all. Ah, so they stop. I swear on the pride of Lester, I will defend this place. Okay, we took 
care of that bizarre wall. Now all that's left is to put an end to Solo. Bring it down! So be it. Another chance would present itself ere long. He escaped! We almost had him. Hey, at least we got the situation in town under control. Great job, everyone. Gone in a flash. Just like three years ago. Was that dark magic? If he's got spells like that in his back pocket, I don't know how we'll ever catch him. We finally found him again, but I still couldn't get any information out of him. I wasn't able to get any answers either. What did you want to ask him? I have questions about what was done to my body. He and his associates performed horrible rituals on me. Blood experiments. And because of what they did, my lifespan has been drastically shortened. My Scythia... The experiments took a great toll on my body, and left me with a burden that eats away at my longevity. Tomas... or rather, Solon... I thought he might know a way to reverse that. I had no idea. We can't let him get away next time. If we're not able to catch him, then I'd rather we kill him. At least then, he'd never be able to perform those atrocious experiments ever again. I hear you, and I won't forget it. I have a feeling we'll face him again someday. And when we do... We won't let him beat us. Solon looked surprised when he saw your powers. It was like he recognized something. I just don't know what. Maybe it wasn't about me. Maybe it was about you. What's the difference? Our destinies are one and the same. But if he does know me as you suggest, then it stands to reason that I would know him as well. Which is certainly possible, though I have no memory of meeting him before. You think this means we really are connected to those who slither in the dark? It's too soon to say, but I suspect we'll find our answer in due time. So long as the truth is what you really desire, Solon may have escaped, but I am pleased that we were able to rescue the songstresses from the opera company. We didn't come out here just to save a few opera stars, Lawrence. We came to protect the town. Besides, those stars just ended up being Dorothea and Professor Manuela. Just? You could at least try to sound more excited, Your Majesty. That's hardly a way to greet someone you haven't seen in years. Sorry, no offense. I've never seen you two light up the stage, so to me, you're just kind of... you. Well then, we'll have to remedy that. As soon as this war is over, we'll invite all of you to see us perform. If the opera company's still standing, that is. Alright, let's get down to business. I suspect the Kingdom's getting ready to move in response to our retreat. I think it's time we head back to Deirdre and find out as much as we can about what they're planning. Your Majesty, pardon the intrusion, but I must speak with you immediately. You're with the Imperial Army, right? What's going on? I was sent by the Emperor of Adrestia herself, Your Majesty. She formally requests that the Federation dispatch reinforcements to her position. Edelgard wants us to back her up? I was under the impression she had the Western Front under control. Wait, if she's asking us for help, then I bet she's not in Western Fodlin at all. Correct. The Emperor is currently at Garrick Mach, preparing for an imminent assault by the armies of the Kingdom and the Church. Huh. 
Can't say I saw that one coming. All right, tell Edelgard we're on our way. Yes, Your Majesty. We just got back from Ferdiad, and now we're heading to Garrig Mock? Never a moment's rest, huh? No time for it, I'm afraid. If we don't act quickly, more lives will be lost, and the end of the war will slip even further away. Plus, if our next battle's at Garrick Mach, there's a chance Rhea will be there. This could be just the opportunity we need. Can you go assemble the troops? Golden Wildfire. A symbol of the past. Claude's swift military actions save Ordelia territory from immediate danger. However, the Empire's situation has drastically changed. The Kingdom and Central Church are closing in on Garrig Mach, placing Edelgard at a disadvantage. After receiving a request for aid, the Federation Army rushes to the scene. Edelgard requesting reinforcements from us. This is not a matter that we can respond to lightly. Why? It seems pretty straightforward to me. Hilda, do you truly believe that Edelgard would so readily put herself in our debt had she any other choice? That does not sound like the Edelgard I know. She prefers her debts flow in the opposite direction. Huh. Sounds like you two have something in common. I will not deny it. In fact, that is precisely what gives me such insight into her current predicament. Make no mistake, the situation must be dire if she feels we are her best option. Simply put, were we to refuse her, it may well lead to her downfall. What are you getting at, Lawrence? You've got a real dark glint in your eye. The Empire's regime revolves entirely around its current Emperor. If Adrestia were to lose her, it would collapse like a house of cards. I see what you mean. At this point, there's no one in the Imperial line who could realistically inherit the throne. In other words, if we abandon Edelgard in her hour of need, the Empire will fall right along with her. Not an argument I expected from someone as self-righteous as you, Lawrence. That sounds more like... It actually sounds like you, Claude. Ha! <laughs> it totally does. And he wouldn't even bat an eye as he said it. It certainly does sound like him. Oh, I'm sorry. And Claude wouldn't even tell his own allies what was going on until it happened. Hey, that's ancient history. Nowadays, we all plot our schemes together. We're doing it right now. I guess that's true. Although, maybe that means we're all turning into Claude a bit. How else do you explain what's happened to Lawrence? The idea that I am somehow emulating Claude is preposterous. I am merely proposing what I believe to be the best course of action for Lester. We can debate whether or not we've all become mini clods later. For now, let's hear what the king himself thinks we should do. A battle between the Empire and the Knights of Saros with us being the factor that could turn the tides. We've been here before, haven't we? Last time, I chose to sacrifice Randolph in order to ensure our victory. And because I did, we got ambushed in ALL and barely made it out alive. I don't want to make that mistake again. Oh. This time, we're going to rush to Garrick Mont, wipe out the Central Church's forces, and take down Rhea herself. That's the plan that will put an end to this war with as little bloodshed as possible. That makes it the best option we have. Yes, we're effectively rescuing Edelgard. But hey, we could do worse than having an Emperor in our debt. If that is what you deem best, you will hear no objections from me. Yes, I find the plan satisfactory. I got no complaints either. Let's get going! Sounds like we're all in agreement on this one. 
Just give the word, Your Majesty. Right. We march on Garrick Mach to rescue the Imperial Army. Prepare to move out immediately. Hey, thanks for your help back there. What did I do? You helped get everyone on the same page. I appreciated the backup. It would have ended up like that, even if I didn't say a word. Like I said, we're all turning into you. Yeah, I still don't know what to think about that. But if it's true, then you probably deserve the credit. You've done a lot to keep our little team unified. I don't know if I've really done all that much. If anyone should be grateful, it's me. If I ended up on someone else's side, I'm sure people would have gotten all suspicious about my powers. They'd probably think I was their enemy. But here, I'm just part of the team. You all really make me feel like I belong. I get that. I felt like an outsider my entire life. But our friends are a pretty open-minded bunch. They even accepted the dare with open arms. That's exactly the sort of world I dream of. A world where nobody is branded an outsider. Where anyone and everyone is welcome. Life would be a whole lot easier if that's really what Fodlin was like. But the church preaches a very different vision. They use social status to justify prejudice and have no tolerance for those who come from anywhere else or who don't believe in their teachings. There's good there, too, of course, but I want to wipe the slate clean and start over. It's ambitious, to be sure, but can I count on you to continue fighting by my side? To help me make my dream a reality? As a friend, right? <laughs> of course. At least until the war is over. Wait, that's it? You're just gonna up and leave as soon as the fighting's done? Who knows? Alright, I'll leave it for now. But don't think you're off the hook. We'll pick this up again when the time comes. Anyway, we should press on. I'm sure Edelgard is awaiting our arrival with bated breath. The situation is grim. The Kingdom Army and the Knights of Saros have the monastery completely surrounded. And Rhea? She's here. Looks like she's commanding the Knights of Saros herself. With her leading the charge, the Knights' morale must be through the roof. Looks like your guess was right on the mark, Lawrence. Indeed. If anything, Edelgard's predicament is even more dire than I imagined. If you're sure you want to rescue her, we'll have to move quickly, Your Majesty. Right. Let's go, everyone. Time to save the day. Honestly, it almost feels like you held back till I needed help. Far be it for me to say that you're wrong. Being owed a favor by the Emperor herself is... Well then, I guess we can call it even. But don't close your ledger just yet, Claude. My quill is at the ready, Edelgard. Call in all the favors you want. Ready, you guys? It's time we show them just what Lester can do in a fight! I will go ahead to put a stop to Dimitri and Rhea. I am counting on your support, Claude. Well, we've come this far. We're not about to stop now. 
You know, we could make good use of those Ballistian catapults. The enemy forces are too great. But I can at least serve as a decoy for Her Majesty. Monica is in danger. Do not worry about me. You must attend to her. Before I rescue you, are you alright? You have my thanks. Now let us push back the enemy. You saved my life. Thank you, friends of Her Majesty. I so desperately want to flee, but I can't very well do that with Her Majesty here. So that's the Empire's Minister of Religious Affairs. He heads up the Southern Church now. If he's in trouble, we should go help. I demand you. that you rescue me right this... Hmm? Bernadetta? Oh, I didn't know that you... Um, hello. This is all a bit unexpected, I guess. Where is Her Majesty? I would like to fight by her side, if possible. Take a breather. I'm alive. I mean, of course I am. My death would be a crippling blow to the Empire. Now, set it aflame as we planned. This opportunity will not escape us. They are burning Garrick Mach. That's a bold move, Dimitri. Whoops. Some enemies slipped out of the stronghold. We gotta take them down before they do something. Ah, uh, yes. The old set on fire strategy. We should put that out before things get messy. I think we've got some combat engineers on standby. Maybe they could deal with all this fire stuff? What? The wall collapsed. Did someone intentionally do this? The path is blocked? We need to find another route and catch up with Edelgard. There you are, Edelgard. Your life is mine! <laughs> Edelgard is under attack. We must defend her. All right, engineers, you're up. Don't let them start another fire. Stay out of my way. Actually, this is perfect. Now I can avenge the Margrave as well. Interesting, Lester. None of this would have happened if it weren't for you. I can't go on. I'm sorry. I have to fall back. Excellent. Continue defending the Emperor. Uh, there's no way through. There she is. Ignite the flames once more. They will know how deeply our race burns. Uh, well, if it seems the enemy attacks them, we won't be setting any more fires. Well, they were unlikely to fall for the same trick twice. Time for our next plan. I will end you. Dimitri's most loyal retainer. I must be getting close then. <clears throat> I would sooner fight to the end, but that would bring great pain to his majesty. Now eliminate Dimitri and force the kingdom troops to retreat. We have gained control of Garrick Mach's entrance. 
I'll take up position here and stop the enemy from invading. I cannot allow you to do this alone, Your Majesty. Please, permit me to fight alongside you. I've long awaited this day, Edelgard. Your tyranny ends here! Oh, this is not good. We can't let Edelgard die. We must seize this opportunity while the Kingdom Army is engaged. Quickly, capture the front gate of the monastery. I should have known she wouldn't let this opportunity slip by. Get on over to Garrett Mach. She's got some out of knowing. Is there another secret path we don't know about? and the church are launching an attack on our stronghold. No matter how many years pass, you people will always be little more than fools. Return the land you stole from us! Attack as one! Garrick Moth is certainly a strategic location, but is it truly essential to the kingdom? Perhaps. If we control this land, we will be in a better position to ward off your invasion. Yes. <laughs> Seems the opportunity has slipped through our fingers. But we shall return. The next time you will not be so fortunate. We managed to hold out, but Rhea got away. I have no reason to hold back before the enemy of the Margrave and my people. Right, right. But on the other hand, it'd really make my day if you withdrew. No? <laughs> if it's my head you're after, you'll have to risk your own to take it. Stop Dimitri with everything you've got. Hold nothing back. <laughs> Offended that you think such feeble attacks would kill me. Out of the way. Here it comes. Take that. You're done. If the church has withdrawn. We need not risk our lives any longer. And just like that, a full retreat? Not that I'm complaining, mind you. This war won't end until Rhea's dead. Get ready for a chase, everyone. Well, would you look at that? We won. Thanks to you. Actually, I'd say you pulled most of the weight. The Kingdom and the Church had a ton of grizzled warriors on their side. We would have been in real trouble without you and your mercenaries. You were pretty impressive yourself. You barely even broke a sweat out there. I appreciate the compliment, though. I'm glad we got the chance to team up like this. Me too. The war's not over yet, though. I'm hoping you'll stick around to the end. Of course. The Ashen Demon has proved a greater asset than we could have ever imagined. You must be relieved to see your gamble pay off. If nothing else, I'll be a lot less busy as your partner in destiny going forward. Hmm. What a thing to imagine. Thank you, Claude. I owe you a great debt. Yeah, we really saved your skin. Though I'm sure you would have preferred to have us in your debt instead. You must really chafe having the shoe on the other foot. And what is that supposed to mean? If all you plan to do is mock me, then perhaps I'll not honor the debt after all. 
Hey, it was just a joke. Just something Lawrence said. Nothing for your Imperial Majesty to worry about. <sighs> Jokes aside, do you have a minute? Eager as I am to get back out there and chase down our enemies, we need to talk. If you insist, what is it? Right now, the Federation and the Empire are fighting together against the Kingdom. But honestly, I have no desire to see Fargus in ruins. I'm only after the Central Church. At this point, though, wouldn't you say the two are one and the same? I'm not so sure. When Dimitri decided to grant sanctuary to the Central Church, he really wasn't in any position to refuse. If he had, the chaos that ensued would have torn Fargus apart. But what if things are adding up differently now? It's clear the war will drag on so long as he continues to shelter them. Besides, the Federation's Eastern Church and the Empire's Southern Church are both operating independent of Rhea's influence. The Central Church must be looking like a pretty heavy burden to Dimitri right about now. Perhaps, but the Archbishop has far more influence in Fargus than anywhere else. Even if Dimitri has changed his mind, I doubt those around him would be open to the idea. The fact remains that the Kingdom has yet to show any sign of severing ties with the Central Church. They stand beside them even now. This is just a theory. Well, actually, it's more like wild speculation. But what if the reason Dimitri tried to take Eric Mach was because he wanted to distance himself from the Church? By facilitating Rhea's return to Garrick Mach, he could be trying to set the stage to break away. That's an interesting theory. Do you have any evidence to support it? Not really, but that's the impression I got when I saw Dimitri on the battlefield. To be honest, it didn't even occur to me before now. We were so determined to take down Rhea in that battle, we never spared a thought for Dimitri's motivations. I see. Had it occurred to you sooner, you would have had quite the decision to make. About whether to leave me for dead, I mean. After all, if the Central Church was really leaving the Kingdom to return here, abandoning me would have been the expedient choice. Oh, come on, Edelgard. Sure, we've had our differences, but that doesn't mean I want you dead. <laughs> I'm happy to hear you say that. Even if it is a lie. <laughs> you wound me. It's the honest truth from the bottom of my heart. So you say. No matter. You should continue to do as you see fit. And I will do all I can to bring this war to an end. Sounds like a plan. Let's end this war. Right now, that's all that matters. The Kingdom Army and the Church's forces have withdrawn and are fleeing north. The mercenaries are already in pursuit. And the Federation Army will join in the chase. Give the order to the rest of the troops. Yes, Your Majesty. I've got a pretty good guess as to which mercenaries are leading the hunt. I'd better pick up the pace. Edelgard, if you'll excuse me. I assure you, Claude, we will not be far behind. The Federation Army is going to beat us to the punch. We should give chase as well. I agree. Send a fifth of our army to pursue them. I will accompany them myself. Dispatch half of the remaining forces to the Western Front, and assign the other half to defend and repair the monastery. Only a fifth? Are you sure that will be enough? There's nothing to worry about. With the Federation Army present, our hands will be tied regardless. Besides, if we neglect to leave the monastery sufficiently guarded, I fear I'll never hear the end of it from Count Varley. Did we lose them? I was hoping we could at least tell our allies where they went. <sighs> What's wrong? Oh, nothing. 
just thinking how the time has finally come. Golden Wildfire. The Hour of Vengeance. It's over! Oh, how I've waited for this day. The day that I kill you! <laughs> Run away while you can. You're free to try, but you won't get away from me that easily. I'll carve out your monstrous heart and put an end to the beast dwelling within. Your destruction is everything I've ever fought for. Our two favorite mercenaries were supposed to be leading the charge. So where are they? It's strange that we haven't heard from them yet. I can't imagine they'd fall for a kingdom ambush, but... We have a problem, Your Majesty. A group of mysterious mages has appeared just ahead. It looks like they're preparing to intercept us. <gasps> mysterious mages? Are we dealing with those who slither in the dark again? What objective could they possibly be pursuing now? Not a clue, but we should hurry. If it's a fight they want, we don't have much choice but to oblige them. Your Majesty, I've spotted the mercenaries among the enemy force. And they appear to be fighting each other. I don't know the details, but it seems as though our commander attacked the Ashen Demon. What? Don't tell me. Have our fears come to pass? Was our friend truly part of those who slither in the dark all this time? It's too soon to say for sure. We know the enemy is capable of both controlling and impersonating people. He's right! Back at the Academy, the person we thought was Tomas was really Solon all along. So for all we know, our friend could actually be somewhere else entirely. Whatever the case, we have to keep going after Dimitri. That'll take us right through where the two of them were sighted. We'll drive off those fiends, try to grab our friend or whoever's impersonating them, and figure out what's going on afterwards. We can afford to do that, right? We can't afford not to. It would be an unspeakable loss if we slew the alleged imposter, only to learn we had inadvertently killed our friend. Then it's settled. We'll stop them and get to the bottom of this. I will hunt you until my, my dying place. breath. Get back here! We need to get over to them now. Things won't end well if we don't put a stop to this. I have the slightest notion of what is going on, but I destroy them all. We cannot proceed unless we eliminate those mages. See how those beasts crawl to the slaughter. We put you out of your misery, beasts. I tire of playing with you, ingrates. It does not concern you! What's going on? This isn't like you at all! Okay, I guess you're not in a listening mood either. Hang on, kid! I'm coming! You must move us away from all of these foolish distractions! Was that some kind of warping magic? They must have gone somewhere else. It's 
presents a problem. We need a group to pursue them while the rest of us fan out in case they warp again. Why do you insist on interfering? You're putting up more of a fight than I expected. Deploy the reserves. Persistent words. Aw, they warped again? Come on. That mercenaries. No, it cannot be. We'll have to take out the ones before us if we hope to enter the stronghold. This chance to slip away! Out of my way! It seems Lady Edelgard is pursuing Dimitri through the mountains. They're that close by? Then we need to wrap this up and get over to them. Huh. You're still chasing me? You certainly are tenacious. What is the Federation Army doing? This is our chance to capture him. could take a lesson from your persistence. Sorry! I just like ending things on a low note. As such, prepare to die! Arrest them and send them to the back. We'll be sure to question them later. You came for me, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> you sound surprised, kid. I'm almost offended. <laughs> If I must wring the life from you by my own hand, then so be it. You're not getting away this time. I hope you're ready. <laughs> Try me, you witless beast. <laughs> How could I allow myself to be bested by such a despicable beast as this one? Sacrifice. This world can never be made clean. Oh, great Zaharas, veil of night fluttering in the abyss. By the laws of creation, throw wide your infernal gates and swallow my foes. So, you've come here to strike me down yourself. I thought you were a smarter foe than that, Edelgard. Really? You think you'll win this fight? The upper hand is clearly mine in this moment. All I have to do is buy some time. <laughs> so you say. Then I suppose I must test your resolve. <laughs> A 
Not so fast, you two. I don't want to miss all the fun. I wouldn't say no. So what do you want to do? This power, it's... It has been a long, long battle. My race wavers at the brink of extinction. And so it falls upon me to reclaim this world. That what was stolen from my people might be theirs once more. Which is why I was born. Yes, I created you. The cycle of the world, the rehousing of souls. How desperately I sought this secret art. But it demanded precision. One defect, one essence wrongly transplanted, would lead to consequences most irreparable. I knew I must oversee the process myself in order to save my beloved people. When my consciousness first initialized, I was nothing. I remember the sound of water, of bubbles, the sound of a massive object slowly lurching along. I thought the noise would continue for eternity, but then... A change. Something gave way. The water began rushing rapidly. Pale shadows closed in around me. Amidst deafening sounds, I walked desperately in search of light. That was an unforeseen accident. I was sure all had been lost to the waters. It was fortunate I had created you, for you proved useful in a way I never expected. I am to become you. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been compelled to remove any obstacle in your way. Only by destroying the abomination inside the Ashen Demon can we bring salvation to the world. So you understand. Then return that body you two share to me. It pains me to do this to you, but alas, all was written from the beginning. Golden Wildfire. Into the Chasm. Where am I? Stay where you are. It would be best if you refrained from bringing out any weapons as well. Wait, Edelgard? Hold on. What are all three of you doing here? I have the same question. It appears we've been swallowed up by some kind of strange magic. That's the long and short of it. But isn't all of this your doing? <sighs> When we awoke, we found ourselves here, in this dark and ominous void. Don't tell me you can't remember what happened. You suddenly transformed and started attacking your friends. Luckily, we managed to knock you out and capture you. But it wasn't long before you came to and escaped. I was told that you were acting like someone else entirely. <sighs> I guess that... Kinda rings a bell. The last thing I remember is Arval telling me to slay the Ashen Demon. At least, I think it was Arval. Arval? The voice in my head. We've known each other for a few years now. Uh, huh. Sounds pretty out there, right? This is why I never mentioned it. And you claim this Arval suddenly decided to turn on you. I know how it sounds, but... yeah. There are two things I can say for sure. The first is that Arval's magic is what dragged us all in here. And the second is that there's no one in my head anymore. How can you be certain? 
Because I don't feel them. At least, not in my mind. Arval's somewhere else now. Somewhere distant. I don't mean for this to be an interrogation. But distant? From where? This story of yours is hardly convincing. Well, you do seem to be your old self again. That, if nothing else, makes me want to believe what you're saying. At the very least, I hope you know a way out of this fathomless prison. About that. I know I said distant, but Arval's definitely here with us somewhere. If we can find them and figure out what magic they used on us, we might just be able to escape. That sounds wildly optimistic. It sure does. But considering we don't know a thing about this place, we might as well give it a shot. In that case, let's begin looking around and see if we can't find any clues to where we are. Dimitri, we need to talk. I'm just gonna come out and say it. After the war, I'm going to abolish the central church and depose the archbishop. The people of Fodland have been shackled by this decrepit system for too long, and I'm ending it. You're going to do away with the church? That's right. Think about it. Who steals your freedom and gives you an endless list of duties and obligations simply because you have a crest? Who forces you and your friends into a bunch of unwanted marriages and positions of power? The church even forbids any official contact with outside regions. Not exactly great for Fargus, right? Being as close to Serang and Albinia as you are. But to be clear, your quarrel is with the church, yes? Not with Fargus itself? Exactly. We have nothing to gain by fighting you. And really, our enemy isn't the actual church so much as the people at the top who make all the decisions. I understand where you're coming from, Claude. And on a personal level, I actually agree with you. But as a king, you're opposed. Yes, for three reasons. First, abolishing the church would deny the king's right to rule Fargus. Without one, the people will descend into chaos and war. Would you be able to take responsibility for such a thing once it came to pass? Second, recklessly discarding the church will only incite discord among the clergy and its supporters. And finally, a revolution of this nature will not only mean casualties among the common folk, but will endanger your own life as well. Leaving the first two for a second, I have some serious issues with that last one. I'm glad you're concerned for my safety, but I can take care of myself. But don't you see? The people you wish to depose are human, just as you are. No matter what ingenious scheme you come up with, or how careful you try to be, they will suffer. And their vengeance will eventually find you, no matter how hard you try to stave it off. I know full well the guilt that accompanies such actions, and the retribution they provoke. Everyone has to deal with the consequences of their decisions. If you let it rule you, Fodlin never changes. And if it doesn't change, it'll just fall apart. 
But not taking the time to look where you're going will only lead you to stumble and fall. And if there are those who would be hurt by this, I consider it my duty to help them. <laughs> there you go, trying to save everyone again. You really are too good for me. <laughs> to be honest, I'm jealous of how you're not burdened with the same restrictions. In the world I'm trying to create, you wouldn't be burdened by them either. You could even... No, forget that. I'm serious about what I said, though. And I really do admire how you want to save everyone. Honestly, if you weren't a king, I think we could have been friends. I feel much the same. Had I joined with you, I might have been able to see a different vision of Fotlan. I have to say, this isn't how I imagined Fodlan's three most powerful leaders would be coming together. Indeed. I hesitate to even consider the look on Hubert's face right now. I don't think anyone's too worried about me, though. Vanishing without a word is kind of what I do. Even now that I'm the King of the Federation, it looks like I'm as unreliable as ever. Or perhaps it's the opposite, and your people think you reliable precisely because you always return. It must be nice having friends you can depend on to handle important matters in your absence. And it must feel lousy to realize no one wants to do your job, Edelgard. I'm glad to see your tongue remains as agile as ever. Let's try moving our feet instead, shall we? Hey, I can do both if you want. It's definitely not an either-or kind of situation. So, Edelgard, say the four of us get out of here in one piece. What are you planning to do about Dimitri? Maybe we should join forces and take them on together. You're such a bore sometimes, Claude. And is that a serious proposal? Hmm. Well, I suppose it would be easier for me if the kingdom stuck around. After all, I get the feeling that if we divide Fodlin between the Empire and the Federation, I'll be the one holding the short end of that stick. Our goal is to deal with Rhea and the Central Church, not to unify Fodlin. You never have been one to mince words, have you? Well then, allow me to match your honesty. It would be more convenient for me if the kingdom ceased to exist. The Central Church has a much closer relationship with Fargus than with the other regions. Even were we to capture the Archbishop and force her to dismantle the upper echelons of the Church, it wouldn't be enough. The roots of that organization run deep. Hey, hold on. You're just looking to capture Rhea? You're not gonna, you know get rid of her is it not enough to subdue a foe and remove them from power i'm just surprised i would have expected you to be more thorough and here i thought you wanted to pursue a peaceful solution hey give me some credit if i didn't like to rock the boat lester would have been swallowed up by the empire ages ago i have ambitions edelgard real ones 
I won't go into details, but I'm definitely fighting to make them a reality. All that, and you're not planning to enlighten me? Unreliable and stingy. I, for one, have no qualms with telling you my ambitions. I seek to destroy the irrational power structure that shackles Fodlin. Just Fodlin, huh? Come again? Hey, don't get me wrong. That's a goal I can get behind. That's why we're working together. But I'd be grateful if my own ambitions can be fulfilled at the end of your path of conquest. I'd like to believe that is possible. At least for now, we can work together to achieve a common goal. And perhaps someday, our pact will become a more permanent one. I hope so, at any rate. Same here. But before that, we need to find a way out of this place. <sighs> well, I'm stumped. can't tell forward from back in here. Let's try over that way, maybe? Good idea. It seems different from the rest of the void. Look out! <sighs> so it failed. Has my skill degraded that sharply over the years? Arval. I have been searching for you. And look what you brought me. The three who fancy themselves sovereigns, ruling over that abomination's wretched spawn. What unexpected luck. I do hope you are all prepared to face death this day. So this is Arval, is it? Undo this sorcery and return us from whence we came, demon. Oh, I do not think that will be happening. But even if I desired to accede to your wishes, the great forbidden spell of Zaharas is a one-way journey. None can escape this eternal darkness. I vote we kill this thing and see what happens. Who's with me? Something tells me they wouldn't lay this trap, only to suffer the same fate as us. If this being can free themselves from this void, it stands to reason that so too can we. Then try cutting me down if you like. Sadly, what you see before you is but an illusion. I have a task to fulfill, and once it is accomplished, I shall leave this place alone. Arvel, wait! What task are you talking about? Why did you use me? What are you trying to do here? Ah, but you are mistaken. I am not Arval. My name is Epimenides, an ordinary man who vowed to kill the beast which set the Earth ablaze. Do you not comprehend my purpose? I must save this world and its true people. That is why I chose to pass my consciousness down through the ages. And you, you are the vessel for that consciousness. What does that mean? I don't know what's going on, but I do know whoever that is needs to be stopped. And how far are you willing to go? Will you cut down your own friends to reach me? Now, Hubert, 
No. It must be a double. If so, it's completely indistinguishable from the real thing. This is vile sorcery indeed. God, no! Don't do this! I can't believe you would hurt me. This is harder than I thought. I mean, how do we know for sure they're not real? Majesty, why are you consorting with the enemy? Is this right where you want him? Why are you... No, this is a deception. The man I know would never raise a weapon at all. There. It's done. But steal yourselves. You don't know who will confront next. Are we being walked away? No. Space itself is distorting around us. Our surroundings have... changed. This place is so twisted you can't even tell where you are. Aren't you sad for your comrades, murderers? There it is. There is your rage. I can spot one fake, but how do I tell which Edelgard and Dimitri are on my side? Perhaps each of us should take on their own double to prevent confusion. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. This darkness is a mirror for the soul. And once a soul is imprisoned here, it is eternally severed from the real world. Just imagine how much easier our task will be with the two of us. A nice thought, yes. But I'm sad to say I fail to trust even myself. I can't say it's pleasant watching my own death. Why are you helping the Emperor, you wretch? If you mourn your friends, avenge them! It's a blessing I get to face you. There is truly no one I more desire to end. Stop playing the kind soul. Everything we've ever wanted is before us, right for the taking. If you're really me, then you already know why I'm doing this. I don't like leaving my fate out to luck. Illusion or no, I must thank our adversary for letting me experience that. Still improving. You're always bailing me out. I hope to return the favor someday. I feel like I just slew my twin brother. That's the last of the illusions. So it would seem. At least now we're certain they're not real. We can cut them down without mercy. Again? Please tell me we're gonna find that guy this time. Right. Let's get searching. Oh, but you four are a marvel. To think you are already adapting to this place. Now have the grace to lay down your lives and let the world you've torn apart heal. Ah, there you are, my partner in destiny. You're not Arvon. And even if you were, I'd butt you all the same. <laughs> Achieve nothing, for you will all still be trapped in this place. I must be chased. Unfortunate, but you are forcing my hand. So even our mercenary friend gets a phantom. This is going to take all of us. Time to put our differences aside. Why does it have to be you? I don't want to fight you. 
Gal gets to fight herself. I think I'm gonna enjoy this. Okay, I hate this. It even thinks like me. It seems I am forced to do this myself. So be it. Come at me if you dare. Take you all on. Our adversary has finally run out of tricks. Time to finish this. Nothing I do is enough. How much more must I sacrifice? No, this isn't over. You. The cycle of this world must be protected! You resist me so! You know my reason! But tomorrow we're fighting for it! You are to me! It's incredible. Just how strong you've become. Orval. You have grown more than I ever thought possible. And yet... I've never felt more alone. Looks like we made it out in one piece. Are you sure about that? I still have no idea what's going on. Arvel, or Epimenides, I suppose, has vanished, and we've been returned to where we started. Perhaps we should just consider this a victory, an ironic one, as we achieved it by working together. Fair enough. So, what happens now? I can't speak for Edelgard, but I'm not exactly itching to fight you. Whatever's in store for us, let's say we just call a truce for now. I wouldn't have been able to return here had it not been for your assistance, as well as Claude's. Letting you walk away may not be the soundest of tactics, but at this point I see no other option. Agreed. Let's consider all debts paid. But just to be clear, I crushed you once, and I can do so again. Right. I gotta admit, I never saw any of this coming. In truth, I can't say I much expected any of this. Still, it got us talking again, and that's gotta be worth something. Well, I should be off. I hope we can do this again sometime. The speaking part, anyway. In that case, I will depart as well. I'm sure everyone must be quite concerned for me by now. See you both on the other side of this war. Well, my friend, are you ready to get out of here? We still have one more enemy to deal with before all of this can end. Archbishop Rhea awaits. Golden Wildfire. Field of Beginnings. 
The Federation successfully aids the Imperial Army, and together they pursue the Kingdom and Church forces. However, Claude's sole aim is to eliminate Archbishop Rhea. While Edelgard contends with the Royal Army, Claude and his forces go after the Church. In their pursuit, they arrive at the Teltine Plains, where Seros and Nemesis battled long ago. Not much further to Kingdom territory. Once we've crossed the border, we'll march through the Teltine Plains and make our way to Ferdiad. The plains of Teltine are the largest in all of Fargus. As I recall, they're also where a well-known battle took place long ago. We're going by land instead of sea this time, huh? I have to admit, I prefer it this way. We may have taken a wild little detour, but we're finally back to marching on the Kingdom Capital. Claude, are you sure it would not be prudent to ask the Imperial Army for assistance? They certainly owe us after that last battle. The Imperial Army changed course to travel west, and Edelgard went after them. They're well on their way to Aryan Road. Most of the Kingdom's forces have gathered in the west as well. Rhea and her troops are the only ones who fled north. I don't get it. Sure, it makes sense for the Kingdom to reinforce their position on the Western Front. They're losing ground there, after all. But is the King of Fargus really abandoning the defense of his capital city and the Church? I can't claim to know what his intentions are, but... I suspect Dimitri's decided to leave the rest to me. What's that supposed to mean? What in the world could the King of an enemy territory trust you with? I think I get it. Dimitri is counting on Claude. The Central Church is just a millstone around the Kingdom's neck at this point. Dimitri's probably hoping Claude will cut him loose. Are you suggesting that the King wishes to avoid formally cutting ties with the Central Church and is therefore using us to bring about its demise? I have heard that the Central Church aided the Kingdom when civil war broke out. Perhaps Dimitri feels indebted to the Archbishop, and his knightly values demand he not oppose her directly. But that's... No. I suppose this is the nature of war. There is more to it than that. The Kingdom and the Church have a long history full of reasons why the King can't betray them. Long ago, the hero Lug von Lathib cut down the Adrestian Emperor of his day. In fact, their battle took place on the Teltine Plains, which we're just about to cross. The Church mediated the conflict and recognized House Blathid's independence, leading to the founding of the Holy Kingdom of Farkas. As you might have guessed, that's how they got the holy bit in their name. So essentially, Abandoning the church would mean turning their back on the very group to whom they owe their independence. And that's why Dimitri wants the fledgling Leicester Federation to do his dirty work and abolish the church in his stead. And that's my guess, anyway. But his reasons are immaterial, since getting rid of the church is what we've been after all along. For the sake of our future and the free world to come, we'll tear down the central church and put an end to Rhea. You can count on it. And if they run off to Ferdiad, we'll just have to conquer the capital to get to them. That's the spirit. You know, kid, you've really become someone we can depend on. And now, your majesty, we await your official order. You got it, Judith. It's time to fling open the doors to a whole new era. All forces, advance! Your Majesty, I am glad to see that you are safe. I am fine, Gustav. My apologies for worrying you. What is your report on the situation in the West? For the moment, we are holding the line against the Empire's offensive. 
The news that your majesty has arrived at the Silver Maiden will do wonders for the soldiers' morale. Unfortunately, the same can be said for our enemy. The Emperor pursued me here and should be joining her forces at the front. But no matter how high the enemy's morale, they will not find Aryan Road an easy prize to take. In that case, perhaps our concern should lie with Lady Rhea and the Knights of Seros. Ah, yes. The Kingdom Army parted with them to deal with the Imperial forces here in the West. I have heard nothing of their fate since. Were they able to reach Camulus safely? No, Your Majesty. They have stopped in the northern region of the Teen Plains to prepare for battle. They intend to meet the Federation Army there? It is likely they determined that with the Kingdom Army unable to leave the Western Front, they would not be able to withstand a siege at Camulus. They have assessed the situation correctly, then. The Kingdom Army cannot spare enough troops to break a siege at this moment. But if Camulus is taken, Ferdiad itself may well fall to the forces of Leicester. To prepare for that contingency, I have ordered our citizens in the capital and the surrounding area to evacuate to Gautier territory. But does Claude truly wish to destroy Fargus? <sighs> Somehow I doubt it. Your Majesty, a message from Duke Faldarius. The Imperial Army seems to be taking more aggressive action. He would like you to brief the commanders on the current state of the war. Understood. I will be there shortly. But Your Majesty, what of the Central Church? Gustav, we will do what must be done to safeguard our people no matter how great the cost. Were we to bow down to the Empire and accept the Southern Church, Fargus would fall to ruin. A great many of our people would die. However, the Federation has shown us a way to avoid such a terrible fate. Then there is truly no other way? We are deeply indebted to the Central Church. <sighs> Yet it is a debt that I cannot repay. I will gladly accept whatever punishment I must. If it means saving even one more of my people's lives, then as the King of Fargus, no sacrifice is too great. Forgive me, Gustav. Your Majesty, if this is the path you have chosen, then I will walk it with you until the very end. Grace, the Federation army is approaching from the south. King Claude appears to be commanding them personally. The rebellious blood of those wretched ten elites has led one of their descendants to turn his blade against us. Perhaps it was a mistake not to have terminated their bloodlines long ago. Your Grace? Lady Rhea. With the Kingdom Army occupied on the Western Front, we will have little in the way of support from them. I believe the wisest course of action would be to retreat to Ferdiad and attempt to hold the palace there. No. We will face them here. Long before the Kingdom even existed, Saint Sero slew the fell King Nemesis upon this very soil. This field is a sacred place. For the Church of Zeros. We will have the Goddess's protection here. Indeed, but... You have nothing to worry about, Seteth. If anything should happen, I want you to take Flane and escape. Lady Rhea, you cannot mean that. Long have I protected Vodlin in the Goddess Sothis' stead. It may be time for that duty to finally come to an end. And would you accept that? Not willingly, no. In our absence, future generations are likely to repeat the foolish actions of their ancestors. And when that happens, who will be left to stop them? This land has suffered enough 
as it is. <sighs> I will fight with all of my strength and spirit. For my mother, for the future, even for humanity. What shall come to pass? Only the goddess knows. Such are her teachings. The teachings of my mother. Rhea. As in the Battle of Tail Team, I will strike down any fool who dares dishonor our creator. This is it, folks. If we slay Rhea, we'll usher in a new era for Fodlin. Give it all you got! There's no need to rush. Just keep pressing forward. Our first objective is to capture the strongholds on the front line. Everyone, stake your lives on this battle and make the goddess proud. We will annihilate the wicked Federation army! We've managed to advance this far as two groups, but I didn't foresee the bridge being down. We'll just have to hold out until we can meet up again. I might actually put in some effort. We've been told to return to the capital, but we're the only ones who can protect the church's people. Is that Mercedes? Does that mean the kingdom's commanding those troops? Do what I must until the very end. Mercedes, so this is where you've been. I will save you. <laughs> the enemy's morale is unusually high. The Archbishop must have riled them up. I'll fight until my dying breath to protect Lady Rhea. No problem. Oh, there either. I will remember your heroism always. They appear to be having a difficult time. I have no choice but to intervene. Fodlin needs the Archbishop. Anyone who does not understand that must be eliminated. <laughs> Continuing in this state would be a challenge. I must retreat for now. Their reckless violence defiles the goddess. There is no salvation for them. Guardians of the Holy Tomb, come forth! Bring down the hammer of judgment upon these sacrilegious rebels! Those soldiers were likely created with magic. The devices controlling them should be here somewhere. We still have a chance to drive the enemy back. I must lend them my aid. Come, Wyvern Riders of St. Keyhole! They're one of the most elite units in the Knights of Seros. Be on guard! There are fewer of those soldiers now, but they're not completely gone. Ugh, they give me the creeps. I see they found the devices. But it matters not, for they still have no hope of victory. I'll give you ten times the pain you inflicted on Lady Rhea! Into the fray! <laughs> All right! You captured most of the strongholds on one side! The Federation Army has us on the back foot. Do we have any hope of winning this? The church forces seem at a loss without their frontline commanders. No way I'm letting this end here. I'm gonna help Lady Rhea. The others are fulfilling their duties to house and kingdom. That only leaves me to do what I can to help. Apologies. Watch out. He's going for the strongholds. 
Are we changing places? not worth risking your life for this fight. It was my choice to put my life on the line. But now I must fall back. Then please, fight alongside me for now. It is the best way to keep you safe. We're moving right along. Keep capturing the enemy strongholds. Let's switch. Lady Rhea, I'm sorry I couldn't help. There's no need to over it. I loathe fighting, but this is my duty. Come then! Exert yourself, Flame. Promise me you will retreat the moment it becomes too taxing. Gotcha! <laughs> Our forces have reunited thanks to the strength of my efforts. Truly, I am more fit to lead than our actual king. You do realize the actual king is standing right here. But if you want the job so badly, I'll happily let you take over later. If they defeat us and the central church collapses, many people will lose their spiritual foundation. That would be terrible. I will fight alongside you, my brother. Goddess, infuse me with your divine strength! Where could magic of this magnitude be coming from? Are we witnessing the Archbishop's power? She's not fooling around. Here we go, everyone. Don't let the enemy push us back. The battle's only going to get tougher from here on out. The Immortal Core is it. ready to go. Lady Rhea, I am sorry. I... I can no longer... That must be the judgment of the goddess. 
We have our divine protection, so charge forth without fear! They see that magic as the goddess's protection? Their faith has blinded them! People do horrible things when their faith becomes tainted with fear. We must stop them at once. Then let loose. Blot out the sky with your arrows. I had not the strength to stop them. Forgive me, Rhea. Rhea, we must retreat. I cannot allow flame to perish. May fortune smile upon you, Lady Rhea. Do what you must. I will settle this on my own. This is our final opportunity to pass judgment on the enemy. If you can yet move, follow me! Are you changing? Take a breather. Those enemies on the front lines were strong, but we were stronger. We took them all out. Even with the goddess's protection, our remaining forces are hardly enough to hold them off. Yes. I knew that one day you would turn your blade on me. Don't get the wrong idea. My powers have nothing to do with this. I'm standing here of my own free will. I swear, on the goddess's name, you will all face judgment. Out of the way. Looks like we're finally getting to the good part. You okay to keep going? Of course. And after we win this battle, you're gonna show me the new world you're creating. This is not over. I must carry on for the sake of my mother's fallen comrades. It's time to finish this, Rhea. Are you sure you don't want to just walk away? It's not too late. I did not go looking for this fight, but you will not see me run from it. You have spilled much blood during this war the Empire started. I'm not here to talk about who started this war. I'm gonna end this. That's what's important now. This world cries out for change, while you keep it shackled to the past. And it's up to us to help set it free. I'm ready if you are. For all of Fodlin! So be it. I will crush you where you stand! Well, color me surprised. Rhea's really the Immaculate One? Whatever she is, we have to end her. Now quit staring before she crushes you! Time now. Our victory will secure my place in history as a hero of Fodland. We dealt with our fair share of surprises, but we're finally here. Our king is really something else. 
This is far from the end, but it will be a significant step forward if we win. Time to finish this. Everyone, lend me your strength. If there is any way I can help change Lester and Fogel for the better, I will. I'm still not sure if this is really the right thing, but I have to trust God and push it forward. Our work here isn't over, not by a long shot. Got plenty of road ahead. But we've taken the first step, together. It is now 1183, Blue Sea Moon. The Federation has joined with the Empire to invade the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Claude sought not to conquer the kingdom, but to destroy the central church. After Archbishop Rea's defeat, the church has lost much of its martial prowess. Tensions continue between the empire and kingdom. Having now reached his goal, Claude proposes an end to the war, yet it remains uncertain if either side will accept. What an adventure we've had. Hard to believe it all started with one little dust up in the woods. We've seen each other through so many battles, and yet I know we've got a lot more to go. Chances are I'll stay and fight for this place, but don't hold it against me if I slip away from time to time for an adventure of my own. And while my future isn't set in stone, I know one thing for certain. Right here, right now, this is where I live and breathe.